committing to coaching since the inception of Astralis. This was the next chapter in Sonic's storied Counter-Strike career. Heading into ESL1 Cologne 2016, he and Carrigan had decided to bring Kiebi into the Astralis fold. Unfortunately for them, he was ineligible to join them for the major, leaving them to bring in one Lucas Glaive Rossander as a sub. Just two series into the second major of 2016 and already facing an uphill battle, the Danes were dealt a major setback. And let's not forget, Astralis are limping, losing Dupree and of course for having Glaive in the space of Kirby. The Astralis roster found themselves in their group decided match against their countrymen. Legend spot on the line, this time with Sonic in the server. It's been a weird ride and now it's going to end on cash. Gibson makes a chance to try and walk in. Kerrigan's already locking down backside with Heaven, so it's all about covering angles to probe it for information. There it is, good entrance from Kerrigan. Times it well, MSL goes down. Tensky versus two. Kits on Kerrigan, he's the one that has to hold it, which means Zipix. Oh, lovely stuff! Two behind the smoke, walking through. Glaive does get one. They're still, still alive in this. And Glaive has an AK. It's getting confusing. He gets a little bit panicked as he bumps into one of the smoke and tries to spray through, but he's still alive. Watch for the boost, though. Are they going to go fully for it? Up above. Kerrigan sees it, nails it as well. And there is a kick. Kerrigan. Oh, they've done it. What are those two shots? an opening though and Kerrigan jumps in on top the shot from the arm straight down he's found by Rubino but that'll relay information Zipix has one on either side who does he find first and as he sits at hell he has to peek the other player because he knows what knows what he missed here we go Zonic he's flying now with this AWP what is this Zonic gets three kills to close it device with the other two So heavily, and Zonic takes down KGB. Rubino has to come in. Good headshot. Oh, Rubino gets two. It's another pistol on another double headshot play. Carrigan gets the first kill. He's up the case to do something with this. Gets the first kill. Looking to get more. Finds two, but they know exactly where he is, oh. but somehow gets the third. This could be the round save, but up to the two versus two now. Device is in a two fight back. Kerrigan now slips in again. He's able to go undetected and find an opening. However, with Zonic down, he's gonna have to do more than that. Up close again, but watch quad. They haven't checked it. And Device has to go tech nine. It's just he remaining. And he's found by config. It's still just a one-point game. Trying to go toward A. And now they've got to make up for this. Device is gonna do exactly that. Through the B site, he's opened up the space. They can bring the bomb in. So, eight seconds remaining, still two to find. Looked like he was just gonna walk back and give himself up. Good positioning, catches up, Glaive catches him off, Device is low. 19 HP for him, five for Device. And he will win it, it's gonna be map points, series point, and potential legendary status again for Astralis. Two players waiting from this time, surely he's gonna get dropped as soon as Convict spots him. Yep, he's baited him in, and Agent B has never played that position, but that didn't have to go that far. And sitting duck right now is Zipix on this highway. The Cajun's actually rotated through A main, so there's no flank potential. He could try and find this kill. Eight seconds, though, is the problem. And as soon as he goes for the plant, MSL's gonna wrap back around. He knows he has to stick it, and down goes Zipix. We've got another round on our hands yet. Vice with Glaive is down. Rubino's not looking. He's gonna come back now, but he's gonna get caught. That's the opening. Kerrigan this time through the door, not Zipix, so a change in play, but Cajun B, edge of the smoke, good find, and Glaive's not there, not close enough to refrag. Kerrigan's desperate to find one in the smoke, instead it's MSL, found by Zipix, it's a hero play, and Glaive will close it. Astralis, two stand-in players, keep their legendary status against what was Dignitas' best chance. That is heartbreaking for Dignitas, but my god, Astralis, a sigh of relief, it has to be. The Convergence of Man and Machine.
designed to bear the most optimized skill set, enhanced to reach peak physical and mental form. Experience, learn, evolve, repeat. A cycle that never sleeps. Rain, okay, absolutely disgusting. The cyborgs do not cease until their objective is complete. Some enhanced with advanced sense perception, raw mechanical skill that is merciless. Eagle eyes that lock exactly on target. The headshot machine unforgiving. Taking the fights to your enemies, pushing them to the edge, and watching them tumble right over. Human emotion compounded with mechanical skill. Fuse this with ambition, drive, self-awareness. You've got yourself a recipe for a deadly machine. Programmed to consistently deliver no matter which weapon wielded. Needs to offer some resistance here. Enhanced with superior dexterity, traditional human senses times them by 10. Attentive to the most minuscule of sounds. The opponent's element of surprise, no match for the inhuman reflexes. Mental resilience cast in steel, hauling yourself and your teammates out of the furnace at melting point. This is starting to shatter a little bit here. It's be completely flawless at this point. Oh, Calculating the perfect time to strike. Ridiculous. They may sweat, smell, and even bleed, but these are no ordinary men. Cybernetic arms engineered with enough force to blow you into the next universe. Logged on, plugged in, all the time.
Intel Extreme Masters Cologne is brought to you in part by Intel, Acer Predator, DHL, Monster Energy, the United States Air Force, and 1xBet. Grand finals of Cologne 23, and me and Chaddy B have been given the honor and privilege to be bringing you all of that Counter-Strike action. What are you expecting today? Ensh versus G2 should be a good match. Matt Paul sets us up for what could be a five map, a G2 in good form. Some pirates looking hot to try. I'm excited to get this one underway. The Cathedral is going to be, well, making some noise. Yeah, I mean, we've had bums in seats sold out since the first day. I can't imagine the energy we're going to have during that grand final. I just can't wait to get a start. Should we go get ready? Yeah, let's get ready. Peace. Welcome to the Intel Extreme Masters 2023 here in Cologne, a fitting send-off for Global Offensive. The major champions, Vitality, eliminated. FaZe eliminated. Heroic Cloud9 also biting the dust. And this is it, the grand final day. 24 teams are now being reduced down to two with ends. Can they take a second Intel Extreme Masters title on the trot on the way to an Intel Grand Slam? This coveted, most coveted of titles. With G2, they are a roller coaster of a team that seem to only look playing on the big stage. Can they add to their Katowice a victory? We're about to find out. Yes, indeed. The scriptures of Cologne brimming with legends. And now two more teams have the opportunity to etch their name into our Hall of Fame. We have G2 never tasting the glory of hoisting this coveted chalice, but they could go where very few teams have gone before, hoisting both Katowice and Cologne in a single year. Then on the other side of the equation, we have Ents. And boy, oh boy, do they want to be adding this trophy to the collection. They want to be giving that Dallas trophy a very much bigger brother today here in Cologne. So much going to be going down on Championship Sunday here at the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne 2023. My name is Freya Spears. Joining me up here for the pre-show, we've got Kassad, we've got Jason, and of course, we've got very special guest, Flamesy. Thank Hello. you so very much for joining us. Hello. Yeah, man. Feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling very good. Yeah. yeah watching your nerds, maybe getting the trophy today. It's, uh, it's an amazing day today. Yeah. Obviously, you would have wanted to be playing in the grand final yourself, but the first time in the Langsess for you, uh, how did that feel going in front of this crowd? Well, <clears throat> the quarterfinal was... Uh, it was amazing, you know, just going outside, uh, like going on stage with uh, with my teammates, and they all told me like embrace the nerves, em embrace the, the stress, you know, like let it affect you, but for good. And uh, when we went up on stage, it was just amazing. Uh, every round you play, it's a, it's a whole new experience for you, and uh, very valuable for for my career at least, and I enjoyed it. When you when you like are you know when you're gonna play on a stage like that in an arena like this that you've seen and you've watched in the past like you kind of like that's some moment you sort of dream about right like you kind of build it up in your head before it actually happens did it meet your expectations? 
Well, first of all, I didn't know that the Lanxess Arena is the Lanxess Arena before I came here, so <laughs> Apex was like, this is the best arena Counter-Strike has to offer, other than Paris Major. Well, look where you came from, my friend. Look at, look at where you started. <laughs> <laughs> started yeah. from the bottom, now That's we're here. Where, where was 14. this? This was uh, in Tel Aviv, in Israel, and we were playing a, a LAN that um, if we won this, we were qualifying to the world champion, like some national tournament or something like that. Sure. Um, and I think we beat Nerds. Yeah? That <laughs> yeah, that's Nerds right in the middle there, yeah? Yeah, but that's a different LAN. That's the, ah. that's the LAN he beat me in the finals. And that's oh. my big battle to his right side. That's Spinks with his first team in CSGO. Uh, team Skit, Sk oh, so, many, so many memories. That was you 2017. Played a, you, you played against your brother on different teams? Yeah, I played against him on the final. <laughs> that's I, so I, <laughs> <laughs> What's that like experience, you know, when, like, how long was that ago? Like, a few years back? It was 2017, December. Yeah, so did you ever think you're gonna be, like, in this position right now, where you're playing in front of the biggest crowd in the world? And, like, is this, the, like, you visioned that, or it was just like, I'm gonna go for it and see what happens? Well, I, I didn't really vision it or, like, try to go for it. I was I was thinking it was, it was also, like, unrealistic for me. I was, uh, you know, focusing on school. I was trying to do many other things. Uh, but I really, I really liked playing CS, so I was doing it a lot. And uh, 2020, 2019, I was like, man, I, I should like try to go all in on this. We played an inter international LAN in Greece, me, Nerds, and you know, a team called Finest, and we, we, we won the tournament, and then I got motivated that maybe maybe that's the, the path that I can follow and stick with. Well, I'm glad you stayed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a good, good choice. <laughs> yeah. Here, here we are. <laughs> Have you spoken to Nerds about, you know, walking out on the grand final stage today? Yeah, he, you know, I was talking with him, I was asking him, like, are you nervous? Are you stressed? And he goes, uh, no, I'm feeling good. You know, I'm. Uh, uh, it's obviously a best of five, which is very different to 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 approach. You know, you have five five maps you're gonna play. You're gonna be hungry mid games. It's not gonna be the same as best of three. And uh, he was just telling me like how much you know it means a lot to him, but he can feel like he can feel like it's a different day. It's not a a, a normal official semis or quarter. You, you seem happy, you seem super healthy. How has it been like in, in, in Vitality so far? Well, it's uh, it's amazing. I think the, the, the whole structure on the team, so it's not only, uh, you know, it's not only the CS that's, that's, that I'm improving in. It's a lot outside social skills, you know, uh, impo like mental health, physical health, which is very important and very valuable. And um, they, they provide all those things and all the support uh, that you need. And then the players, the, their experience is so vast. You know, I can feel it when I went up on stage. They're not the... Uh, they're not um, well when we went in OG I can compare that it was you know worlds are wide like worlds different and it's it's very motivating and you know very very reliable to just like sit and play with those kind of players yeah a whole different kettle of fish we've touched upon ends briefly uh, but let's talk about G2 and what's on the line for them coming into this grand final of course best of five and we touched upon it earlier uh, they could potentially be one of just three teams to get Caddo and Cologne within the same year that is a huge feat to be achieving right yeah a huge feat and I mean you can uh, just just look at the teams that have, that have done it obviously I mean this, you know 2015 Fnatic is one of the greatest like lineups and greatest teams we've ever seen played and obviously um, you know FaZe doing it as well just very very recently and that too is one of the most, I mean, that was one of the deadliest teams that we've seen in a long time as well. So that, that's great company to be part of. Listen, definitely. I mean, winning Kato and winning Cologne after not many people can actually say that they've done that. But especially when it comes to G2, they have ups and downs and, you know, turbulence and everything that's going on with them for the past God knows how many long, how many years. But having a chance to win this against Ants is a, is a, is a very great thing. Yeah, people, some of the best players struggle to win one of those events. <laughs> you win two of them in a year. Yes. It's like, on, baby. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? For any event at all. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. Fair. Yep, Fair. very true. Uh, we've also got the Intel Grand Slam on the line, which is interesting uh, to be diving into because Ents already achieving a notch back in Dallas. And uh, very importantly, you have to win a championship level event as well, right, Jason? So yeah. this could be uh, quite a big one if Ents uh, do win. They get halfway there. It'd be huge to have that kind of a lead really early on as, as well uh, in, the, in this kind of new season of the Intel Grand Slam. Your boys got one. You got one notch up there. Yeah, we have the chance still, but I think, uh, you know, obviously Ents have the better chance today because they have the chance to win Cologne and it's not only you know opportunity for the Grand Slam you get a lot of confidence and you show a lot of merit. I mean you still have eight chances right you have Pro League coming up Sydney all these big events that are going to be coming up this year so you're not that far off are you yeah I mean uh, it, look, it looks far away still but uh, I mean it, it's realistic you know many teams have won not many but people have won it so it's, uh, it's possible
possible. So what are you thinking of G2's form coming into it? Obviously, you might be a little bit biased with Nerds on the side of Ents, but where are you placing G2 in this grand final? Well, we played both of them this event, and uh, I think G2 showed me more, like, you know, m more skill I felt from them. I think when we played Ents yesterday, uh, other than some Pios, I didn't, you know, I didn't feel the individuals were shining, or, you know, usually when I play against them, Diha, Nerds, like, some of them, they just, they just give you good headshots, and that's why you, you maybe will lose some important rounds, and yesterday we saw some of it, but I didn't feel like as it was against G2. Um, but I think I think the veto for uh, for Ens is too good to just yeah. you know it's only if G2 plays like really good Counter Strike and they shoot very good to the head. That's the problem, it, isn't it? Because Inferno is going to be out of the equation for G2. Well, well, you, yeah, I'm sorry, Jason, but I want to take ask, it away, baby. I ask Flames. I just you know about the maps and the teams are not playing certain maps. Do you think Ens has the advantage there? Because we think like obviously Inferno is not going to be in the pool and Overpass, which is a kind of weak map for Ens as well. Do you think like there is a big advantage there for 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 Ents? Yeah, I think obviously I think Ents are feeling very comfortable with that, you know, because it's not only that you ban their best map, um, you also like G2 bans their, you know, one of the worst map, probably bottom three maps, right? So they're coming to the game feeling very comfortable, veto wise. Um, they have Anubis, which they they've shown they've been very strong at. G2 haven't played it on official, maybe they, they you know might look a little shaky. Then you have uh, Nuke, which is like new, uh, like Ants favorite. Um, then there's so many maps that I think, you know, Ancient could possibly... Be. Vertigo? Yeah, Vertigo as well. Like, there's so many things that I think Ents could feel comfortable coming into this uh, into this match. But the, the individuals on G2 side, you know, they might just <laughs> they might just win it on their own. So like, where are you heading, Flamesy? G2 or Ents in this I'll one? be, I'll be. That, that's, I, I think Ents <laughs> are going to get that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, I, I like that, that prediction. On the other end, you know, the G2 won Katowice, so they have, like, the experience on the best of five True. stage, sure. you know. It, like it, it, many things come to that, but I think veto wise, if this was a normal day in the office uh, for both teams, I think Ants would win. Yeah, this grand final is going to be an entirely different beast. So let's check in with the teams as they arrive today in the arena. How are you doing, my friend? All good, all good. Now, I want to ask you, right, you've been on these stages before, you've achieved so much already, but you at home, you've always got your family watching, your daughter watching as well. What kind of motivation does it give you for an event like this after being away for so long? Unexplainable. You need to feel it. I couldn't uh, believe it, like, when I was thinking of it, but when I saw them yesterday in front of me and my daughter especially, it's giving full extra motivation. Just unexplainable, and I hope more players will, will, will see what I saw yesterday and today, it's hopefully, as well, yeah. Today, for sure. When it comes to today, I want to touch on the mentality for the team because you have a new psychologist, Lucas, joined you. What is the biggest difference here that's helped you guys? I mean, he's kind of the most focused on the team and we are working as a team, as a unit together with him. So we are more honest with each other. We are saying everything to each other that is bothering us. And I think that's the most important thing. And we are trying to focus on what, what we can control, what is under our control and not focus too much on the future. Just one step at the moment and that's all. And what was your personal warm-up and before we get into the arena to get yourself right and get yourself ready for this game? Just uh, shoot some bots, drink coffee, listen to the music, and uh, that's all. That's all. We got a big smile on your face. Let's see if it continues, mate. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Hello, Sampayas. Hello. How are you doing? Really yes, uh, what a beautiful day for you. The fact that last year you didn't get to these finals, now you get to do it. So how much are you looking forward to hopefully lifting that trophy today? Uh, and we're actually really looking forward to get this trophy. Uh, we are coming here to fight again, look for duels against them. So yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the support, I know that a lot of your family is here. How much does that make you even more excited to take to the stage and show them what you got? Well, I feel the, their support every time on the stage. So. They are here. That means that I really, really want to take this trophy for them, actually. Now, uh, coming into G2, yesterday you had a fantastic performance versus Vitality. You actually kept Zaiwu down. How are you going to keep Manasi and G2 down today? Well, I don't think too much about that. I just think of my own game and how is the, the game evolving right, right now. So, yeah, I will try my best and I will do my best to help my team. Okay. Final question. Are we expecting another bunny hop before you go onto the stage today out of the tunnel? For sure. All right. Have fun. Man, I'm loving the good vibes coming out of some pairs. We've had a bit of a switch up here. Uh, Kadian, you've joined us. Thank you very much, man. No worries. I'm here. You're tall as hell, man. Don't lean back too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is, is a kind precarious of <laughs> rail. Yeah. Don't, don't worry, kassad has got you. He's uh, our uh, new I'm bodyguard. Um, Kadian, you've been in this position many times before coming into a grand final. What do you think these teams, what, what are the emotions rather, are they experiencing now? 
I mean, I think just looking at the two interviews, you can kind of feel like uh, the calmness of Hunter, where for me, he has that kind of aura around him where he knows what it takes to win these games. He is, for me, the kind of X Factor and difference maker in a final like this. Yes, you have the the Hunter, uh, sorry, the Nico and Manisi, who are like the star players and who will potentially have a higher impact rating of fracking output. But when you need to run through that smoke and you need to kill two people or you need to make that kind of play happen in a two versus three as ET, Hunter is there to do it. So I'm excited about that and the calmness that he has. In terms of San Pius, I think he's been playing some of the best years ever. I remember when he left Movistar initially, like a little bit sad because the Spanish flag uh, flagship uh, team kind of died with that hill of him leaving. But with the trophies he's taken and the performances he's done with Inns, it was for sure the right uh, uh, decision. And I think he's he's done really well as well. It's probably a decision you just couldn't pass up if you're in his spot, like regardless of how much you might have wanted to stay and kind of carry on that legacy. It's just like too good of an opportunity. I think the great thing about it was it didn't necessarily look pretty right out of the gate. No. <laughs> they had to work at it, didn't they? A lot of people were like, uh, kind of overrated maybe. Or, <laughs> yeah, maybe know? go back. It was definitely the vibe at the beginning, but he just proved everybody wrong. I want to ask you, you know, disregard the match. I want to ask how you're doing, right? After the two days has been like since the quarterfinals, you seemed pissed off as hell. You didn't say anything, obviously, because you were, you know, trying to be nice. I, sometimes I think you should accept the villain role, you know. That that would be my advice <laughs> to you. But the, 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 thing is, the thing is, how do you feel about everything so far that's going on? Uh, I mean, I think obviously super disappointed with the results. Um, I think that we underperformed like hell. I think that uh, once more we lost to ourselves. It's not the first time that we're sitting here standing about this after a playoff situation. And uh, I mean, we are so good that we are, we are, you guys are insanely disappointed with us exiting a quarterfinal of Cologne. It says something about the peak of level that we can play at. But we've just also shown throughout different times now that we can, we can suck really hard. The, the like, thing people don't understand is the fact that we expect you to be in the finals. Yeah. We expect you to win, right? That's something that we are like anticipating for a long time. And then when you don't get to it, you like you said, you play the quarterfinals of Cologne. How many teams have played it there, right? Yes. So it's just a, a little bit of a perspective there. Well, if, I mean, if we latch onto that, because it wasn't always like that for you guys, you guys didn't always have that expectation. And that's sort of, there's a conversation around Ents now where it's like, they haven't been considered a top team for a long time. Certainly after making it to these grand finals, that's going to change. So what's that difference? Like, what does that turning that corner feel like where you're still kind of rising up, you're still kind of the underdog to now it's like, you better get to the finals, you better get to the semifinals. Yeah, I think it's very different for us. It was a long journey, you know, where in the beginning we were just happy every time we were making playoffs. We were like, okay, this is really good. But then you reach the point as well where exiting a quarterfinal and semifinal and not winning the final is a bad result. And obviously it takes some confidence as well, where I think maybe INS hasn't really hit that point yet where they're continuously in playoffs and then doing like, they have like peaks and then they have fall downs. But I think for me, the kind of difference in the feeling is something that maybe only the players inside the team can explain because it's when you're running around playing and you feel like okay the guy to your right he's not afraid he's going to make the same play he did in practice one week ago you see when someone is hesitating and stuff it's like infectious to the entire team whether it's in terms of communication decision making or whatever it might be and that's a place where we still struggle I'll say two days of drinking cologne made it a little bit better <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah it is what it is the coach helps definitely uh, speaking of winners you guys can become winners at home if you're participating in the Intel Extreme Masters raffle, head to intelextrememasters.com forward slash raffle. We've got a face it premium subscription, Intel CPU, some Colex goodies, hell of a lot of stuff you can be getting your hands on. Uh, let's flip the script to talk a little bit about G2 as well, because I think uh, for us, all eyes are kind of on Nico, right? This has kind of been his year of, okay, let's grab all the trophies that I can that have evaded me before CSGO ends. So uh, yeah, for his perspective, he wants to be lifting this one, right? I mean, he... he he deserves a lot of trophies yes. and some of them he's been missing out on for a very long time. I wonder I why. I'm not going to go into that entire debate, but what I will say is I think that the fact that he can close out CSGO with um, both Katowice and Cologne in the same year, I think that's a massive achievement. Yeah. It's going to put it a little bit to rest. I mean, the major thing will still be a big story, but I think yeah. winning these two are the biggest trophies other than majors. I think looking, when I saw like a statistic, like just going through the uh, Twitter or X feed or whatever it's called nowadays, I saw that he had like a 150 T rating with 30% entry attempts. Yeah. Like 30% of the rounds, this guy is going in first and trying to search that duel, he's successful 60% of the time, you're not going to find any rifler in the world who's anywhere near those numbers, those success rates or anything like that. I'm very impressed. He breaks he breaks the mold because you'd never look at his game and be like, that's that's how an entry fragger plays. But for whatever reason, he is one of the best entry fraggers that we have in the game. I don't know, man. I, like, Nico's one of those guys that, that 
game he played yesterday, like the first six rounds of Inferno, that was a, that was such a turn on. I'm watching that, I was just like, this is fucking hot. Like that, like watching someone exert their will on a map in that fashion is one of the coolest things you get out of players like Nico, players like yourself at times, players like Simples, I will, when they can actually influence the game to that degree, it's it's greatness. Yeah. How you dare you put Zyvo behind Nico? <laughs> How dare you? I'm just trying to set you up, man. Because I've got on. some bones to pick this oh, morning. Anything man. you want to get off your chest? Oh or? man, oh man. I'm just gonna wait for the finals. That's that's yeah, all. Yeah, that's when this hot sauce is gonna come out. Uh, let's talk a bit about Monacy as well, because I, I think we forget just how young this guy is, right? He's already lifted the Kadavitsa trophy. Imagine him getting to this year at just 18 years old. Yeah, I mean, I think the ceiling is still very high for him. I still need to see him in those finals be the difference maker. Because I outfracked him in the Ketsuvitsa final. And I think we can all agree that my mechanical skills are nowhere near the Manisi. You know, that's just a fact. Sure. And I want to see him now again on the biggest stage. I'm not talking about like uh, the world finals of Blast with like a thousand people. I'm talking in here, 10,000 people. Show the world what you're capable of. You have mechanics like nobody else does in the game. You know all these kind of tricks that pro players has been searching for for three, four years. and you the one to exploit them. Now go ahead and show it in the final because I know he's capable of doing it and I want to see that. I want to see the sexy counter-strike. Yeah, are they just cute tricks or are they actually going to be able to you know, win you a trophy? Are they actually going to have the impact? Yes. Yeah. yeah, that is the question. Kadian, who are you going to be siding with? Considering this is a best of five, we know Inferno isn't going to be in the pool defense, ban out as normal. And be honest, taking it. you know, be honest. I mean, I think... Um, Maybe I've been underrating ends. Maybe I've been underrating okay. ends. I'm not going to deny that. I'm going to say that right now on stream. Maybe I have. But my feeling is still that G2 is going to uh, take it. That's my gut feeling in terms of people who have the X Factor in the game. I feel like also, I mean, you can't base everything off ratings and stuff like this. Of course. But Sanpayos uh, San has kind of been alone on that kind of being the X Factor role. Yeah. Where I feel like there are small players who can do it in G2. Also, a guy that's not talked about a lot is like JKS, who is such a reliable anchor in these high pressure moments. Maybe he's not always going to boast the uh, greatest ratings, but he's won Keto twice, and he's about to potentially win Cologne. I think that's why I'm siding with him. Because I think maybe ends for me is still more of a, it's a team game then. Snappy has to outcall Hooksy. Yep. Not he's, a hard thing to do, but yeah. I'm not, I mean, I'm not <laughs> judging that, that entire thing. But I think, you know, for Snappy it's about out, outcalling them, where Hooksy can maybe rely a bit more on the individuals to make the difference. Okay, that makes sense. So G2, I'm just, obviously you're going with a G2, right, in this one, Kassar? Actually, I'm thinking about, like, logically about this thing, and okay. I'm looking at the maps, the vetoes, and everything that's going on, and the team play that the dance has, and, like, you know, the fact that, well, I have certain feelings towards G2, mixed feelings, but I'm mm -hmm. gonna go with Ants. Okay. 3 1, I believe, in four maps should be. I didn't know Cassette was a believer of the Jinx. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. Jason, you gotta you try everything. With? You gotta try everything when you're that desperate. Uh, I'm, I'm going with Ants too, man. I've been yeah. riding on them this, this whole event. I think it's great. I do I do have the concern of, as you said, Sun Pius seems to be like light, light years above everyone else in terms of impact. I wanna see good games out of Diha today, which we didn't get in the semis, but I'm believing in Ants right now. Well, so many incredible teams. Team, so many incredible plays. So let's relive some of them as you get your votes in the Twitch chat for our one expert clutch. From these remaining three, unarmored. And he still gets a headshot. Two from Electronic. He's got Kepler and a rifle now. Electronic swings out. Doesn't know where the last is coming from. Now just gonna hold his nerve. He's got time as he gets oh! the It's only Buzz left standing against Heroic. And that's what Heroic have been waiting for. They were hoping that Yabby oh! could bail them out. Oh! Buzz! Pristine! Executed by Hobbit and Magic in the open. It has to be Zywu. One left. Oh! Match from Zywu, no left. Overtime, on to the bait. Snappy refuses to quit. It has to be Snappy. It Back in time, Blame Ember's got his back. Astral is back. Oh! He gets him off the bomb. Grand finals of Cologne 23, and me and Chatty B have been given the honor and privilege to be bringing you all of that Counter Strike action. What are you expecting today? 
And versus G2 should be a good match. Map pool sets us up for what could be a five map. A G2 in good form. Some pies looking hot to try. I'm excited to get this one underway. The cathedral is going to be, well, making some noise. Yeah, I mean, we've had bums in seats sold out since the first day. I can't imagine the energy we're going to have during that grand final. I just can't wait to get a start. Should we go get ready? Yeah, let's get ready. Peace. game leader, architect of every move and every win. The entry fragger, fearlessly leading from the front. The opera, the deadliest of them all. The support, the true difference between winning and losing. The lurker, everywhere and nowhere, patiently waiting to strike. It takes five champions to win. Which one are you? He, 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 he was shouting and, and smashing, smashing the walls. He, 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 said, he, said, he said we needed it, that, that it was for our own good. And, and just when I thought that he stopped, he started another speech. And this was all just at the hotel breakfast. Five speeches, two heart to hearts, before the first map, no wonder we lost. It's all part of the process, my son. E e even when you, when you lose to Gamer Legion. Gamer Legion. Father? I was watching. I was watching when you ruined the final of the last CSGO Major. Not you as well. My pickums. My diamond coin. But, but Navi, they lost to Munde, G2 to Fnatic. You were never getting that diamond coin anyway. Silence! I was watching. I'll take responsibility and leave. All good, bro. Chill out. Странно.
We, will, we have arrived. It is grand final time, baby. Let's roll, CT or T, however you want to put it. We're getting ready to get things started here in Cologne, and we're cutting it close. And by that, I mean me. Yes, Why we are. <laughs> <laughs> it's the atmosphere, Chase. That's how we're all feeling, you know, out of yeah. breath. Yeah, it is a, a little bit of an electrifying situation here. Obviously, we'll have the, the, the entire ceremony start here shortly, but really, we have a grand final in front of us. It's the Intel Extreme Masters, and you're looking at what is INS versus G2. Best of five. We're going to have all the fixes today, Yanko. Absolutely, Chase. This is it. This is the last big one in Counter-Strike Global Offensive, right? And I don't think there's a stage more fitting than this one in the Cathedral of Counter-Strike, in the Lanxess Arena, to see who will be the last big event winner in CSGO. Man, I just I just let these words weigh in heavy on me. The last CSGO winner Feel here that, in Cologne. You? It's incredible. Think about the amount of teams that we have crowned here, the amount of history that is within these walls. And yeah, it's the last chapter now. And two teams that are extremely deserving to be here on this championship Sunday. And what a fitting final as well. On one side, you have guys like Nico, right, who's been, since the inception of CSGO, really one of the better, if not the best players in the world. Uh, and on the other side, we have a sort of a new wave of players, right? I mean, obviously, one of the older guys on ends, we have Snappy2, who's been through ups and downs of his own, only to finally, at 33 years old, come to this stage and have a team that's ready to win the final. Then you have guys like Monesi, the new generation, Nerds, all these guys coming up, they're going to be the next chapter in Counter-Strike. Speaking of chapters, I mean, there's there's several that you could look at with each of these players, right? Um, and one that's really sticking out to me, I'm thinking about Hunter, right? What he's brought to the table and what he's got now. You know, he's facing a grand final right down the face. And, well, for what it's worth, look at Katowice versus Cologne. Yeah, listen, I, I look at Hunter. I look at him play. I listen to him talk in an interview. I watch his demeanor. And I'm getting the same Terminator vibe as I had in Katowice. I was waiting for you to say asleep in his bed. No, like, you I'm and just, Hunter are really Christ, tight, man. Absolutely not. I'm just <laughs> watching this man. I don't you're going with that one he's got this coldness you know we ever seen this these movies where it's like there's an assassin and he's just stone cold that's exactly how i feel hunter he's in the zone he is the player right now that you as a captain want to have within your ranks in a playoff game never shying away from the move never second guessing himself always extremely dialed in in all of these moments he was fantastic so far and i have no doubt this is the hunter we're going to get today yeah we, we definitely saw him yesterday hit sorry i mean to cut you off Yanko. we saw him yesterday hit some timings hit some it, it, miraculous plays where in which they were just clueless on the other side. Absolutely a big stage, big game player, Definitely right? And you heard it from Kadian, who had to play against the guy in some of these biggest games, right, that, that we've seen and says that there's an aura about them, right? Like, he definitely elevates, has a lot of impact, and you can see, we talk a lot about G2 and how they were at the start of the year and all those crazy runs, and you can see from Hunter yesterday just what he was talking about, like, that's all behind us, mm. like, the, the Blast World final win, uh, the Katowice win, but also the failures, you know, Dallas, Pro League, Major, obviously, all that stuff. It's all behind us. That's all in the past. We're focusing on like being the new G2, and you can tell that they're. I think the the calmness is the biggest difference yes. between the G2 in Katowice and the G2 we see here. H how much of that do you think gets instilled from a top-down perspective? If we're looking at the hierarchy of players that have been there for a while, say Nico, for example, uh, and obviously with the family thing aside, there has to be a trickle-down effect to that, right? I actually don't know how much is top-down. I actually wonder if the players haven't themselves learned from their past mistakes. Hunter was very vocal about it. He said after we were on top of the world at the beginning of this year, we had all of these events. We slow down a little. We let our guards down. We let ourselves go, and then suddenly, hey, Counter Strike hits you in the face immediately. The level is too too high for that. And I feel this is a different G2 now. You know who also hits you in the face directly? This guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's been that absolutely hurts. incredible this tournament. Look just at the T side numbers, right? I mean, it's on the rifle. Again, one other thing that that Kadian was talking about. It's like this guy is doing it by taking the early fights, mm. by bringing the game to you, by being aggressive, by finding just incredible amounts of impact. And I think when he is playing on this level, it just makes everything else so much easier for G2. It's actually ridiculous. It honestly is ridiculous. I was watching the game against Astralis. The amount of space that Nico had, I mean, obviously this round right here, he completely drags them out of a horrifying situation that could have been a forced by loss to Astralis. He aces it. He closes it. The one versus three. Now, I will put it out there, Yanko. I think that Nico's ability on the T side might just mask a little bit of a lack of quality on the T side of G2. I think the amount of work he's putting individually 
is outside of this universe. Uh, I think for G2, though, it's something that they rely on, really. You know, that, that's their style. They have a lot of freedom for players to make their moves. And sure, they have things they can fall back on, but they're not nearly as successful as playing this default style and giving players space. And I know you guys are going to get tired of hearing this word. But again, with Nico as well, the element that makes him the most dangerous now, in my eyes, looking from outside, is his calmness, too. Like, that ace clutch that he had against Astralis in the second round, blank stare, you know, blank face, nothing, no, like, cheering that you could see from him before. Also, when he loses a silly round, he lost a couple of 1v1s later, nothing again. And I think that's where he's at his most dangerous, because he used to be a super emotional player, and then you ride that roller coaster, you go up and down, and sometimes your emotions get the better of you. If he can be this focused and this poised, then I'd be scared for anyone else. You say a roller coaster, Nico's career, I mean, in, in some ways. We could go into that, but better yet than us diving down, you know, what is memory lane. Let's hear from Nico. Nico, and let's do it right now. I caught up with him backstage. G2 now sit in this grand finals. And Nico, you've been here before, but I want to talk about the mentality from when we discussed in Copenhagen how this team was feeling to what's changed and where you're at now. Uh, yeah, I haven't been here before in the final, but yeah, I've been in the arena and it feels amazing to, to be back in this arena. Um, everyone is uh, really happy and excited to play. Uh, what we have changed. Honestly, not much, I think. As I said in the interview in the blast, like, it can happen that we just click on this event and we just uh, do very well here. I think that's what happened. And uh, I think we had some important wins in the group stage that put us in a good place and that uh, we just kept building uh, the confidence up. And uh, yeah, now we are here and uh, just one step left to the trophy. And when I'm talking about that, right, I want to look at what you said to me yesterday. You said if you could get this trophy, it would be an improvement to your career. It would be something that would change what it looks like. What would it mean personally to you? Uh, yeah, I think yesterday I was talking too much about the trophy. I think it's more important, like, I focus uh, more on the game that could get me a trophy. So, yeah, uh, now that, like, the emotion settled down, I just want to focus on the game and uh, just at every round that we're playing, everything that uh, what's in front of us, I really issue that we're facing, I want to try to help the team. So, yeah, I just want to put all the focus now on the game and not uh, not on the trophy. What do you feel, though, against ENDS is their biggest strength as a team right now? What's making them look so good when you've reviewed them, when you've looked at them? Um, well, I just think that they are playing really well as a team. They are not really dependent on, like, individual skill. They don't need, uh, like, someone to pop off in order to win. I think they have a really good chemistry within the team. I think uh, Snappy has uh, built a good system around the players that he has, and that's their probably biggest strength. So we just have to exploit the system that they're using, and just we have to get ahead of them so we have better reads, pretty much. Well, let's see if you can exploit it. Good luck, mate. Thank you very much. Getting ahead of the curve, is it as simple as he makes it sound? I mean, it's something where you kind of have to find that out early on if you want to do it. I think it's about centering your perspective and being grounded. This is what okay. I'm getting out of this interview, Finico. You have to realize one of the most exceptional profiles we've had in Counter-Strike, period. But for the longest time, his own enemy in these moments, his own enemy at the very top of the mountain, being willing to do too much, try too much, risk too much, because, hey, I am capable of so much. If I'm not going to do it, we're not going to win. That, that's not the mindset he's on right now. Pushing yourself too far and then you run out of oxygen Definitely. I mean, and then you don't want that happen at 8,000 meters but I think absolutely what he talked about the matchup specific I think it's going to be interesting because it is absolutely true that ENS is more system based and like that's great counter strike great job so true. it basically comes down to this their protocols and their system make the situations favorable for their players right while on the side of G2 it's maybe like yeah to some extent but also their players are more prone to winning 50-50 fights yeah you take a look at the head-to-head -head between the two uh, in-game leaders right Danes somehow finding their way back to the stage listen for me it's not just about the numbers it's about a shared characteristic between these two players and for the viewers at home I want you guys to pay attention both these players use speed as a weapon whenever they feel like there's blood in the water in the opponent they're gonna pick up the pace this is the modus operandi of both ends and G2 and this is why this game is gonna deliver fireworks because whenever one feels like there is weakness on the other side they're gonna hit you in the face with the rushes and the contact plays and the fake rushes again it, they can play fast TS. Yes. And also Snappy, the oldest player to get in the grand final of Cologne. He's 33 years old, man. It's not like he's young. What are you super lagging behind when it comes also. He has games where he pops off. He we was good against Vitality. We all, we all, we all remember a Snappy Mirage game, right? A 30 bomb here and there. So props to him as well, you know, sort of trucking along and, and keeping this team together. Him and Saw, amazing job that they've been doing for a long time. And finally, people are 
catching up yeah. to the end of the story. And it's all written on the wall, too. We look at some of their accomplishments and some of the achievements they've had and just the, the amount of time that Snappy's been able to kind of work his system there. Uh, he has to use his tools in a certain way. He has to make them very utilized. And by doing that, I'm talking about Nurts. I mean, this is a guy we're going to hear from right now. Check this out. Nerds, what an insane day today. You're playing the final of I Am Cologne. Um, I saw you walk in with Madden and the boombox and you're singing, so how's the mood? Yeah, the, the atmosphere is really good right now because after the game, we talk like about some uh, problems, but right now we are feeling like we're in our peak, like with the mental. The mental peak is actually feeling really good. Yeah, I mean, it looks like you're peaking. You joined in February, you already won in Dallas, and now you're in the final of Cologne. How special is this? I mean, it, it, everything, it's so fast for me because like I didn't expect us to win like two uh, big events like in such amount of time. But yeah, like I, I don't even know like how to express myself because like it's amazing. Like honestly, like I don't even know. Yeah, it's kind of like a dream and hope it keeps going. But it's G2 up next, a team you actually don't play that much in comparison to some other teams outside of Pro League. So what is going to be the approach today? What is going to be the most important thing in this matchup? I feel like our map pool is perfect target G2. It's the only team that we are we have like the best map pool against them because like we are banning Inferno, one of the best maps. They are banning Overpass, one of our worst maps. So we yeah, like it feels really we have a lot of confidence to play against G2. Yeah. And um, when it comes to G2, they also have a lot of heavy hitters who are fragging out on their lineup. Meaning you are going to have to step up as well. Are you up to the task? Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna step up. Yesterday I, I woke up in the last map, but this is like this gun final, I'm gonna smash these guys. Trust me. And like my team, of course, is my back. I'm glad you're already awake. <laughs> Good luck. Great mindset, I think, coming into what is a, a grand final. You've got to say, yeah, I'm going to jump in the server and smash them because otherwise, you know, what are you doing here? How did you even get here in the first place? Uh, what do you think about what Nerds brings to his team? I think he brings firepower, he brings aggression, he brings initiative as well, right? And he brings a, a level of fearlessness too, which is absolutely crucial in a grand final on this stage in the big game. So, yeah, hopefully, for ends, he's already fully awake. And Maniac, if I shift that same sort of focus, that same sort of tone, we approach some pie. Is a player. What does he bring to the table? Well, exceptionalism, miracles, whatever it is you want to name in terms of a godlike performance that he had God yesterday, like. ruining the dreams of an entire country, maybe hell, two countries, three at once in vitality. Or if you count Switzerland. Was, listen, he ruined my heart yesterday, and he did so so beautifully that he left me no choice but to clap my hands and tip my hat to the incredible performance he's had. And listen, right now, he's slowly but surely amassing an amount of incredible big stage games that is incredible for a player of his young stature. He was here with Movistar Riders a year ago. He was already writing a couple of lines in his legends and now he's just had one of the most reference series you could possibly have against Vitality. And when, when Nico says, listen, I don't think Ents need an individual to pop off, I tend to disagree. Did you watch this game? <laughs> Sun Pius, we're basically doing squats with his entire team on his quads. Yeah, absolutely. Like he had a great performance and you know what we say about Hunter, we can say about Sun Pius too. I feel like steps up on the big stage, but look on the other side of things. Look who he has to face. I like, know. With, with Ants, we just saw it. It's Sam Pius really ahead of uh, the rest of his team. But look here. You have Monesi, Nico, and Hunter. All three of them playing extremely well. You get a little bit of JKS mm. in there in some oh, yeah. moments doing his thing. And then Hooksy with a couple of good calls. It's great timing. This is a completely different beast that yes. they have to face now. Yeah, I feel like if I, if I visualize this fight, it's like you can two boxers. One of them is very good technically. That would be Ants. Maybe they move fast, they have a good plan, but then G2 comes in with that right two punch that knocks you out immediately. Well, and if you get hit in the face, it is over, no matter how good your plan is. That's what G2 can do to ends. Yeah, which is a scary concept. We just heard Nertz talk about you know what maps he doesn't want to play. So how about we talk about some of the maps that we might be able to see, where this is going to go, in the confines of a best of five. Yeah, it is true. So let's just illustrate you know, the map pool back home at the viewers. Look at Inferno, right? That's the big one. 19 times, just the amount of times the G2 has played at their most comfortable map at the moment. That's out. We're not seeing that. That's a perma ban for Ants. On the other side of things, overpass. You can see for Ants, it's like the lowest out of their win rates on all the maps. And really, it's only played when people try to punish them. So those two maps are out. Then you want to talk about G2. What are their strengths? Well, you kind of have to say Nuke, despite yeah. recent results. Look where Ants is on Nuke. Their first loss in 13 games was yesterday to Vitality. Yes, and, and that, it is a very high level. And that was an incredibly close series. Then you want to talk about Mirage, probably too.
too well. They're also pretty even there. Funnily enough, one of the ga one of the maps that looks better for G2 seems to be ancient. They played it a lot of times. They had to put in work on the map because people were exploding against them. And then you have Vertigo 2, which is those are two weaknesses. That's the two maps they played at Pro League where Renz beat them. Mm. And last but not least, we have Anubis that we actually haven't seen yet on the stage here that you can see both teams have 100% win rate, but pay attention to how many times they played it. Not too many. Yeah, and as those vetoes roll out, Nuke will be the first port of call. I know we're getting Anubis today. Right. There's no doubt. No doubt. Wow. Actually, interesting to see G2 go for Mirage immediately. Yeah, I mean, interesting to see Enz pick Nuke. Like, imagine someone told you six months ago, you're playing against G2 in a best of five. Your first pick is Nuke. But that also speaks of their confidence on the yes. map and, like, their confidence coming into this matchup, which is really important. And they were very adamant yesterday about some of the mistakes that were made against Vitality that net them that loss on Nuke. But I think it's an extremely good rehearsal for them. It's an extremely good kind of set of training, having gone through that map, and now they're way more polished moving into the Grand Final. But here's the thing, right? Like, we're looking at the maps, and yeah, it's there. It's it's answers. Like, on every map, they either feel a favorite or they're super comfortable. They don't care, right? But like you said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face, right? And that's what G2 can do. Yes. They can just dismantle it. Like, a round you're supposed to win, you end up losing because Monesty shows up out of nowhere with a crazy flick because Nico hits, like, a couple of one digs, and you lose an anti-eco round because Hook sees some... Because Hunter, you know, split between the cracks, like, and found an, a, a gap as well. And that can be incredibly frustrating to play against. Yeah, I, that just kind of is a testament to the blood in the water idea we were talking about, guys. Thank you very much for breaking this down, first and foremost. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of numbers here. We don't need to get into it, but what we do need to do is get prepared for what is a grand final. A best of five, to be exact. First and foremost, let's see what's going on backstage behind all the greatness that is I Am Clone. Dustin. The war, because we start to get ourselves ready for this. So one thing I want to ask you here is, Sponge, you, back in Cologne 2014, once when it ended well, now he's casting the grand final. Now you're walking into the grand final. What do you feel about that? Yeah, it's great. I think uh, we came last at that event, so <laughs> it's, it's, a good, it's a good way to end it, I guess, to come uh, into the final. Technically, both of us, so yeah. It's good. And for you, you're so chill normally, you're so relaxed the whole time, but how do you feel when you get to this point? How does it feel for you going on the stage? Because for me, you always seem like you're in the perfect motivation. I mean, for sure, like I'm a little bit nervous and playing in front of so many people, it's, uh, you know, I think it's good to have some pressure on you, but uh, it's just, you got to be grateful for it. And I mean, not many people get to do this right, so it's pretty amazing. And yeah, I just really happy to do it. Yeah. I love that too, man. Go enjoy it. Thank you very much, Appreciate Justin. It. Snappy, uh, this is it. You're about to go on stage for, to vie for the biggest trophy in your career so far in Cologne. How ready are you? We're ready. We, we did everything we could. We did the same prep. And I think as long as we, we act like we normally do, I will be proud no matter the result. Yes, I hear from everyone in the team that the, the trust is at an all-time high. And I think when we look at Ents, it feels like the roads have led to this moment and the mental fortitude you have had. Um, so tell me something about the trust in the team right now, the mood, the atmosphere and the desire to perform today. I mean, I think, I think the main thing is that we, we just trust the, the process. We know that if we aren't too result focused and we just focus on one game at a time and maximizing our potential every game, we know that that will lead to the best results. So that's our focus. Good luck.
feels incredible beating Vitality knowing they won the major. It just feels great to be in the finals of Cologne. G2 slam Astralis back down to reality. They are in fighting form. They are in final form. This is my first time playing the grand final in the actual arena. Looking forward to it. Today has been a great show. Sampaius has uh, great routines before the game. The moment he sees the crowd around him, uh, he gets some kind of buff. He just plays much better uh, with the crowd and in arenas. We know how to close our games. We are very calm right now. I don't think they can surprise us. Everyone knows who Monis is, but I still think he is underrated because the things he can do on the server is just insane. Madden could be their X Factor because he's the entry. I think if he's uh, making all the space for them, he could be very dangerous to play against. Madden, the monster! We are going to give everything that we have in our power to secure the trophy. Fundamental beat behind everything. Rhythm, timing, a tempo shift at the opportune moment. The result, a masterpiece. Precision. Pace. A solo concerto. Ending in silence. Each key. An expression. Sound. The perfect pitch. Culminating in a grand crescendo.
Gene Richardson, the conductor of Cologne, directing us through those inspiring words, taking us through that crescendo moment, a crescendo moment that we are going to keep going, a crescendo moment that is going to be the soundtrack to this. After 11 years of Global Offensive, the final one to be decided in this, the Cathedral of Counter-Strike. Two teams about to walk out here. Two teams that in a few hours hope to say the words, Vinny, Vinny, Vici, I came, I saw, I conquered. What they're playing for is this trophy. Their names on it for a moment, not just in history, but to say, I won in Cologne. I came here and this is mine. Your first team, it's Ents. They say age is but a number, and do you know what? They are true. It's the number of a beast in Snappy, a man who is the oldest here in Cologne. But he wants that trophy, that title, to step out of the shadow of those other Danish in-game leaders. Beware the Kraken, ladies and gentlemen. It's Ants! You want to be the best? You got to beat the best. They take on a team who ride the roller coaster. They can beat you at your game. They can beat you at their game. They can plain just beat you. Our second team in this grand final. Please welcome to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, it's G2. Before Katowice, Nico was a king without a crown. Here, he wants to double it. They are such a team. We know what they can do. We know who's in their ranks. But you know, they have to show it. They wait for the big stages. Ladies and gentlemen, it's G2! All right then, time to take the deepest of breaths. It's time to turn it up to 11 Cologne, this Cathedral of Counter-Strike, because we have not one, not two, not three, not four, but a best of five to see who will be the champions. This final global offensive title we're looking to take here. And I think, with a moment's silence, it's time to get it on! Intel Extreme Masters 2023 in the Cathedral of Counter-Strike in Cologne. Who is winning this? Is it Ants? Is it G2? Come on, Cologne, one last time. Is it Ants? It you. Let's get it on, baby. So incredibly well set that stage, and we are ready to get this grand final underway just a moment's here away from what will be the beginning of that best of five. Of course, we do know the maps. We know what we're doing here. we got to take it all in, and obviously, 
a hell of an intro, Maniac. Absolutely, Trace. And what we got to do is honor the journey of some of these players as they're yep. about to step into the grand final. Words for Snappy, 33-year-old, the oldest that we've had on stage here. And Snappy wasn't really given anything in the Counter-Strike. He took it. He had to take it. He had to form lineup time and time again. He had big organizations come over, take his best players away from him. And now that he's been performing with ends, we still deny them the status. But today, they have an opportunity to take that status, and we won't have anything to say about it. Yanko, 11 years in the making. Absolutely, Chase. Listen, if winning a CSGO Major is the Mount Everest of Counter-Strike, then winning in Cologne has to be K2. Or going to Mars. One of the two. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty Mars, out there, right? Like, it's out there. Or actually someone going to the moon. But yeah, I think for this one, can G2 get the job done, Katowice and Cologne, or, is, or will Lens finally rise to the challenge and prove us that they're one of the world's best? I'm so ready to see men go against each other. A fight, a battle, Chase. That's what we're waiting for. Yeah, and that's exactly what we're going to get. A knockdown slot slobber knocker of a match, a best of five. It's got all the fixings and everything else. Grab your friends, grab your family. We are ready to get this bad boy started. And by doing so, we're looking at Noob. We go to Mirage. We're going to get a Noobus today, I guarantee it. And if we should have to go all the way to Ancient Vertigo, we damn sure will. But I'll leave that all to the storytellers. It's Spongebob Machine. A grand final for us all to enjoy. Every single human being in the Langsess Arena interested to find out who will be inscribed next to those legendary names on that trophy in center stage. I'll tell you, I've been up there, Chad. It's pretty daunting, but I'm sure it's going to be nothing but celebrations for those that lift the trophy at the end of this grand final. Today, we will have five new Cologne champions to be crowned in front of this packed out arena in what may just very be the final chapter in that CSGO book. Global Offensive, it's treated us well. And G2 and Ends are about to treat every single one of us to a grand final to remember. A moment to compose themselves. Put yourselves in the shoes of these human beings, mouse and keyboard at their fingertips. Doing what they've done countless times before. But this time, this time, a sold out stadium is here to witness. You make personal history and game history. This is what the Intel Extreme Masters are all about. Five maps up for it. Our first battleground for this grand final is Nuke. Ladies and gentlemen of the Lanxess, let's get this grand final started. Out the gates, enters pick, T-side nuke. Aside yesterday, I'm sure they wish they could forget. Regardless, in the grand final and ready to deal some pain. Snappy calls his troops in towards lobby, Util at the ready. On top of Hunt, the dual Berettas of Hunter. Perfectly positioned, but Madden's Util may trump exactly that. The Samurai on the defense, and they're coming their way. Hunter first on the Julies. He's held them at the door. And Hoopsie trying to combine, trying to put another bullet into Nerds. Madden tested, Modesty aggressing. No silencer! And two headshots. Okay, D, I'll see you later, G2. With some showboating in the pistol. Bit of flair there from young Modesty. Taking that silencer off, making a bang. A couple for him and G2. A great response to that top pop, a smoke for Hunter at the ready. You see this, the full package for him. Able to mount that hut. Nobody getting out that door. And Monacy even pushing in towards Squeaky here. 
So great start for G2, and I think the consensus is if this G2 play their A game, nobody can stop them. The question is, which version do we get today? I think that's the same question Ents are going to be asking themselves. JK has to be tested early here. On an island towards ramp. Rotation available from Monacy, but currently in the heavens. Smoke to hold them at bay. Flash lined up and the pop. Just moments. There's the go. JKS, this is his first test and he's impressing with three on the Farmas. Mission accomplished. A force by back, sure, but now only operating with Snappy on attack nine and that recovered Farmas from the Aussie. Three's an awful lot there. Territory, sure. Hoping for a push, hoping for a misstep here. The early jitters of the grand final. Hooksy up and over and ready to take down Snappy. In-game leader on the other side. Jiggles it out and gets the kill on the Tech 9. More damage done. That should be all they have on the agenda, though. Damage, surely, no bomb plant, no round. Not if G2 can adjust to the remaining two. Nico down towards the lower deck here. We'll be dealing with the ramp descent. Back of the site, it's snappy low. Nerds needs the trade for this plant to go down. When does Nico strike? Does he want a cursory glance or will he let them walk into him? They have no answers, no info. And he has caught out Nerds. That was the healthy one. Clean as you like. G2 off to the races now. Worst thing G2 lost in that round is not retaining the Famous from JKS, but they'll be happy to deal with that force by now. It'll just be the pistols here for Entz. No plan in the first two. So this is exactly how you want things to operate for G2 in the early stages here. And Yanko brought it up on the desk, picking Nuke into G2. This is a team who once upon a time were considered one of the very, very best. And I'd love to pick your brain about that. In terms of Ensis T side on Nuke, some critics are quite vocal about this, whether it's easy to read or whether it's a bit stubborn. We saw it yesterday. What's your take? I think the thing is, we've discussed this team in the past, if they since blood in the water, they're able to just bludgeon you to death with their pace. But their different openings are just to position their players and well, try and outmaneuver you, right? Then we saw yesterday they're using topside as the quick descent down towards B in several occasions. If that can be stalled, if that can be slowed, against Vitality yesterday, they did struggle. And it all happened with an eco round loss where they diffused in front of them, threw a smoke, multiple kills came in. So that really shattered the confidence of Ents and JKS to be tested yet again. Okay. Oh, JKS. Strappy. Yeah, he's only left with one now. That M4. You can see they're setting their sights on at least the territory. Nico's trying to bodyguard that rifle. They might get their yeah, hands on it here. On. Nerds has gotten away with it. Now he had the bomb on his back, so that was a risky maneuver. And well, Diha, he's keeping Hootsie busy with Hunter's long range weapon. They will combine nicely to get this one started. So that's a 3 0. Yesterday, end started. Smoke walls towards Yard, allowing Diha to work. and. That seemed to be a great way to kick things off. The question is, what are we seeing out the gates today? They love a top pop. They enjoy keeping the pressure there in the early stages. We've seen them try ramp on the two lighter buys to isolate the solo defender of JKS. And in both occasions, they've been able to take him down. With different variations of casualties here. But out the gates, nades at the ready. Soften up towards that hut position. And that's going to do an awful lot of damage to Hunter here. He's removed. Madden's got the better of him. Brilliant start to Madden's campaign. That's his first taste of a frag on this grand final stage. Now, with the CTs on the back foot, chip damage already added to the mix. Ooh. No, it's good placement of the crosshair, but Nico, he activates. He's punished for it. Trying to even the odds, but instead they tip further and ends his favor. And smoke wall's up now, so all this room towards yard is possible here. Standard response, lobby pressure. You can see dotted across the diagonal wall, four players are ushered down now. The rotation point to be ventured through Vent as Hooksy slinks, but he's very low on HP here. If he gets a kill, that'd be great. But Enter set up to win their first round. Hooksy, this is a big test for him. Now he has got to strike a balance. And passive nature from Nurse is rewarded. And Madden adds it to the list. This could be perfect from Enter. JKS puts a little blemish on the record. Madden's gone, but the round surely to slot into place. Some pious planting topside. Nerds find damage. No frag. JKS 2. Well, they know the AWP's towards lobby here, so who wants to get their hands on that first? I'm sure some pious would love it, but JKS would like to get that back for Monacy as well here. He's trying to lock this down. 
JK staying alive with a silenced M4 is a big boon going into the next, considering the finances here. The hunt is on. Snappy silently searching. Might be able to rip this one away. On the clear, JKS actually catches a third, so insane damage. In the face of a guaranteed lost round, he leaves with three frags and his saved rifle. Yeah, that's huge, right? The fact that he's able to retain anything here, do some decent damage with it, he will be able to drop another AWP over towards Monacy here. So we can get back into another gun round for G2. It might be an MP9 for Hooksy. He can drop a gun to Nico, right? He has been an absolute stud this event. So set your stars up. That's Hooksy's in. Look at the nades, right? This is harassing a standard play there. We used to call it the boomage. You drop down, you throw the flash, you get ready for the squeaky rush. That's a great way to counter a team that loves to go top. Right, because normally when you go through main, you get mollied and HE'd, so you like to drop down from the ladder position right. and strafe across. Those HE's landing right in his path, doing so much damage there, so Hunter being conditioned early. They have been able to get full rifles out here, and now more pressure towards top. Not far off, mad and peppered. A better start for this top site defense. And a mix-up in the setup as well. Is a kit here available for G2, so if we find ourselves in a post plant, they can give this one a crack. It is in the back of Monacy for now. He really smokes available here to defend, and that AWP posted towards ramps might be tested as nerds. We'll be getting back up shortly. And this is where you play the game, the smoke and mirrors. The wall is up. What is the rotation point, and who will have to deal with the lower site? Dihan just patrolling the yard traditionally. Likes to get a move on that molly. More information for Snappy here to understand. And the last molly used now is Hunter with a smoke. Redeployed. Right on that minute mark. They have three towards the top site here. Playing anti. Ready for any sort of full go called by Snappy. Still plenty of flashbangs. A full course of them available to the end's finish. Hooksy's baiting for this. Hunter should be good for a couple here if they try and eke out the hut. 40 seconds now. The go must be soon. Oh, perfect flash to destabilize as they walk out contact, Snappy looking. And JP, yes, he's been spotted, a big opening. And Hooksy, he stems the bleed, St. Pius caught out, Hunter overlooked, and it looks good for G2, two on two, Monacy oh. hits it, no trade, oh. Monacy solid, as a rock from the heavens. That might look pedestrian here, but this is a grand final stage. Multi-kill impact, it's always gonna be counted for here. You gotta be stepping up. And that is massive work considering they get the freebie onto JKS. The angle's not for him there. Snappy, diligent on the clear. Good trades into the snipe. But the rotation time of the young gun, Monacy makes it just in time. Oh, he was flashed as well. Hooksy really did well to pull that across the line. And this is the Monacy pair of frags. Pedestrian, you may say, but as Chad has highlighted, finding that now, you can see what it means to the team. Exactly. Oh, early friction. Nerd, ballsy. He's got a hunter out of there. At least Hootie has knocked oh. him off the premises, but aggressive from Dia and the SMGs, they kick open the front door. They demand the A site and they take blood to find it. Weapons to be retrieved, a one way dropped. Flash at the ready here, JKS and a go. He's going to drop into the site. Pressure onto JKS. Can he close? Can he claw back into the round? Amiga frag. Is one enough? Monacy, they know where you are. Covers the shot. Overlooking him. Mad and around, it's Sun Pius! Solid! And that's the first we've seen from the Spaniard as well. A full team ace from Ent, and it was Poppy. Yeah, good arm wrestle here though. You see they're being in towards this top side, making sure they're constantly harassing here. The previous round it was late, this one it was a bit quicker. And you saw two players standing on the Tetris box, not looking the right way. Hunter had no idea Nerd team had that space. Those two individuals, Nico and Hooksy, looking a little bit silly, and just mopped up. Everybody looking the wrong way. So great work from Entz, trading off of one another, right? Not next to each other, but understanding the gaps that they were creating on that way in. And that's the kind of call that requires every member of the team to commit to it. So the fact that that's worked is going to validate early. This is an all-in here from G2. They've invested four spy pistols out, an MP9 for JKS short. Very light on in the U2 uh -oh. department, but Nico's Deagle has to land. He is getting knocked down. Yeah, I mean, so many bullets connected there, fortunately, from the little gun, but he'll still try and hold on to Yard with 20 HP. So many pot shots. Snappy finally falls to that Deagle. And now the crunch. Hoopsie accelerates into the lobby. They've overlooked him, and now with a two man advantage, make it one. JKS, he's missed a chance. Never mind. Some players down and out. And with SMG, G2 wrestle back control. Look at the fire in the 
belly already here. This is map number one. We say the old cliche, a marathon, not a sprint here, but these two teams, match you highlighted on the desk, speed as a weapon, and right now, aggression, that's at the top of the menu. Both of these teams, blow after blow, it's a three round difference here, but already, first half, map one, and this is delivering. Stubborn was Nico On 20 HP as well, sticking around, knowing Whoa. they have to hit these shots, and this is the thing with G2, player for player, Pound for pound, punch for punch, these are some heavy hitters. They and hooks <laughs> Yeah, he's giving me goosebumps just seeing him so fired up. A good sign of life out of JKS as well. He had to take a bit of a gamble there, re-aggressing. Hootsie's just baited them. He knows attention. Comms is focused on Hut, and here he comes too. Even taking down a sniper with that SMG. So a huge haul for G2. And a timeout called here. Trying to stabilize themselves early on both sides of the server, but you may as well keep going with these bites, right? You can get some weapons out, you can stay threatening. We know that both sides of the server have players who can deliver in these type of moments, and Snappy's individuals, more often than not, are used to this type of play. Bye, bye, bye. Let's just keep that pressure on. If Russian doesn't work, rush faster, but right now, Taking some pep out of the step, and they want to try and take JKS down again towards Ram. Oh. Just feeding the Aussie. Lovely work. He holds that tiny sliver gap. And leaves with the frag. Lots of comms from JKS. Monacy has caught Diha. He's away here. He's not in the open. And yeah, Madden body shots him down into the low site. Got support. Nico addressing the issue. When does he strike? Weapon retrieved. Bomb down then, see this one, Nico's pulled it away. A two-man advantage, a hard retake, sure, but only a deagle on Madden Snappy with the M4 would have to do something absurd as Nico's banging them out. One more of those, and it's all curtains for the round. Lovely work. Just one casualty, sure, get the bomb down all you want. Six already on the board. Yeah, with the loss bonus here, it might have to just be a partial investment from Enz. I don't think they can shove all in yet again. So we can get a four-round game here, G2 and tidy stuff, and we talk about some of these big game players. We talk about Hunter, we talk about JKS, we talk about some bias on the other side of the server. They all love their moment in the spotlight. And these are players who flourish in these environments. The second timeout used from Ent in the first half of play here, and we're only eight rounds deep. This is a team, sure they've been able to lift the trophy in IEM Dallas, but this is a completely different playing field. Saw attributed with a lot of credit from his teammates for the success. Even Snappy taking a Twitter yesterday to let the record show Saul was the one who made the call on Mirage, the fast A to seal the deal. Damn, that's gangster shit. And that shows the trust between not only the players in the server, but the coach behind them. And that is the sword that ends live and die by here. The way that this team has been able to put themselves together, the players that they brought in, and the most recent being Nerds, saying today, in this grand final, I'm going to smash these guys. Well, we'd love to see Nerds with that fire in the belly. Now it's extinguished in that semi-final. Look at Nico. Straight out of the yard, straight into the eyes of Diha. And it's information here. You see a smoke wall, but you want to know what type of bind that you're dealing with. So you take down Diha, you spot the pistol. There's still an AK-47 in the hands of Madden here. And again, they... I'm going to continue into JKS's domain. JKS is so good at this game, holding on the back box. He goes for more! Greedy! Triple kill, he's got 14 total here in the ninth round of play. Snappy, he's managed to find one headshot onto Hunter. He lost a lot of health in the process. And he'll be hard pressed to hold on to this M4. It's just damage here. And look, to talk about some of these big stage players, I think Hunter and JKS fall into sim similar categories. Sure, they get fired up in these moments, but these two stay calm with their demeanor. And the thing is, they make the same decisions they make in practice as they would in a group stage, as they would now in a playoff match. Whereas other players have that indecision, the hesitation. There's a fine line between nerves and excitement, and they contain all of that. So how does that intersect with these big game players? Are you telling me Sun Pius is doing something he wouldn't normally do in a group stage game, or is it mind over matter? I think Sun Pius is uh, a whole lot flarier in the moment. He enjoys the time in the sun, right? Uh, he is Spanish after all. I've yeah. heard that out of Snappy's mouth. So when the spotlight's on him and he gets to go for those type of plays, he kind of gets the power of the crowd, where the others, I think Hunter and JKS, they're more deflecting that and just playing their standard game, which makes them look like beasts in this, well, 
packed out arena. <laughs> yeah, this Coliseum of Counter-Strike. Well, another round here, seven to two. And this is where maybe picking Nuke is coming back to bite Snappy in the arse here. Especially when you want to think about, you know, this marathon ahead of them. Ents pick, and G2 gets a start on the CT side of Nuke and get those juices flowing. Yeah, it felt to me like G2 had to pick Mirage no matter what here. But for Ents, they could have taken this in multiple different magnitudes of maps, right? So deciding to start here on Nuke, I think it is a bit of a gift for G2 if they can find their form. And they're already showing that early. And we have Anubis as the third map of the series. We will Guaranteed to have Anubis here today. And a map that we haven't seen played on the stage only six times in total throughout all of Cologne. Ooh, playing on the edge of the hut, that could be overlooked. Monacy's brought some aggression into the mix on yard side. Snappy to bait, hoping that will avert his gaze. Monacy starting his crawl. Diha already beheaded by Nico in the previous round. Responsible for taking space or at least showing presence, but he's looking hesitant. Wall of Smokes to be deployed. Monacy will be able to be the canary here. And call out occupation or not. Caught out Diha. No one else home behind the smokes. And Snappy aware that that information now flows. A pivot required. That will delay you. You've still got a minute to make this call. Limping a little. You really want to walk out squeaky here and try and duel, but that worked great for them last time round. Nerds with a bit of gap, able to spot out close towards CT. Then in the heart push. Hooksy this time in Hunter's position. Does he have the balls? And Monis is in the side as well. Top is bolstered. Primed and ready. Turns to flash. Monacy delivers. The bomb down the vent though, as is a player. Make it two Madden scarpering to the plant. Monacy caught out Snappy. He's defending that vent, he's defending his boys down the vent now. And the bomb goes in for a three on three. This retake hinges on the three. Now two to defend that bomb. Snappy's doubles something, but Madden has to deliver in kind. He has to replicate the same. Paired up, starting their crawl. Now Madden loses his head and Snappy. Need the ace. He would need the ace. At least the time is ticking in his side. Bombs down, hoping to dis disrupt. And he caught off Hoopsie. They've got the time. They need a kit. They need a kit. He's oh, found it. Good. It was just next to him. <laughs> all right. Didn't have to go too far for that one. Listen, G2 kit diffuses. <laughs> Especially that lower site. Yeah. <laughs> you start to wonder. After yesterday with that Zywu 4K? Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. All right, all right. Ooh. Well, G2, I, I think right now one of the keys is they've put a leash on Diha towards Yard, right? And this is something that is done with the aggression of Monis' AWP or Nico searching Yard with the Deagle. Snappy needs to try and help out Diha towards Yard because even though you're throwing the smoke wall, it's not really enough if they're willing to play forward here. And Nurse letting the frustration get into him early. You might need to bring out the AWP and they have some pious, an absolute can opener yesterday. Time and time again, finding opening picks for the AWP. This uh -oh. time caught in the opener. Yeah, he's so low, 40 HP. That's vulnerable to these AKs now, he, but still he takes the fight. Proactive on the AWP, Nico's shoulder ripped off his body. Honestly, forward. It's a missed smoke here, just flew back to spawn, fading now, but you saw the gap. Ends with some unforced errors there as far as the U2 wall. Nerds, you heard the retreat of that ramp player. A potential gap presents itself. Regrouping. I'm not seeing much in the utility department, Chad. It just has to be brute force. Yeah, one molly here. And that's on Nerds, who does have an awful lot of space. That is the biggest key. So territory traded with that yard pressure, and Nerds has found the path of least resistance here, but he's going to spot nothing home. What a setup out of G2. This is cruel. And Diha has managed to clear out Hunter. That's a big frag from the pole. you still got 40 seconds. This round feels like it's taking an eternity. And now Nurtz can strike from the heaven. A hard shot to hit for Monacy. Diha builds upon it. They are recovering this round. No nades needed. Nico, 17 HP. Madden going to be overlooked here by Mr. Kovac, and it puts it all onto JKS. 16 frags and counting, but that bomb already ticking. Yeah, and Lost Burn is bottom of the barrel here. I'm not sure it's something he wants to give a go, so it might be a couple more exits here. We should JKS get three of those before, so he can take those off of the tally. So here, the AK-47, all he's going to be able to carry through, and that was well-maneuvered from Entz. You highlighted the fact there was no U-Till. It was just nerds. 
taking a risk, taking a gamble, looking for space, and he got given that sound cue with JKS retreating. Now, are you expecting it to be completely open? Well, maybe. Because they put so much pressure yard, Nico didn't have any eyes, they didn't know what was down secret. Their biggest problem was they were so worried about the B bomb site they gave up all of ramp and the heaven and hell territory, and Nerds found impact. I think Hunter's death is one that might be quite alarming for him as well, considering I saw him there, pushed up Squeak, holding that ladder from T-Roof. And but, then Diha got the frag. But this is how this works, right? Diha is getting to choose when he wants to take that fight. And when Nerds comes up the ladder and sees nobody in top site, he says they have to be in lobby. They have to be in lobby. So when you're a player and you're the one dictating when you want to take the fight, you should have the advantage unless you're walking into an AWP. And you saw that exactly from Diha, just rips him apart, massive work, and ends with another round here. It's been spotty. But there's still a chance to break G2's finances here. If they can convert another round, a consecutive round, G2 with the loss bonus, and I have to either save or bring pistols through. And Saw and Snappy are very aware of that situation. So just one more here for Ents, and they can really start to test G2 here in this first half. Important round ahead for round 12. They burned two timeouts in the first, like, six rounds. But it's in front of them now. A chance to regain control of the map you chose to start this grand final on. What's going on? Smokes. Peculiar. Madden. Heavily exposed if Nico was to take a glance. Wow. Four invested into this. As long as they can get the space here, they can deal with the rotations. Nico takes the fight, throws out a nade, but that space I was talking about, it has been taken. Hoovered up here from Entz. Across with the bomb on the back of Snappy. So now this is about the rotations of G2 again. They left a gaping hole last time towards ramp. I don't think that'll happen again. No, it's with that high pressure lobby lurk roll. You've got Hooksy, JKS, both. Oh, even more. Hunter's right there for him. They're looking for nerds. And he holds his nerve for the first. Lobby clear, they decree. And silently slithering towards that bomb site. Plant is but a guarantee here. Door's gonna swing open, smoke to obscure JKS. Now the moving oh! and Orpa singing, some Pius takes another. It's a big contribution from some Pius in a must win round. And with that bomb down, now the question remains, do you want to take these guns away? I don't think you can go in towards the B site here. There's too many unknowns. And this lurk of Madden, as we can see, is going to secure it. The position of Nico, now Hunter and Monacy starting to investigate elsewhere. That important round, as far as the finances are concerned, G2 aware of this problem as well. So holding on to their upgrades, as Enter starting to grind them down now. You could have... A very last second collision. Oh, Barrel. Nico, he gets himself an AK upgrade. No complaints from either of the Kovac cousins. And a fourth round all found for Enz. And now we can do some quick maths here. Hunter can drop an M4 across to one of the two, most likely JKS. Hooksy can get given an MP9, or they can just make him buy up himself here. And that sign's going to remind everybody, yeah, we do have some German representation on the stage here today. Swanee. just have to say the man's name. <laughs> We're back underway here. Hooksy did get that Destin MP9. M4 for JKS out here. Maybe something more direct from Entz. Nico with a furrowed brow and a white screen. Puts 30 bullets into the vent with nothing to report. Bomb. And Hunter, a huge frag. Catches Nerd, tucked into Squeaky. Bomb. On the radar, nades and smokes to slow them down. Madden poised to try and punish out the heart, but already with Diha gone yard, this is 3v5. Snappy wanted to get the bomb, but he did. And the smoke scoops it up. Now they turn to some pies here to try and find something. Madden forward in hut might find Hooksy. He's aware of the angle. Hooksy's considering it. And wow, Hooksy! Manages that brilliantly, and look at G2 go. They are soaring through this defense. Every individual present and correct. Hooksy passing that test. Only Snappy. They'd love to keep it perfect, keep that sheet clean. And Nico ensures it. Not only winning out the half, but a nine round haul already. More rounds to be seen. Well, this right here is the G2 that won IEM Katowice at the start of the year.
This is the G2 that was the best team in the world. The team that we're seeing in these first 14 rounds of play. This is the squad, right? Everybody firing, JKS delivering. When he's tested, Mondesi's AWP, Nico's rifle looking sharp. Hooksy with contributions. Hunter's not here yet, but he doesn't need to be. This is perfect for G2 out the gates, but a 9-6 half still available here. We saw yesterday Ents were still able to make a match of Nuke, even with an 11-4 scoreline. It could have been a 2-0 affair. A couple of bogey rounds that could have gone either way. Good point. So four at the moment for Ents. They're not going to be feeling defeated whatsoever, but they know they can still do better than this, and the finances are available to do so. Madden rocking a Mac 10. I was intrigued to see where he chooses to try and find a contribution with that. Yeah, as a back spawn, so I don't expect to see anything quite fast here. Could be late, but they have this AWP of some pious. You'd at least want to allow the Spaniard to try and use the big green to find an opening here. Prioritizing his utility. Some pious fires off a warning shot. Nico notes the AWP's position. And Monacy, his internal timings start to tick. Nico, that is a forward position. He wants full info on Yard. A late arrival, but the whole squad's here. Nico, known for his aiming prowess, and Hoopsy, the perfect bait as Nico combines. Now he can completely relocate. Mission accomplished. Spamming through the smoke. Snappy. Oh, what? The last bullet of a hectic spray catches Nico. Fortunately, family quick for revenge. He wants to win the whole round with this one. You could get them both. This is brilliant stuff. Hunter, the round winner. Proactive push and nerds. He's sitting there saying, sorry, man. I'm going to be honest, considering the circumstances of a stage game, going for a play like that, even with number advantage, he was fortunate they were already making some noise. Right? No, no, no tell there. Not the silence into audible jeers. That was jeers into Hunter with a double kill. So caught off guard there were Ents. It's a big play to make, and you're right, yeah, ballsy to make it in this environment. I'm just taking a look here, it's T-side nuke, so I'm not being a harsh critic by any stretch of the imagination, but we need to point out yesterday, I caught him the can opener, some pious, brilliant. Right now, zero and three as far as the opening jewels. He was getting every kill and more with the AWP. Think about Mirage, out middle, T-side, in their face, across the map. Right now, a map like Nuke, not able to get away with those same hijinks. Another limp together by here. Another opening kill for Nico. Let's make that 3-0. and Every individual from G2 seems to have woken up wide-eyed and bushy-tailed. Looking to find that same G2 that lifted the trophy in Katowice at the start of this year. Nico, he is poised, he is robotic, and he takes down Snappy as well. Nerds, already held. What? what is that from Oopsie? He's laughing at him. He's having way too much fun. He was on the ladder. That is an ill-advised rotation. I don't care that he got away with that. <laughs> well, it seems, yeah, some... Higher power is looking over Hoopsy for this one. That's <laughs> ridiculous. Nico even types unlucky in the chat. Unbelievable. And this is for that what potential 10-5 half. You know, that would have been a whole lot better than we've grown to expect. And Hoopsy, he'll leave with another. It's all giggles on one side of the stage and ends. It's time for a serious team talk. You got two minutes in counting. We'll be right back.
Hello, Lanxess! Boosting 11 rounds on that first half. It was G2's defense that got them into the double digits. Now we swap sides. It's Ensis' turn. And G2 will be bringing them the attack. Will Ensis' pick of Nuke in this best of five continue to surprise? Yeah, Nico's eyes right there, was I think. Was that after the ladder That shot? was after the hooksy ladder <laughs> kill, who's having a great time here on the big stage. First time in the Lanxess for Hooksy, and he's loving life. Nerds, he's about to have a lot, but look at this placement of his cross set. Is it going to be pixel perfect? No, it's the answer. They're flooding in. Need a reaction. Madden, only the one. Nerds is oh! gone. JK, yes, there's some both down. He cleared the site on his own and with Nico's help. Ends waving the white flag. Another pistol slipping away through the fingers. Of ends, it's Snappy and St. Pius. Only two frags from the Spaniard in that first half. And now Nico down. St. Pius, a good contribution. Maybe Snappy can find Hunter in time. A one on one, dancing around the site. Hunter's playing the game. He's overlooked him. Beautiful from Hunter. That pistol round felt like it always had to be G2's. Ents worked very hard to get back into that. And Snappy, you can see he's the individual standing up and trying to be counted here oh. for Ents. 33 years young and Snappy doing his best to try and pull them back into this pistol after JKS shatters three. Precision shooting as Hunter just has to toy with him there and Hooksy again, elated with this one. A force buy back from Ents and this is essentially the map here. They can't make anything work on this force buy. G2 are gonna run up that score line real quick. Scout noted, good information. Hunter going to search forward off the back of this. He's happy to take some gambles. All that jump could have cost him. Yeah, some info, deliberate or otherwise. Snappy will have support here. Sampias has made it over in time. So in tandem, the two to lock down ramp. Smoke has faded. Now Sampias in position. Primed, ready. Tags up one. 
JKS limping, more damage inflicted. He oh. took two shots, but it doesn't matter. Nico only needs the one. As this one falls apart, ends. Absent on map one. But look at that simple understanding of the situation. Get Hunter across. He deals with event rotation. No way down towards the lower site. The rest of them pressure ramp. There's only one avenue, and if they go down ramp, they're going to be sandwiched. So great work from G2. It is simple counter-strike, but it's done well. And the fact that St. Pius does all that damage and they're still able to stand and bank, nobody backed off. Nobody just ran away. G2 stood, they fought together, and they got it done. And they might even keep all five staying alive. It's just Diha now. But I mentioned, you get a force by like that. This is 13 confirmed. What do you do, Ents? Do you force buy again? Do you double dip? Do you run up that tally? Because this is going to be a stomping on map number one. Your map choice in a best of five final. We have praised Ents for mental fortitude. We discussed, we even saw it displayed in that semi final. Being able to reset, being able to stay composed, and a team that's Stronger than the sum of their parts. But it seems that they're going to have to be tested once again in that department. Losing your map pick in a best of five final against a G2 that seemed to be rising to the occasion. Uh, some pious understanding the situation here. It's pretty damn dire. He's going to buy into another scout here. So 1700 expended. They want to try and keep this one threatening. Ooh, not far off the mark, but oh, Nico's Galil acting like an AK as yep. Diha loses his head. They're looking like marauders now, right? Yep. Like they're not shying away from any duel. They understand that right Fight now. Me. Fight yeah, me. exactly. Everyone gives them the duel they want. This is brutal. And this is the difference. And this is where G2, it's just animals in, in the server. Every single one of them. And what does that make Hooksy, the zookeeper? Yeah, well, he keeps them in line and keeps them well fed. It's two to find here, Snappy and Madden. Not long for this world. Hunter with the up and over. But this is 14 all but confirmed here. Honestly, and Nico is still slightly low, but now that Snappy noted, the goosh comes through. Oh, seeing it from Enter's POV, and there you go, there's a demonstration. Hunter just leaping down to finish off the job, and they have five alive as they run down ends. This one might be quick here. And this is key. If you're able to waltz all over your, uh, your opponent here, you're conserving energy while dominating. Now you're able to carry this momentum through. Ents haven't even gotten started just yet. And that sound, it means just one thing. Ents, throughout this map, with only four rounds to their name, have uh, burnt their fourth and final time out here. Things aren't going to get easier from this moment forward, and even just for the betterment of this series, just to give yourself some warm-up, get some individuals online. You'd love to see some Pius with more than three kills. You have six for Diha, eight for Nerds, eight for Madden. Snappy, the in-game leader at the tippy top with only 10, the only one to crack double digits so far. But Sunday, the day of rest, we're putting these two to the test. G2 with all the momentum here. So much cash already. Did and they call one after? Tactical timeout G2 after of the back of Ence's last. That would be ballsy. And now we charge. Does it really end this quickly? Or can Ence put up a little bit of a wall? A little bit of a defense? JKS, he wants to go fast. He wants to go furious. Straight through into nuts. See her a response, but already a reaction required. Loud on the descent of the vent. The molly indicates they were already down there. Snappy trying, failing to make a contribution pre plant. Retake on. I don't see a kit. I don't see a kit. A 10 second of use required, otherwise, it's 15. It's curtains for Nuke. And Sun Pius could be that difference maker. Monacy just looked away. He's finding a gap. He's loud about this. They know where you are. Nico gets mad and elsewhere. Oh, what a shot at him, honestly, through the hole in the doors. Diha and St. Pius, they haven't got time for this. And G2 waltz into 15. The vibe so high in that G2 camp. You could not have asked for a better start to the grand final for G2 and their fans. Is running over Ents right now. Like bulldozing. Yeah, this is absolute ownage, and this is great. This is a standard play here from G2. Hot flash, the entry fragger through that smoke, and down the vent they go. So giving Ents a taste of their own medicine there, and 
You don't see that from JKS too often. Round Seems 20 could be the final round here. They're going again. Yeah, why not? Nothing to lose, everything to gain, a map to take, and it's Hoopsie to open up first. Whoa, 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 whoa. He can do it all on the rifle this time. First man in, takes two down, and now Deer and Snappy have got, what, 90 seconds to think about how on earth this one went so wrong. Mollies are plenty, smokes at the ready, chewing them up, spitting them out, ends are done. What are you supposed to do? Just tuck your tongue, throw yourself into their jaws and accept defeat. This might be one of the fastest maps in a grand final we've seen. It's going to be 16 already. I feel like we only just got started. Still two mollies. It's the benefit of going quick and well, snappy. He's going to draw this out as long as he can. Why not? He doesn't want to let this go, but it's taken from him in just 20 rounds. G2. It ends with a heavy blow to start off this grand final live and direct from the cathedral. Well, if there's one thing I know for certain in this moment, it is that Ince was a non-starter here on New. This was a, a show-and-tell match from the G2 side, and I'm telling you what they were showing was that they were owning that event. And welcome back. Of course, of course, this is a grand final. Of course, we've got five maps to play, but that one went so damn fast. What happened? Uh, yeah. I'm a little bit disappointed. I'm a little bit angry, to yeah. be fair. I think yeah. everybody was excited for a grand final. Turns out we only have one team that's on a server right now. And I think this encompasses this, this concept we were trying to push before the game was that, sure, the plan for Ants is great. The Counter-Strike is great. They have a good understanding, good protocols. But G2 can just knock you out. And this is exactly what happened. The game lasted for about three to four rounds. And once G2 took over, Dunzo. Yeah, Dunzo. Yanko, uh, the dominance there. Kind of describe that to me in your own words. Listen, if you're ends and you're like doing the pros and cons of our map, we told. So the cons of Nuke is like, well, they were on this like 20 map Nuke streak and Nico is yard and JKS is on ramp, right? But the pros are, well, we're also really good on Nuke and on T side you have a lot of options and all this stuff. I think you saw when it goes the ultimate wrong way yes. for ends in this one. Is G2 came out swinging, multi kills from everyone from the beginning. 
planning, all kinds of stuff. But you could see this pace early on for both teams, right? Reset round here, super important. And Ens is priming up for an A hit. And we've already said, if you can slow down Ens, you've already half the battle for you. And this is what G2 were able to add a few moments. Ens were put in great positions. Yanko, that's a good example. There is a timing for Snappy. This should be Ens all the way, and G2 turns it around. Look how quickly all of, it, all of this is going to go down. Trade, trade, trade. They have the site. Okay, they're in a good situation. No, Monis is having, he peaks. Peaks again, gets two kills. And in a, that took 10 seconds. Yes. This whole sequence from 5v5 to everyone. We go into the next round. Reset round. Here's Nerd jumping out quickly again. Dika, no one's watching yard because Nico's inside. Again, in a matter of 10 seconds, the round is over. Like, G2 is going to poke around here, but they're not going to find anything. That's the pace. It is the pace. Right. Who is going to have to be forced to slow down first? And you have to respect what Enz just did here. They lost a pain for round. And right behind it, they used their spawn. They used their timing. They used the movement speed of the MAC-10 to puncture it through the defense. And this is where I thought that this grand final was going to start. But you have to admit, the reaction from G2 after that is beautiful. It's like two heavyweights. It's like I'm seeing Rocky. He's getting pummeled. You think he's going to go down. But no, he's still on his feet. Next round, G2 goes back into the force because there was only one guy alive. Nico with the Deagle. Reaction into lobby. Pushkin hooks. He goes back. Burns 100 HP. But it was just too much G2 yes. managed to overwhelm and in this round. And then the unfortunate situation is this might just be 5-2, to two, Trace, but this was the end of the game. Yeah, we just witnessed the yeah. end of the game. This is where it all happened because Enz had the slowdown and then G2 did a beautiful job at seeing, predicting what the timing were going to be, the good usage of the utility, the good rotation as well, individually popping off. Snappy just never had a solution. I mean, it was obvious the situational awareness on the G2 side is there. You're talking about trades happening quick, 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 right? And then you have Nico running around top, topping on top of that. Uh, you can't and ask for much more. And it's not just Nico. This yeah, is the whole G2 machine. JKS we're we're talking about is. JKS just completely shutting yep. down ramp with multi-kills on multi-kills. We're talking about the timings of Monesi. Nico, of course, doing yard things the way he's supposed to. And Hunter having timings in the back. What else do you need? If you're G2, you have it all. You have the whole bouquet. And this is what you hate to see if you're Ants, right? I mean, all the individuals popping up. Nico with TR control. We saw this time and time again. Like, this is, I'm taking the fight for to you. I'm playing to win, right? I'm going to get that information at the very least. And he was absolutely vital to uh, G2 having a good run here. But this guy, Woo! we need to talk about this guy. Because we talked about Hunter, but the player who actually has the biggest step up when it comes to playoffs compared to groups for G2 is JKS. Yeah, and he shows it again. And you have to realize how hard it is for Snappy to not have that tactical solution to be able to hit ramp a couple times. Because this is when you're supposed to be able to do it as a leader. You call a couple of fast, easy rounds just to relax your brain just a little bit, but JKS just stops you. And JKS, I don't think, uh, obviously, he's not like sort of a, a star player. There's not too much focus on him. But in this role, as a CT side anchor and a T side closer sometimes and a lurker, I think he excels in that role. And that's probably the most annoying part when you play G2, right? Because you maybe deal with Nico and Monesi doesn't have an op or you kill him and Hunter is out of the play. Like you just need to get into the get rid of this one guy, trade with him, and JKS gets two, survives, gets three, gets one by his time. Like it's very, very annoying to play. And you know who really suffered from that situation? Someone that went down the absolute L hole? Sun Pius. He suffered from that whole situation. Beginning of the game, we're talking about boxing fight, very pacey, in your face. You basically have to hope that any flash is good or you're gonna have an easy kill because you're being thrown into the battle and then when Enz had to slow down he couldn't find it he couldn't hack it he couldn't crack it some of the opening kills that he was finding against Vitality non-starter he had one leg shot onto Nico outside that could have been an opening kill for the rest he was the victim of the bullet coming his way we, we talk about dictating pace early on in games and getting control getting the momentum on your side and I think this is evidence uh, enough you know you actually just silenced Enz on this map completely you said uh, two rounds three rounds four rounds in that's all she wrote uh, which actually I don't even know much, much more we could delect out of that, right? Like, I don't know. I don't think that there's much more we could take from Nuke, yeah. but we can't hear from him. Let's do that instead. Yeah, uh, I'm right here with Enz behind me. Of course, that was a huge hit, losing that map and in that fashion. So I caught up with Saw the coach uh, and, um, you know, props to him for being so talkative as we were walking and talking. And he said, well, uh, you know, I asked what went wrong or what didn't go right. And most importantly, what are you going to have to fix going into Mirage? He said, everything. Nothing worked out. They completely overran us. We weren't hitting the shots. The plans didn't work out. It was really, I've not seen him this shocked in this tournament so far. I also got to talk to their performance coach and she says, it's only one clear focus. It's keep dreaming. It's never give up. And that's what we're going to do. And Saw also said, we are going to get back on our feet right here on Mirage. You can count on it.
Yeah, and that, the truth is you have to. You don't want to go down 0-2 in as quick of a fashion as you lost the first Listen, This is where we need to see what Ants is made of, because G2 was here before. They were in th these grand finals, in on big stages. They performed, they won, and they've lost. Ants doesn't have that sort of experience. Yes, the attitude is great, they're positive, but how are you going to respond to this. Mm, no, yeah, I absolutely agree with you. And for my money, I don't care about the map. I don't give a damn about the map that we're playing now. This is completely unconsequential to what's happening. It's about ends resetting. Sure, you got, you got your ass handed to you on the first map. That's a fact. But it's the best of five. It can be a long journey. Take it on the chin. You know what you did wrong. You refresh a little bit. You go into a new attitude. You talk about ends, and we're looking what they're made of. The phase game on Ada, on Dallas, sorry. The phase game in Dallas. This is what you have to tap into if you ends. Have to. Think about these moments. It went so hard down the line, you put everything, and then you finally came through the light in that tunnel. Think about that moment. Tap into this. You need it right now. You, you've really got to cut through the mold. You've got to break through that echelon that, that did survive such a long game. That was an endurance race. And obviously, out playing Kerrigan, that's not something that you probably forecasted to do that day. And we also are talking about the map pool at the start. So that's not the problem. You know, yep. They still have plenty of maps that they're at least, at the very least, even against G2. But the problem is just individually. I think something needs to be understood here. If both teams play their A game, G2 wins. I know. Right? Like that, let's the maps won't matter there. They're just have more heavy hitters. They have better players that can have more impact, right? So the key here is Ants has to play their A game mm -hmm. and sort of make it hard or impossible for G2 to do the same. That's how they can beat them. If they don't play their A game and G2 keeps playing like this, it's over. And they have to slow G2 down because G2 won't. Yeah, not it. I mean, why would you, right? It just worked. We just heard what FES said that, you know, hey, they got ran over and it'd be like that sometimes. Maybe they should, uh, maybe they should check the buzz. Maybe they should understand uh, exactly what's going on over there. Speaking of buzz, our one expect clutch winner is buzz. So check this out. left standing against Heroic. And that's what Heroic have been waiting for. They were hoping that Yabby oh! could bail them out. Oh! Buzz! Pristine! Oh! I've got the lovely Sarah with me here, Nico's girlfriend. And she's always at the events, you're always supporting. But I just want to ask you first, how has it been being at Cologne so far for you? How have you enjoyed this atmosphere? Uh, I enjoy it. It's a bit, um, it's exciting, but a bit nervous also. You, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's a bit nervous. I mean, you don't know what to expect any days, so you just hope for the best. <laughs> Is it hard for you to watch him on the stage? You go through the emotions? Yes, it's very hard. I mean, sometimes it's it's okay, but sometimes when you see them lose, it's very hard for you. Well, let's hope he gets a win today, yeah? Yeah, I hope so. I believe in them. She always believes. Let's see what happens. <laughs> The in-game leader, architect of every move and every win. The entry fragger, fearlessly leading from the front. The opera, the deadliest of them all. The support, the true difference between winning and losing. The lurker, everywhere and nowhere, patiently waiting to strike. It takes five champions to win. Which one are you? It's time. The ESEA League is now on Face It to give you the best league experience. See how far you can go on your path to ESL Pro League. Join the world's most competitive league now on Face It. Win your share of $214,000 in Season 46. Don't miss out. Register by August 10th. Sign up today at faceit.com forward slash ESEA League. No, I no excuses, it's okay. <laughs> no, on the left, I'm lagging. One guy was in the middle. Let's, let's fuck them, let's fuck them. Still spawn, still spawn yeah. I think he's hiding. <laughs> ah, yeah, look, look, he's positioning the SMD. I miss oh, Valera, Valera. Valera. No, you're just slow. I'm not slow, I just miss. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> he 
change your sensor. One push on the left, one push on the right. No! Nice! 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 <laughs> there, yeah. Oh, nice. Mm. One middle. No, he's the middle. middle. <laughs> uh -huh. No, I saw two. Oh, fucking <laughs> trickster. One red, one left. What the fuck? No. I'm getting <laughs> fucked. <laughs> Nice, I joined, I joined the server. No, red set! <gasps> you saw him on! Red! Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go! <laughs> Fuck! Oh, that's pretty fast. Need to win. Let's go. Use the dead eagle now. Leg shot it! No! Leg shot in it. the middle, in the middle. <laughs> Get ready for the DHL drop at IEM Cologne. Grab yourself a DHL drop sign and customize it with your message. And make sure we spot you in the crowd. If you're lucky, one of our special deliveries is coming your way. And for all of you watching at home, type exclamation mark DHL drop in chat now. Absolute legends of the game. We got Get Right and of course, Effiebot. Effiebot is in the house here. Hi everyone, hi Cologne, by the way. It's finally I'm back in this house again. Sorry for my voice, by the way, it's a little bit cracking up, but it's all good. It's a little emotion. Standing next to you, it's gonna always be You know, I, I tend to be intimidating like that. I know, I have an effect on people, but uh, <laughs> you know who else has an effect on people is, is DHL. Yeah. And it's time for the DHL drop, so we've pre-selected some signs. And we've got uh, a third sign that we need to find. Now, uh, I think it's pretty obvious why why I chose Save NACS. Tell me, why are you an NA fan? Uh, so when I started watching CS, um, they did POV videos of all the teams, and all the teams were usually from one country, and the NA ones were the only ones I could understand because they spoke English. That's a beautiful reason. <laughs> now, uh, talk to me. Talk to me here, Get Right. Why, why minus 25 ELO? I mean... <sighs> Everyone knows the yellow hell that everyone is having when they grind is CS, so it, it makes sense to pick out someone that's going to have 25 minus yellow after this little you know, DHL drop. And now we need one more sign, so what are we going to do here? What's, what's the sign? What are we going to take for the last one here? Ooh. I don't know. Oh, oh look, someone's is having a round boost over there. Okay, mm -hmm. oh! <laughs> I mean, round They're living pretty, the part. It's clever, got, you know? CS will never die. Pandering, a little good one. Uh, ooh, came here for Apex, came here for Face, came here for Straw, stayed for the beer. That's a, a good, good one. That's a really good one. I really like that one. Think? I mean, especially after the snake yesterday. Yeah, I mean, were, were you part of the beer snake? Were you part of the cup snake? <laughs> all right, he's all good. Let's pick a sign. Get right, who's it going to be? Which one are you going to take? Uh, I mean... <laughs> let's see here. Uh, Please sign here to get some chocolate. You need some chocolate? Yeah, let's do Chocolate that. in your life, come on through. <laughs> come on through. Now it's time. We've got three packages. You're going to need to open them all at the same time. Oh, whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, oh. Come, come, come on. Come on. Come on. Come back here. Aww. That's good, right, that's good, this. that's really good. Open it just yet. And we're gonna do this, and this. And hold on. And in only one of these boxes, am I right, is the golden ticket. Oh, wait, oh, we're swapping. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're swapping. <laughs> Two boxes, give me those back. Pick these <laughs> up. One packages. And that's why I don't work for DHL. <laughs> Come on, man. We gotta do a little bit better, you know? We gotta do it. We gotta do it. You know, uh, well, now it's time. On the count of three, you're gonna open your packages. We're gonna see you as the golden ticket. Ready? Three, two, one. one. Open, open them! Who's got it? Who's got the golden ticket? Who's got it? Oh! oh. <laughs> Welcome on board the team, buddy. 
you're finally going to be having a chance to go to Malta together with me against yeah. Fallen and his other comrades as well. So it's going to be a beautiful time and hopefully you accept this invitation. Well, that was the DHL drop. Congratulations, a chance to play with an absolute legend. And now it's time to hand it back over to two legends as well, Sponge and Machine. Thank you very much. We are back in business. We're shortly going to be bringing you our second map of this best of five grand final. And we are still in recovery from that first map. And I, I would assume ENTS R2. Chad, you've had that headset on, mouse and keyboard. You've attended your fair share of events. You can attest that getting yourself out of that mindset mid-map, mid-series rather, after a map like that, it can't be easy. I mean, you're, they're human after all. Yeah, you blink and you miss it. That first game, it would have just slid by, right? You're really not even in control of that matchup right now. But this is where they focus. They're saying before Snappy not being result-orientated. This is where they need to turn up here, be able to reset and start again. Sure, you're down one map, but you need to show some fight. The bigger issue is Enter's individuals not showing up, and G2 are here in full force. But Mirage, the next on the list, and Enter, absolute grafters on this map throughout Cologne. 30 round minimum per map, and they've got to win every single time. Surely, if you're Enter fans, you're going to be crossing your fingers and toes to see them start strong on this one. A pistol, perhaps. A 3-0 conversion. Get the juices flowing, get the individuals fragging. Nerds, Madden, Deha, Sun Pius and Snappy up against this super team that seems to be hitting their stride on the greatest of stages. They rise to the occasion. These individuals find a new extra level in the grand finals. And so let's get it on. Map 2, Mirage ends on the CT side. G2 to bring the attack. Nico equipped with that P250. He'll be looking frisky with the headshots. Monacy is aggressive. Look at the pace on this one. The young gun. Oh, oh still gets a headshot. But look at Deha unloading his magazine into two. And Snappy built upon it mid clear. And round one ends. Get off to that strong start we discussed. That's exactly what they need here to kick off this campaign. No plan. All the kills coming their way. Some nice shots, some tidy work. And that's even after giving up the opening kill there. So Fast and Furious from G2, but sat down and hoping to run with that momentum. Deha says no. This pole, extremely cool, extremely calm. And he can deliver for the team here. Zentl pick up this pistol and G2 look to buy back in with a force fight. Smokes flashes and upgrades at the ready here as Hunter. With the top cat smoke to obscure the vision, making this look mid heavy, but some pious on a push and make the most oh! of the moment. Modesty with the pistol again. Some pious, he's immediately been put in the dirt. He's opening deaths, he might have as many of these today as he did with openings yesterday. Well, Snappy, he could be the closer with Deha's help. Lovely work at range. Controls the spray, Nico's gone, and this second round force from G2 is open! Oh! Monacy with a ridiculous pair of frags! And now he's got the bomb down, ends this would break their hearts. And the celebrations of that first round would be cut short by one man and a pistol. Madden saves them, but already that is a warning. That is a warning to anyone that stands in Monacy's way. Well, this is his home map. And they were some absolute bangers. This kid grew up here. Mirage of his streets. And this was some massive shots. This oh. third one, ridiculous. Oh, sat on his ass. Oh, so damage done, bomb goes down, and Snappy's <laughs> reaction, I think it says it all. Oh, he's feeling it. He wants to put on a show for you all. And that means they get to force by again. Only two players staying alive. Ents can buy back short. Sure. M4s for all five of them. But look at G2's purchase. Yeah. Light on in the U department. But another plant, some casualties, and Galil's are plenty here. Wow, they're going to try and make this work with just three flashbangs. So they're going to kind of look at Monacy and say, could you go and do that again? They put the Kalashnikov in his hands. That one shot headshot. Tending to middle now was Nerds. In fact, not just tending, he's aggressing. He wants to maintain that space. On the jump, Monacy fires off the warning shot through Tetris. Nerds Housekeeping Hootsie. Nerds' forward position gives them something to lean on. Monacy, could he hand some fire to death? No. Bit of redemption on the menu for the Spaniard. Nico, oh! but still adjusts in time. He's left on just three HP. G2 wobbling now. 
That's a grass sick JKS. He's caught Madden going and looking for answers. He knows another's close. He heard the reload. Hunter though. Oh, he's lost himself. And they will lose the round as well with Nico catching nades. Can't do anything about that one. Solid out of end. A dreamy start. And the start they needed. This is exactly what Ents are looking for here. This time the bomb doesn't go down. This time G2 will be humbled and they have to take just a light investment here. Maybe some pistols, sure. But you could see in a round like that when they don't have a lot of U2. Hooksy allows his individuals to work across the map. Hey, Monacy, you've hit some absolute bangers in the first few rounds. Do you just want to walk out onto A with an AK and try and find a duel? Well, given that opportunity, unable to convert. G2 looking to keep things costly. Nades about to hail in towards this Ooh, connector, not window. Nobody home, so no damage done. And they're opening Gambit to look for some damage. Will net them nothing here. For Ents, they'd love to get around to stabilize, keep as many alive as possible. Snappy blocks now and can play a whole lot more aggressive with this MP9 in hand. Honestly, to, sorry, Hooksy to take contact and then the B play may come through. Dia was the early warning system, but it is stringent on a timing. Monacy's wise positioning. And Hootsie's Deagle headshot. He's got one. Nico's got another. It has to be Dia. They've overlooked him completely. This is insane. Trigger discipline. Holding his nerve onto Nico. They're looking for the response. They have to flush him out, but he anticipates the push through the flames. Monacy finally gets him down. Monacy alone in the clutch. And he, okay. On by Monacy in the end. Master for him, Deha. Right, I talked about him being cool, calm, and collected. Under pressure there, has the cognizance to drop the flames at his feet to just buy time. He's not playing for the kills, he's playing for the round. He knows that his teammates are screaming and on their way. All he has to do is be an absolute nuisance, and that's what he was. So Deha, sweat off the brow, salvaged the fourth, but dangerous. G2 did not have an awful lot in that round, and again, they bring it down to just one man standing. Every round there have been threats available for G2 to pick them up. But a timeout taken early. Swanee gets on the mic, conferring with Hooksy into the first quote-unquote gun round of this map. The AWP's out for both Sampaius and Monacy. But this is a much better start from Ents already. The individuals making plays, which have come to know and love from this Ents roster. Well, that's what we say. We say every single one of them is capable. But then look who they're up against. Monacy. Set up on the booze to go and investigate middle. Early towards ramp here. They know they can isolate JKS as this A-side lurk. He's either going to be in Palace or towards the ramp. It's just about locking down his position in these standard default rounds. And that's the way that G2 have operated here. 1-3-1. One, one. There always will be a gap with two potential ports of call. As Madden will slink in and take an offensive position here with that MP9. There's still somewhat touch and go for a few of the purchases here from Ents. As Monacy now will work towards middle alongside of Hunter, being set up for success. A deep connector smoke, a molly in play, and Nerds is going to have to respect this oh. or be forced into the AWP. Perfect. You see exactly what they were looking for with that U2. Cannot be better from G2 to find the opener. But Sampias is in a power position with this weapon. Hoping to find a response, and that's what he was looking for. But that wasn't the person in the feed, it was Monacy, now down to Deha. Clawed back by Hooksy. Up for debate, oh! okay, drive by, Madden finds an upgrade and a frag. Holding on to this one now, Nico and Hooksy partner up to try and recover and find their first on this T side. Some pious. Oh, could be overlooked. Oh, gets away with it, gets the info now, now he knows, but it's Hooksy. Onto some Pius' face with hot lead, two on two. Time's a problem here, 20 seconds. Snappy has short, you can see he's so trapped. Hooksy has the bomb. Oh, in the Hooksy! Head, in the headshot! Hooksy! Incredible performance! And Nico will put the jury on top, but he's leading by example. 
And G2's first round delivered by Hooksy Triple. A massive round that is insane from Hooksy. This is not the individual that we look for to find that type of impact. And they were headshots. They went scrappy spam Ooh. kills at all. So some bangers. Oh, let me see these again. You've got to highlight them when he gets them, right? You're not expecting Hooksy to get an awful lot here, but this is impact right now. A big triple kill. And broken now are uh, ends. So they're down to oh, what is a force buy here. They've actually got some residual cash on the likes of Nerds, Deha, some Pius as well. It's got an unusual complexion. Oh, that was great from Madden in the previous to understand the biggest weakness with some Pius in the site. Oh god, he's going! Nico! He's charging in, St. Pius just shot in the back of the head, no warning! As Madden added to the naughty list. Nico sees these ends players as obstacles on his path to glory. And just like that, a proactive move. I don't even know if they'll get any damage here, Ents. Just swapped out the guns here. Bogdan's Law comes into play and Monacy gets to hunt. He gets to search. He gets to try and farm up even more. And the Max 10 now in the hand, hands of Monacy finds another, but it's just two more. This is just back to a two round game now. You see, G2 haven't missed a beat, right? They were the, looking like the same team from the pistol through these rounds that they were losing and now continued into the gun rounds here. Whereas Ents, they've shown up in the early stages, but Matthew Maniac on the desk talking about the fact that, hey, the game was over after about the first five or six rounds. It was on. But it all fell apart as G2, showing up here today, will be another lighter investment round from Ents here. So expect this just to become a one-round game. Just that little bit of information, and you can see Madden was responsible for it, didn't catch it. Not what you want to be seeing from your player's confusion in a grand final. This one should just be a nice walk in the park to make it just a one-round game. Yeah, very aware of all the possible pushes here. Onto dealing with B-Apps and underpass. Nico top mid, Hooksy with Util at the ready from T-Spawn. JKS watching ramp and Monacy parked in towards the palace position with that AWP. So a wide net just to deal with any aggressors as a group here from the defensive ends. Dihal will be smoked off now. Santa has control of middle alongside of his cousin. Good timing on that from Madden, just throwing a couple of clicks through the smoke on that USP and insignificant damage. Perfect timing on the util to replace the smoke and Molly spreads. And they've got enough territory. Oh, and a headshot to boot. Good dink. Yeah, that chips away at Nico. Pincering in now towards that A site. And yeah, Madden, what are you supposed to do? He's accepted that his best bet is that some pies will bait. And he'll be overlooked. Hunter ever diligent. Look at this. Jumping for the info. Spots him out. And looking to keep it as clean as can be. Okay, headshot found. Blocking him out. Hunter does go down. And gives them over a Galil. For a moment. Snappy's pinned here. Nico around the world. Worst case for him is going down. Galil scooped. Snappy now trying to hightail it out of there. It should be safe. No dramas. I don't think Nico's going to find it here. Bombs go off. Galil saved. One round game. As G2 now find three on the trot. And in these last two, only one casualty. Now, that has been afforded by the lighter purchases available for Encia. Having the finances shattered so early also shows the pressure from G2 out the gates. So a timeout to be called. This will be the first from Ensor. Be back on the mic here. Springing into action was Monacy there, but just some of the details, even against the Eco, still calling for flashes, still working off each other. It's those little details you're looking for when you get into these intense moments. Well, three on the trot from G2, and it summons Saw. Coach of Ents, he gets 30 seconds. Saw telling us that 
in terms of what went wrong, everything went wrong on map one. Maybe it makes it easier to dismiss, or maybe it makes it harder to accept. They must play on. Let's go, round eight, Nerds. A spot of aggression, thinks twice. It's a different look early here. JK has paired up with Nico, right? I was just talking about the default spread on their T side here with the two of them trying to pressure Snappy. Nico talks about this type of play, especially if you're gonna put a star player like Nico. They've actually parked JKS here, but a bit of a mismatch in terms of firepower. You send a star out to deal with an in-game leader who traditionally gets put in one of the crappiest positions, Barrage B site. But Snappy, we all remember a Snappy 30. Oh, and a deeper headshot. Snappy will build upon it. That's two down short. Now he's Snappy can do some more. He can win the round, but it's not quite enough. Nurt is here. Just in time. Just in oh. time. Never mind. Modesty. Just swings around the corner. Eye to the scope in time. They got the kit, but they don't have the interest. And we will see this go 4-4. Yeah, a bit of a winch there from Madden. Even if he made that jump, unlikely to see them go for this here. Ill-advised. Sides given up. Bombs down and covering each other well there. Monacy aware of the leaks out of that marketplace. So 4-4. And hopefully we don't find another map where one round, you know, a patch of round just completely changes the dialogue. It starts competitive. It looks hot. There's the moment. But then G2 happens. And they don't let their foot off that gas. So now we're all tied up here. But Monacy is one that they need to leash. This individual, first stage game, 45 kills on Mirage versus VP at Caddo in 2022. But this kid, as I mentioned, grew up on this very map. You see him pugging. You all watch him at home. What does he do when he's on this very map? And this is where he does his absolute best work. So we'll be unleashed here today. As with these saves, Ents can get another buy. The loss bonus well and truly in their favor here. This time more Biffy towards mid. Hooksy and Nico vying for position. Smoke Cat across, a Molly coming, and there's the extinguish. Yeah, throws one in, ensures some damage is dealt. So many eyes in this direction here, Nico. We'll just have to park the bus. I need some support if he wants to pick. Admirable from D had to be standing so open to support with Snappy. Making no secret that Nico is alone on this one. Hooksy to provide that support from way downtown. See the dialogue's changing here, knowing that they're still postured forward in middle. Maybe some support required. Vent broken. Hunter's going to be able to call that one out. Window smoked. Exchange of util. Window smoke lands. The CTs drop their own defensive connector smoke, wanting to buy time. This is a real opportunity for some pious. The whole squad, the first test will be his rival on the big green. Turn the flash. Now they're bounding through. A hard shot to hit and he doesn't connect. Now Nico will activate. Deeper backwards turned and some pious. Can he hold them off? Converging on his bomb site now. Time ticking, rotation through, but they are not in a hurry. Second guessing it now. Is this really deception? Monacy has caught some pious. That will open the floodgates. And oh, just as he looks away, Nico spots out Snappy. Problems here, though. The bomb's still going B. The bomb is going into the exposed site. They have to finish here. Madden perhaps could disrupt. As he does. Oh, come out. Swinging. JKS quick to adjust. And this is the thing I'm noticing with G2 right now. They're not getting caught off guard by anything. You see that? They just played the mid round. They had so many positions. They were so forward. Diha had no idea that flank was even possible from Nico. And then they just postured. They just stood. They just waited. You're going to rotate. You're going to come to us. They hit the necessary shots. They stay calm with 15 seconds. And they force another timeout. Ents are spiraling once more. Every single one of these deaths. They're searching for info, right? They were hitting. They were coming. They were coming. Calling for the rotation. Some pious. I need help. I need help. Three spot. A bomb there. Then nothing. Just got into your own head about it. G2 demonstrating a wide spectrum of pace they can throw into these rounds. You can see them second guessing. Ence's defense rumbled. And that is five on the trot right now. Oof, it's just, you're taking a look at the opening kills here. Nico with three and O. Oh, Monacy with three and one. Right, so the two of them. And Nico, we're talking about his stats on the T side within this event. You've got Caden on the pre show. He's more than impressed with what Nico's able to deliver here. You've got the attempts, you've got the success.
And right now, G2 finding plenty of that. This is a change, not the default spread. Insta window smoke, turning their attention quickly. Over towards A. Nika with the back 10 again, ready. Boosted nerds up though. Maybe he could. He's in the perfect position. Madden, just the footstool to allow this man to work. It needs to be magical from nerds, and it's only the one. Still, Sun Pius stands up with two of his own on the jewelies. And D oh! Eagle has saved Ents from a sixth on the run from G2. We that's, are tied up. That's going to feel real good. That is going to feel the, the best round they've won so far, right? That's where they've done it, when the chips are down, when they don't have the weapons. They've just won a massive round to Ents. As we're talking about this team starting to go down the gurgler, this is huge. And some pious contributions on the jewelies here. He needs to get activated in this game. He was a force yesterday. He is integral to Ents' success on the stage. And that one's gonna suck, it's gonna sting. But Enter back in the game now, tied up 5-5, finally breaking that spree. Smoke sails through. Uxie will unload his magazine on that con smoke. It looks like Uxie wants to be the one to make that first move. Some pious. Oh, he's been spotted. Gets the info on Monacy. Motor mouth now. Uxie going to be overlooked. Has he really oh, found oh, the gap? Oh. This is insane. The first frag. Neither of them know. Nobody knows. And some pious is going to be furious unless nuts can close out this round. Oh, oh, he's overcooking it, overthinking it. Now he's trying to rock and roll with the AWP. Repositions, Monacy, oh. dead to Nerd is off as well. Redemption arc is in full swing. 30 seconds, Nerd's caught out, oh, Hunter's got him. The bomb's headed A, and Nico's caught Diha in rotation. It's really not easy for Madden. He won't be able to stop that plant. JKS is set up as a top oh. Not anymore, he's not. And Nico still catching rotations. Just plants his feet in jungle and takes two scalps. 12 frags and counting. Madden in the clutch. I managed to isolate the jewel. Just has to leave. Just, just has to leave. to be alive. Five. Does it matter? Nico. Good for it. Undaunted by the time. Oh, and only just. What a tussle there towards the tail end of this one. This is what's so domineering about G2 though. They just put their individuals in positions to deliver. Sure, Nico has to win out this clutch. He gets three kills in the round, but you see they're winning the fights. You know, they're planting their feet. They're winning those duels. That's frustration for St. Pius. He's already having a rough series and that's going to feel a whole lot worse. Hooksy manifests a gap by accident there. Pace change. Nurse is here in this. Yeah, Nurse, what have you got for us? On the ladder. Caught! Oh! Nurse again! In top four, map two, with only the SMG. Slaughters the pace change out of G2, the supportive flash is a brilliant, JKS is doing the dance at Sandwich. Spotted now, they need to clear him. The whole team's here, trying to bail out JKS, the Molly's brilliant, Nerds will have to take this fight. The damage inflicted onto JKS, he's only got seven HP to work with. Finished by the nade, team play out of ends, now Monacy's are gone too. Big out of them all, every individual from ends. Got a firm grasp of their mouse and keyboard now. Oh, nuts. He's here. His Most first definitely. Cologne, right? And this is the thing. Yesterday, he didn't show up. Yesterday, he was disappointed with his performance. His teammates had his back. It's a team game. But here, today, with the bloody MP7 locking them down, he couldn't have had a better weapon for the job. So great impact from the Israeli here. Yeah, and back-to-back -back rounds as well. And we have a game. We have this tussle. We have the back and forth affair now. This time it translates into a victory. Can they build upon it? Nerds can. Nerds can. Monacy, though, silences him. And it's only the one and done. They're out on Dina. eight. Stretching oh, that's the bomb. The bomb is lost. Some Pius has slowed them down. Nico and JKS, they were supposed to be the second prong. It's all gone wrong. Bomb is lost. So worried about Madden here. Right, he's the A defender, we see him jumping tickets, so they're worried. Is he under the balcony? Is he in the side? They're clearing things out. Well, 
He was responding elsewhere as Sampaius now can turn his attention. That bomb's still down. They're not playing it. They don't need to. Oh my goodness, Nico on the warpath. Very quick to adjust. And JKS set up in the clutch, but Sampaius has the orb. Perfect weapon for the fight. Ends take the lead here. And after that run out of G2, it felt like we might be seeing more of Nuke, but on our second map, G2's pick, and yeah, two on the trot now from Ents. They take the lead, seven to six. And they break the finances here. Remember the start of this game, G2 were doing an awful lot with very little, keeping them low on cash. So for Ents to finally break them here in the later stages of this first half is fantastic. And for Sampaias to get away with a couple of kills is also great. His confidence now off those Julie rounds and now with the AWP, this is good stuff from Sampaias. It's not too late in the best of five. Yeah, you just want to kind of prove to yourself that you're playing the game you know you're capable of. And I saw some frustrations from JKS there, right? He's wondering how did some pies get out of that jungle position because the comms would have been jungle. And then he's over towards the stairs, right? He braved that molly. So right here, G2 need to make sure they keep their head screwed on tight. Can't let those little details get away from them because things have been going so well, right? But as soon as you have a classic G2 round, as soon as there's a moment or two, they start to fall apart. We're right here taking a bit of a breather. Some more confidence boosters could be inbound. Nerds gets his Q, and just like that, one! Could have, should have been two. Snappy, whoa, the movement out of Monacy is impressive. It does pull his crosshair away and enables JKS to at least take another rifle down. Force the rebuy out of two. Considering the investment, G2, going to be too upset about that one. Yeah, probably more than they were worth here. Yeah. Snappy did a great job there. Important kills, because Dehart was investigating middle and now Hunter. But more damage would be fantastic. Oh. And Deek is through, the kill is not some pious sharp. Important work there. And around 15. Buys for both teams. I'd have to get the AWP in the hands of Monacy here, so that means some sacrifices will be made. Hooksy just with the AK and head armor after dropping the big green. And even after the dink, you see a steady Sampaia, so good work from him. Hence will be happy with nine. G2 in pursuit of seven. Oh, he tags up Nico. Sampaia is back. Taking pushes like that. Trying to be the can opener we know he's capable of being. But they've dispelled them from this mid control now. Without G2 grasping that. They can loiter in mid, they can stay as an annoyance here. And G2 don't have any territory across the map. Oh, that's ballsy. That's info, nerds. Spots out one towards the underpass. And Snappy yet to call for aid. But he may want to light the beacons shortly because the whole squad are coming his way. And Monacy pulls the trigger successfully. Diha, yeah, he can try as hard as you might. Sprays on through the smoke. Damage inflicted. Bomb is planted. And G2 looking to keep it spotless in this final round. Only Madden and some pious. Make it just some pious. Hunter's mid lurk. Catches Madden. And HC will finish with a tap to the side of the skull. One round game, folks. It's competitive here in our second of the grand finals. Entz looking to shake off that nuke.
We're back, baby. 8-7 on the half. Entz took the pistol. Gave them a nice platform of four to launch them into a winning half. Eight to boast. Swapping sides now. G2 onto the defense. Snappy to call the shots. You told me, Chad, that these Mirage games for Entz, they go the distance. Well, this one looks like it's going no different. Lanxess! Are you ready for this pistol round? Looks like Snappy is too. This is off the cuff, off the rip. There's three here. Honestly, the difference maker. Jacos with the jewel is up close. Again, no silence up. He wants to make it loud. Oh, and indeed, he should be proud of this one. Nico too, and already ends just flying into these aim stars. And they're shining bright on that grand final stage. Man and it, Monacy tries to get greedy, and Nico puts Snappy back in his place. Nico buying utility on the pistol round. Just getting it done. No Kevlar required when you're that sharp. JKS and the Julies gets nothing done. And Monacy continuing to show this flair. Splitting the pistols here. Oh, the second one filthy, just as Nurtz was dropping out of his sights. We know both of these teams love a force spike, so not surprised to see Entz back in with these Tech Nines. A couple it's of Deagles. Of Deagles and, yeah, yeah, it's going to be B heavy here. They want to test Hooksy. He has the help of Hunter. This is going to be quite fast, I think. Incendiary, at least ahead of it. Madden turning up the speed, turning up the pace. Hunter's vision's restored, and Hooksy connects on that MP9. The pace now sucked out of this commitment, and one by one, this procession to their demise. Entz is forced by, I don't think they've done a point of damage yet, four to Hoopsy. Empty handed. And look at the spam, Monacy. You told us this is his playground and it's visible, palpable. It's harassment right now, let's some bias off the hook here, he's just trying to hang out. Kill would be great, it's just something. As he gets scooched and taken down, Hunter. On the offensive with the MP9. A clean one from G2. Five players staying alive. MP9s will be retained. And now they just have to deal with unarmored end opponents here. Maybe a couple of Deagles sprinkled into the mix. But you see both players in somewhat anti-flash positions there. One behind the pillar, one tucked in towards the site, playing off of each other perfectly. And a great hold. If you thought you could test that B bombsite and Hooksy early, they say no. So much pedigree on this G2 roster. Ooh, info. A lot of bodies out mid. Yeah, Snappy unable to contribute too much. And standing for the spray, Monacy, he's not scared. He's got his whole team to support him. Hunter comfortable and hunting appropriately. Nerds, great deagle headshot. Individually online on this Mirage. Hey, he's shown up here today. Much better form out of Nerds. Back of the site towards the bench. Let's see which he was playing deathmatch here. Bearing down on his position, the bomb. Nowhere to be found, and even damage may seem in vain here. This was a bit of a bonus, so Hooksy to fall. I'm sure he's feeling happy about that. Might even be able to drop Monacy and AWP into the next round of play, so... Unless he can get a few more kills, this is really all in vain here from Nerds. i try his luck. Keep his toe in the water, and he's getting tricky with it now. Cautious stuff out of G2. The Rise are on the prize. To be crowned a champion of Cologne. Hunted like, down. Yeah, it looks like they've uh, got the AWP in his hands here. They've dropped those MP9s across. So Hunter facilitating this, but that's with the extra cat. That's why they're letting him hunt with that MP9. So this... Could be the difference maker here for G2 in this half. They win this as far as the bonus is concerned. They're setting pretty to close this one out as well. Snappy's across quite quickly here. Monacy, is he aware that Snappy's already been able to cross to the tap position? As some pious here as well. Monacy, comfortable onto Sun Pius. First blood drawn. Hence needs someone to step up to equalize. 
So they're going to continue to move that AWP around, but silently, Monacy now bolstering B. They might play for info here. Don't want to stay static for too long on this defense, even with the opening kill as JKS. Oh. And a hand oh. spotted. That's a freebie. Stunning. Great shot from Nurse. The aim's still there. It's definitely there. Flying high with 18. Someone has to bait for Hunter here. Nico just spamming that smoke, hoping in a prayer. What? He connects onto Diha. The rest will slip through. And that bait to facilitate Hunter. The overlook position. Hooks he spotted. And trigger discipline present as Hunter activates. Gets them both down. Bomb gone. Round one. It's Hunter with a straight face. He holds his nerve. He's not feeling any pressure. This is just like any other day for Nemanja Kovac. And this here just... Well, with the sound cues, a premonition from Nico there, but this is great, isn't it? Steady Madden trying to respond to this. Even if he gets that kill, likely to die from CT spawn. So overlooking a couple of positions there, and that one's going to sting. Corner not cleared. Having a bit of a conversation, Nerts and Madden there, but back into play, just down to the pistols once more from Entz. This second half has not gotten started for them yet. Not a single plant to boast in the four rounds. They need to change that tune, and soon. Lost bonus is there, sure. But you need that extra money coming through as Nerts is going to try the AK again. It's hitting some shots, but it needs to start being converted into rounds here. Setup is set. G2 are anticipating something towards that second letter of the alphabet. They're going to be too late here, though. They're trying to play disruptive towards B. They're expecting another Hooksy hit, right? If they're in a lighter buy, we try and abuse Hooksy again, but that's not the case. Unless they slink in for a B split, but as they creep up connector with that bomb, decisions to be made for Snappy. They made this investment onto Nerds for a reason. Hooksy, he gave the warning. Monacy pulls the trigger. That rifle does nothing. And counting on Diha as he does dispatch of Nico. Back his turn as JKS reveals himself. He needs more. Multi kill. Adjust for Nana. JKS on that M4. Sends them back to spawn empty handed. Five to nothing so far on this defense. G2. Light work. And third timeout calls here from Ants. This is perfect. The one rifle around the corner into the AWP. For Nurse, it could not have gone worse. And this is exactly what Yanko's talking about on the desk with a player like JKS. Sure, you get past one, but when you're going to a site anchor like Mr. Savage, he's going to get one, he's going to delay you, and if he's not getting one, he's getting all of you. So sure, a lighter investment, but dealt with here and now out of the woods. A four-round gap starts to manifest here for G2 on their map choice. Round 21, map two, grand finals, IEM Cologne 2023. G2 are in the driving seat now. Can anyone disrupt? Can anyone change the dialogue? Snappy, caught out over the smoke. Nico doesn't finish oh, it, but the good. name will. Boom! Snappy now watching from the sidelines. Cycling through these four POVs. Madden catches him on transition out. It's Monacy that maintains that advantage. In the absence of Nico, it's Monacy. Awkward now. The AWP is trapped. He could be isolated. And Madden, he's still hitting shots. Awkward duel. Diha left on 3 HP. Molly, maybe he can chase. Monacy, oh. oh, knocks his boots off. And he just saw the... But did he see the bomb? He did. He did. The round really impossible for Nerds now. A teammate with a fraction of health. Perhaps. Perhaps Monacy is dead, and the round could be back on. Madden continues to lay down the law. Three HP, or rather three frags. Nerds looking for JKS, yes, but he's out of his hidey hole, and he's caught that bomb carrier. And despite all of that hard work, hard graft out of Madden,
G2, it seems like this whole team, all five of them. Oh. Oh, I'm giving it up. A freebie there, and now upgrade into the AWP. A one-on-one. -on -one. The Madden's going to give a crack here. JKS has all the advantages in the world. An or? No way. JKS doesn't think so. Not even a flinch. Not even a drip of sweat on the palms. He holds on for and 13. Again, another round without the bomb going down. We're talking six consecutive now from G2. If you just take a look at the cash in the coffers, this is ridiculous. Multiple players. With 5k plus, you've got Monacy just under 10k, and he already has the ADVP in his hands. He's so comfortable here on Mirage. And you see, off the timeout, Ents take it, and G2, they fight. They jump into underpass, they fight middle, and now, looking furious, Ents changing the pace together. You know they can work like this. A coordinated move. Trying to fuck the trend. Hunter. Get some info around the short corner. I want to see poised and ready. If they dare test him, he's quick. He's already anticipating more. Madden from that elevated position misses his chance, squanders it completely. No damage dealt. Still 500 points of health for G2. And Madden, no way he's ready for that one. Hunter aggresses through the smoke to disrupt further. Attack, like damage through many layers of stone as another spotted. Snappy retrieves that bomb. And Nico with the re-aggress. He wants more, and some pious down. Only two members of Ents left before that 14th of the spotless defense. Ooh, parkour required here. Limited options now. They're going to go into Nico and Hooksy here if they want to give this one a crack. Sure, they both have rifles. But look who you have to get through. Hooksy's also baiting right now. He's so loud about this. Oh, he's taking down Nico. He's got to hit Hooksy. Oh. oh, and he does. With a spectacular headshot. Will Monacy be proactive or wait for his teammate? A fake. A fight. Snappy in the clutch. Ten seconds. Getting that bomb planted. JKS, though. Stalwart in the one-on-one. -on -one. Snappy would be... Pulling Ents into their first T round. And he's done it! An incredible clutch from Snappy! Against all odds! Against all expectations! G2 handed their first loss on this defense. And this is how it started. 30 seconds. And with Diha's contribution, he isolates Hooksy. Monacy tries to disrupt on that first. And then he takes down JKS for good measure. And Justin's meant to be pretty damn good in the clutch there, so a big one for Snappy. He was finding contributions on Nuke. He was trying to lead by example with impact, and this is him opening the door, showing his teammates it's possible. Diha applying more pressure now. We were talking about that mismatch. Well, it's Hooksy on beat against Diha. The pole would love to punish the in-game leader on the other side of the server. And that nade is telling that Hooksy, not aware just how close Diha could have slunk. The smoke, however. That's up any of those dramas. So Ensem packing for now. They're going to go and have to knock on another door here. Game plan. Taking shape. Call has been made. Control utility, Molly out of the apps, and this is their go sign. Hoopsie, good to avoid the flash. On his own here. He really needs one, just to delay them as best he can, out in the open, hard shot to hit. Monacy vulnerable now. Bunny hopping for survival as some pious racks up one. Might be a save here. Hunter dead in the kitchen. And finding this off the back of Snappy's clutch is gonna give Ents something to celebrate. Nice from Monacy and survival. But it does look like G2 are laying down arms. Monacy with his knife out as Nurse takes that AWP away, extending the potential advantage of this round conversion. It's this patch of last three rounds here. Snappy wins the clutch in the previous, but before that, there was just one G2 player staying alive. So the financial ramifications being felt immediately. We were just talking about Monacy having under 10K, but now he's left with almost nothing. 1,900 into the bank balance here. Two rifles saved and a chance for Ents. They pry open this door on Mirage. 
Talk about this map for them so far in Cologne. 16-14, 16-14, 19-15. All of them have been close. All of them have been victories. G2, they played it once. And for them, it was a whole lot of an easier affair. A 16-8 to 8 as Swanee get to cheer. The sole German on the stage here today. And some love as they do call this timeout. The second for G2. So far, you take a look at the scores on the doors. 21 for the likes of Hunter, 21 for Monacy, 22 for Nico. Laying down the law is the star trio. Everything is functioning perfectly on the G2 side so far. But Nerds is here. He's been delivering. Deha, 17 for him now. And the snappy clutch that has changed the tone of this map. That's the belief that you'd be looking for. And Nerds denying that AWP. Maybe, just maybe, they're thinking G2 do not have enough money for another big green. But that's not the case here. Prioritizing Monacy on his signature weapon. Some pious the same. It's a good call from Hooksy here. This is a very heavy A defense. You can see multiple bodies. Set up for the bait and switch. And well, with the bomb still down, being scooped by Madden shortly. And the current posturing events here, they might just walk into the trap. ways this could go down waiting for the call of their commander and now multiple nades sail into the a site nerds held at bay by the flame the molly will make them have to extinguish monacy blind in the molly five hp but he's still alive and he pulls the trigger onto snappy more from d have required great onto jks nerds healthy some pious full hp but hunter Gonna be overlooked, perhaps. They've already taken down the player underneath. And with Monacy finding another, there's no way. Nerds drops off and the back is turned and attacked to the back of the head. G2, you nailed it, Chad, that position. Red, snappy, like a book. Hooksy calling his troops into the perfect spot. That is twice that Hunter has been set up for success on that A site. They bait for him, they have these setups, they have him as the contingency plan. If all goes wrong, Hunter is here. And his impact was not required, but it meant that G2 could be more confident. It meant that they could swing back out for more fights because, hey, if I die, they still don't know about Hunter. Recap it from Monacy's POV. He has five HP in a molly, blinded, gets away, gets one, gets another. Two frags out of him. Fourth timeout here from Entz again. Whoa. This team under pressure. A new experience. The Lanxess is calling, and right now Entz, they need to stand up and be counted. The AKs are out. G2 just two rounds away from picking up the second map of the series. And guess what? We're heading to Anubis next. I am Katowice to start the year. What a story that was. The team has definitely dipped in form since then, but showing up right now. Go big or go home as Monacy's showing some of his smooth moves. And again, a similar setup out of the G2 defense. This chess game. And look at the molly to get info as well. G2, a well-oiled machine, whirring into action on this grand final stage. And Monacy's position, perfect, into Sun Pius. As Madden takes a chance, oh! and Monacy <laughs> blocks him from the air, no scope required. He's so at home here, 25 frags. Keeping Nico on his toes for the top of the scoreboard, and now Monacy has got him for 1B. Head on a swivel, he has support. Molly to force the fight, not going to be ready for that elevated angle. Misses his chance, somehow he's still alive. Snappy eventually gets it done, but with Hooksy's contributions, it's up to the two of them. Nerds and Snappy. Hooksy should be the next victim of Nerds. Good the fight. Flank. They've lost health. The flank for DJ. KS is cooking up trouble. Hunter just Snappy's so low. Hunter trying to delay. Attention drawn with the lurk smoke. I like that. Bomb on Snappy. He wants to survive, and Nerds not ready for this whatsoever. Clean from JKS of G2, one round away from being 2-0 up in this best of five. Look at the dip.
dividends and info play that push comes through doesn't feel like he's needed but again another contingency for g2 they're prepared for everything under the sun here in the Lanxess today. Nuke, domination, their map choice, Mirage. Sure, a little bit closer, but this team in hot form. Everything flowing in their favor, the comms on point. But not only that, Monacy putting on a show for every single one of us. Looking flashy, just like the namesake. Ooh, JKS even getting it done when the Molotov and bullets combined. And Monacy, this is his playground, Mirage where he grew into the player he is today. But this one, incredibly high stakes. Another alternate boost potentially to be erected here. That's gonna be just under the sight line. They need something from Nerds. Slings through undetected. Oh, a lick of the flame. Reconsiders the swing. A dangerous game he's playing. 60 seconds for them to find this final commitment. Get that bomb down, extend that clock. JKS has evacuated. Counting on Nico for that first fight. And he has done well to get it and get away. Albeit low. No, it's from behind. JKS's flank is huge. And G2, two frags away. Ends. Thrown around the server in two maps back to back, and Diha. He's found his individual form. Madden a later arrival. But a two versus four, G2 unlikely to fumble. With Nico dead, they know where he is. Hiding now in the Tetris box. Swing through. JKS dead as well. Hold on. Hold on. Modesty trying to save them. They need to be on that bomb soon. Joe Hooksy. Where's the kit? Where's the kit? Okay, we're off to the third. And all bells are ringing for Ents. Consumed by the cathedral. You're not in Dallas anymore.
It's a story that's being actively written and right in front of us at that. We're talking about a Ents pick of Nuke. Didn't go their way. Mirage didn't pick it. Didn't go their way either. <laughs> and so far, so good for the G2 camp. Of course, I welcome you back to the grand finals of the Intel Extreme Masters in Cologne in 2023. The last one that we're going to have in CSGO, or so I'm told. Now, on top of that, G2's in the building, and they're feeling themselves. It's so far so great. <laughs> yeah, right? like, I think it's safe to say, you know, this time around, a slightly different start to the map with Ants actually being up 4-0 and you're thinking, okay, is this the Ants machine finally starting to gain some steam? What's going to happen? But G2 just showed that they're ready for everything, you yeah. know, like they're not going to get disheartened by not having a strong start. You can see the confidence in their T side. Would you say, Manny, I'll kick this one to you. Would you say that there it seems to be a little bit of timidness when it comes to the Ents camp? Does it, does it seem like something isn't really making sense there? Yeah, and I agree with you because I think Ents have done enough in the first half to give themselves the right to dream. I think they fought a couple of these hard rounds. They won the crazy, tradey rounds, which they were not able to on Nuke. And I thought, we have a game. This is it. This is the yeah. grand final I was hoping to see. But you get a sense of the calmness that G2 had on that TD side and how impeccable their reads were. And you were talking about Ants not fully going into this. I would argue they were stopped into it. Sam Pius, a man who literally opened the map against Vitality on three different occasions, went one for eight in opening duel in that game. Anytime Monesi was in the right place, he was short at times. He was underground. He was always here. Monesi, 11 for one. Nico, nine for zero. This That's is it. So, this is so far in the series. I mean, just look at the discrepancy. I know. Right? He just can't get anything going. Well, on the other side of things, okay, the opposing Oper is doing well, but then on top of that, Nico, throughout this series so far, even on Mirage on the T side, he was doing a lot of work, especially in some of those really close rounds. Yeah, uh, and, you know, keeping it close, or better yet, taking it to them. I'm talking about Hunter. Like, this guy is a force. I mean, listen, he, he's got the whole package right now. He's got Big package, a yeah. huge package with skill and also self-control. How many times do you see him being behind an opponent and just biding his time, realizing, knowing there's a multi-kill right there for the taking, and he's been monstrous in the reads, and he's been seizing all of these opportunities, an absolute pest to play against. I'm, I'm sure Enz hating their own lines right now, knowing Hunter's alive. And listen, I, we talked about this in the green room. He had those great two rounds where he picked to go and hide on A, where they sort of went for the A stack. You know which other player had that great sense for when to do that, who also played Cat? Cold Zera. And <laughs> he was another, you know, big game player. That's this, the moment. This is one of the two rounds, and this is, you know, really important moments. The other one was where their money was almost out, where he's hiding uh, again in shadow with the Fama. So a couple of crucial rounds where Hunter has a great read on where to go. I would also argue it's like a psychological checkmate. If you're snappy, you're executing onto the A side, your first few players have the trade they're supposed to, and then as the clutch is supposed to calm down and you're supposed to get to that post plan situation here comes hunter through the shadows and kills you all and you're just left thinking with your pants down like we didn't know he was here they read us that's it yeah and i think we can even go further down the rabbit hole yanka what have you cooked up yeah i think this is a round that perfectly depicts the calmness that matthew was talking about right and we can see them also tactically being on a really high level being calm being patient early on for mid control nico gets behind the boxes right and he's gonna stick around for a while right like look Look at the poise that he has as well. There's no like, oh, flash me so I compete. He's just sort of waiting, looking through this gap so he can see if anyone decides to push up. Hooksy is sort of figuring out what is it that they want to do in this round. Uh, they were 4-0 down. They're back in the game now. You can see money is again really low on the side of end. So it's taking some time. They're focusing towards the B bomb site, right? Now he's going to get some utility to helping out so they can first get this mid control. You can also see over towards the end, that's Hunter who's going down underpass and now they're going to smoke window, smoke top. There's a flash that you can see from Nico for Hunter to peek, to throw the smoke, to throw. It's all step by step. It's all great. And you can see also how grouped they are towards the B bomb site. Three guys on your screen. We saw Nico pushing Cat. Hunter is on mid. So everything is set up. They have a lot of control. This is something that some players did great against Vitality too, just taking BF so they can focus on A, but now you will see the preparation from G2, right? There's no swinging here, there's no dry peeking, there's a flash, which is going to force him sort of out of position, make the round difficult for him, right? He has to turn, misses a tough shot, now he's being chased, Nico gets into window, into ladder room, gets a kill, but look now, again, still, patience from G2, 38 seconds on the clock, they're not pushing, they're hearing Nico 
Echo and Hunter from here, they're hearing all these rotations. They're hearing these guys coming towards the B bomb site, right? That's where they continue sort of to mind game ends, right? Now they're creeping up. Nico is in window, does the silent uh, drop down, gets the kill on Snappy. Now they're a little bit confused. You can see a JKS even is like, are we going to go B? Are we going to go A? They're just letting like the other players clear the side and get information. Madden as the A player is actually hiding B, but still you can see Monesi <laughs> jumping around just to be safe, right? And that was perfect for yes. G2, right? Like just one step ahead in every little fight, in every little move on the map. And that's where I was like, they got this. You feel so powerless if you're ends. This round have is basically, to. you have been proven wrong. This is it. I would just like to highlight you talking about it, the rhythm that G2 is into it. There is, there is no asserting there for ends. It's 50 seconds down yeah. the clock. All you've heard is a smoke and a flash middle, and no one is trying to get information anywhere. Because I think people are worried. People are scared. They've been beaten to death on the first map, and they're just a little bit timid. And this is why G2's got all the space to take map yeah. control and make good decisions. They're in control of this match at, at this moment in time and at this point in time. And you can be in control too. You want to know how? That's right. Use your Twitch channel points for the DHL MVP. We're going to catch up with the winner at the very end of the finals. And here are our top three in the running so far. Sampaias, Nico, and Moneshi. Well, Sampaias better show up if you're going yeah, to have exactly. a grand final. Yeah, we just did say that It's out just loud. a fact. It is just a fact. You can say all you want about the quality of ends and the protocols and all, but if this man doesn't show up at the grand final, it's going to be easy in three. And Dix had some frustrating rounds, you know, getting shot in the back. People sneaking through his teammates to kill him, right? And Nico and Moneshi, they've been on a tear. That that they have. Hey, check this out. That's right, use your Twitch channel points to vote and we will catch up with that winner at the end of the Grand Finals, which who knows when that might be. It could be the end of the next map. It could be a few hours from now. Really and truly though, I entice you all to get in the Twitch and use your channel points so we can talk to them live on air afterwards. I That'd think, be a pleasure. I think if anything for ends, you may look at the silver lining and like, well, these are G2's maps that they were more, most likely to win in this best of five, right? If you could give two maps to G2, you would probably say Nuke that were very comfortable and confident on and Mirage and, and these other ones are where you would say okay this is where Ants is probably the better team I have a slightly better understanding of the map better protocols better rotations all of that stuff so that's something that can give I know. you hope if you're an Ants I know fan. where you're going Yango I know where you're going but I'm still missing some of the signs that Ants usually show when we have these great games when Snappy gets that crazy clutch on Mirage I was ready for him to call an instant rush after this that's his modus operandi that's his DNA he didn't he played it slow down and this tells me that we haven't yet seen the ends, the ends that we yeah. wanted to see. All fairness to G2, completely shutting them down. We like to paint Nico as grand final choker. He's playing one of his best grand finals I've seen so far. So in control, so measured, beautiful. Monesi, same thing. A player that has inconsistency at time, so safe and reliable. Like, how are you supposed to decipher this mystery if all these players are showing up? Shoot yeah. harder. Just shoot really hard. <laughs> shoot straighter. Like, come on, man. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. Hey, be more, be faster. Yeah, move more quickly, as they say, <laughs> nowhere, because that's not a real word. Nonetheless, we're going to get some words from the players they're backstage right now and i think banks is caught up with them. guys things are looking really good for g2 right now i was just catching up with swanee and he was saying when it comes to this so far he feels like they're feeling very relaxed we can see it they're feeling super confident yes that's why they've got the scores they got so far i touched on the anubis and said okay both teams have not played this just yet when it comes to this season starting the new season how's it going to be now there could be some mind games there could be some change up the style of play you know and um, what teams could have been doing in the past may not be seen so much now but right now swanee says all the pressure is on ends he says he thinks they're crumbling on the stage and they're going to be able to take advantage of that but the mood the faces what we're seeing right now from g2 I'd be scared if I was Ents. Let's see how it goes. Let's see if they get the 3-0. And a brand that has been, you know, historically something about reverse sweep stuff like that. We're not going to dive into that just yet. But what we can start to talk about is Anubis. Why is this a, a very defining point other than the fact G2 could close it out? I think also because Ents has shown some really good thing on Anubis. But as James pointed out, neither team has played it yet this mm. season. Right? I, I think if you're Ents, it's 
slightly terrifying to have to play the map first time now on the stage. Sure, both teams have worked on stuff in practice, maybe you added things, but it's always different compared to an official game. And then you add on top of that that you're in the grand final of Cologne, right? Like a lot of unknowns, I, I, feel, I, I think, on Anubis. Yeah, a whole lot of unknowns. Listen, the boxing fight, the attitude that ends brought it to the first half of Mirage, mm -hmm. stay on that. Stay on top of that. Don't be afraid of the jewels. Get in there, get messy, get trady. But the reads that G2 had in their defense, most likely won't happen. I don't expect Hooksy to be able to read the game as well as he did on Mirage. So there is an opportunity for ends here. You can still make it a game. Yeah, and there's a level of comfort if you're a G2 fan and you're just sitting at home. And you're oh, like, life is great. Looking good, boys. It's looking good. But also is a break 15, so we can't get 15. back into the game itself. Anubis sits in front of us and potentially the last map of I Am Clone 2023. We're going to go to a break. We're coming right back after this. You're watching the Intel Extreme Masters. It's time. The ESEA League is now on Face It to give you the best league experience. See how far you can go on your path to ESL Pro League. Join the world's most competitive league now on Face It. Win your share of $214,000 in Season 46. Don't miss out. Register by August 10th. Sign up today at faceit.com forward slash ESEA League. This would be an ace clutch from Poland. Oh, oh, oh my god! Oh boy! FaZe Clan, the champions of ESL Pro League. Poland's here. Oh my god! Get ready, you're gonna be kidding me! What a match! What a match! I was disappointed to hear of your run-in with the authorities. Just a misunderstanding, Father. I had nothing to confess, then or now. Then why are you here? I've heard concerning rumors, Father, that you're losing faith. It's true, isn't it? Well, you've played the beta, I presume? Of course. Who hasn't? Many have been denied access, my son. May the Lord save their souls. Father, the Lord rewards patience. We're merely being tested. Unlike the closed beta? Not you as well, Father. Answer me this. If the Lord truly loves us, why didn't he attend the last CSGO major? Because the Lord moves in mysterious ways. Like the CS2 movement. And they can't even get that right, can they? Father, please. They will fix it with the patch on the 10th. Patch on the... You know the patch dates. Father, the... I'm quite the expert. I think there's two types of people. Special connection with Val. Finding an Xbox smoke two days after CL underscore show pause is removed from the game. <laughs> Or dev themselves. It was you. Just embrace patience, Trace. You shall be next on the list. Heaven? Father, what happened? It's just hell. So I'm in the middle of the crowd and we always look for interesting people and I found some interesting people. Three chickens! Hello, what's your name? Hello, my name is Pascal. Can you tell me the story behind the chicken hats? Who wants to who wants to do it? So it was most like a funny idea. Most of uh, us play CS. Like, obviously. obviously, yes. And uh, the chicken are just funny also in game. And uh, our friend here had a great idea. So we all got chicken heads. And it's like a perfect idea if you have the opportunity to buy chicken heads and take it with you. Chicken hat stonks right now are going up. Um, I, I know that you've been to Cologne a few times, but who are you supporting? Uh, most like the team who plays the best. And this, like, and at this moment, it's for G2. 
Um, but we'd just like to see some uh, nice Counter-Strike. May I try on one of the hats? Awesome! Chicken out! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Counter-Strike fans watching from around the world and those of you here to witness in the Lanxess. Do you think this is the final map? I don't think so, okay. But G2 certainly do. A dominating first two. Leave Ent off kilter, discombobulated and uncomfortable. What can change? What can change over the course of a 10 minute hiatus? A conversation. And that conversation is about to get a whole lot more interesting. If the reverse sweep was going to start, it has to start here. Ents, the biggest trophy in Dallas. And now the odds are stacked against them. G2 with a roster stacked full of talent are just one map away from the crown. And it's going down on Anubis. Pistols, ends on the T side. G2 take to the defense. Bit of a black box on this one, Chad. Yeah, neither team playing this since out of the break. And geez, those odds, yep, reflecting just how easy it has been for G2 throughout this series so far. Nuke, a walk in the park. Mirage, sure, they had to stretch those legs. But now, awake and ready to go as Monacy once more detaches the silencer from the USP. The kid's got some pizzazz, I'll give him that much. And doesn't it categorically make the weapon worse? <laughs> I <laughs> guess that's a debate you have to have with him in simple. Doing it hard mode. Doing it for the style points. Taking the time with this one, our end. So only won one pistol round so far out of the four played. Would love to add another one to that tally. It's about to be up for debate. Monacy first contact, hunt and swing through, but Monacy doesn't need any help. He's good for it. So many players here and every headshot connects. Monacy two, Nico, he does the same with Hunter's help. And ends just flatline. Absolutely evaporated here. That's G2 going to pick up four out of the five pistols that have played so far, unless Diha has something to say about this. A one on four situation. They've got the bomb. And one bullet will do it to the dome of Diha. Giving it everything he's got. Not going to give it up lightly. Identifies multiple bodies holding that bomb. He's helpless. JKS gets one. The G2 start that countdown. Just Looking each other in the eye saying 15 more. Yeah, right. That's bang on. That is bang on indeed. And they're just kind of going through the paces right now. Things are working so well. First bullet, Chris dead. Even finds the second here. Monacy and Nico finding impact in what feels like all of these pistols. And not allowing the plant once more. So Snappy into the stack. This is where it's going to hurt. You feel out the gates on the T-side that you just waltz on into. Lion share of G2's defense. They're going to force fight. But we haven't seen much success without the plant on these type of purchases here. JKS blocking over towards A. You see that offensive Molly to slow down the A main control. They have enough util to execute in towards his site. And he's currently on an island here. It's very heavily fortified over towards B. JKS is going to have some issues on his hands here. You can see the util being dumped across. They can smoke heaven, Molly bricks. Even connector in play, there's more than enough utility to make this one possible. He's so alone. Next closest is Nico. Nate could be good, getting sticky. G2 
chips away. Tucked in now, they're testing him. JKS, what can you do? He can do a whole lot with the SMG too. But the site now lost and it's a hard one to get back into. Only tech nines though. Diligent on their clears, worried about a lurk. The site lost, the bomb down. Nico's on his own, Hunter needs to come around and fast. Loud about this. Perfect weapon for the job. He'd be dynamic, mobile. Leap around the corner, Nico can clean up his mess. And they bring the fight to them. Overlooked is Nico. Works perfectly for G2, and that's not the weapon for the job. As Nico leaves the round with three. The one key difference here, they get into the side, they get the bomb down. So somewhat threatening two kills is great. A little bit of confidence there. Let's make some noise for Swanee. The only German representation here on the stage, the coach of G2. And Madden, with more of those looks, you can see Desperation Stations as ends with that plan. I cannot believe they're opting for a play like this. Want to keep the pressure on early. They're going to go down in the Ents fashion. If they do lose here today, at least they've stayed true to form of the way that they like to approach these rounds. Sure, maybe not all the individuals are contributing in the same way that we know and love with the big stage. G2 are thriving. Again, three strong towards B. So really wanting to allow Ents to execute in towards this side. They have some very good executes, some good snowball-y plays here in Monacy with the M4. Old nerds at bay for now. Tickled down, chip to 54 as more pressure applied from Snappy and D-Hup. Smoke will keep... fade and the pressure will come. Yeah, they're testing them. Hunter forced out of dark. Snappy occupies it Doesn't now. Fires the shot. Oh, damage. But nothing lethal. Snappy leaves empty-handed for a third round on the trot. A well-timed block as well. You see they drop that B long smoke as the pressure comes through dark and now working on a boost here. Pressure uh -oh. applied. Oh, Monacy. That turns. Just looked away and Madden profits. Perhaps Nico can get more. Madden caught out, completely executed and getting away with the smoke as well to delay. You'll force the defense to rejig it. Nerd says static. Diha. Minor investigations, doesn't it's want to give it up. 35 seconds though, the bomb's on the other side of the map. Is this a fake in towards B and hoping some pies can plant? Well, they're counting on some pies doing the impossible. Walking in, crab walk, works out. Maybe the forces are rotating if Hoopsie does go down, but nothing to report. Nerds now spotted, firing up shots and hitting them as well. JK has just left the site, some pies can get in. They're doing it. And Nerds can leave, they can play a two on two from this A site. The bomb will definitely be planted here. 10 seconds left, 40 about to be thrust on the clock. Ooh. Yeah. So. Coast is clear now. That's information in itself. The bomb goes down. The penny is dropped. Nico and JKS need to rotate back over. Nerds is in the wind. He could be absolutely anywhere right now. There's a kit in this. No util. This would be one hell of a way to find your first round. Ten seconds already gone off this bomb. G2. Need to get a move on. Or some Pius is about to steal one away here. This could be it for Rents. A taste of victory early on a must-win map in the grand final. Zico spots out Sun Pius. He's got to see the defuse. he can't finish him. Nico has the kit. So low. If JKS goes down, he's a dead man. JKS can't be the bodyguard. Nico's got no time, no hope. Enz will take it. And they're going to have to be happy with that one. An avant-garde approach. Two-man commitment into the other bomb site. And G2. Baited. That's going to feel good, right? That's a good decision mid-round, right? They, they take some tussles, they take some fights, and then they outmaneuver G2. That, that's very well done there from Ents. This one here, sure, everybody goes down, but they've stayed stubborn with the approach. We touched on the fact that this is Ents playing their style. Forced by after forced by, they understand the damage being done, and you bang on. If JKS gets that kill round over, no chance for Nerds. It's a fight as well that was isolated one-on-one, -on -one, right? That, that's it. There was plenty of time for the defuse on Nico. So G2 put under pressure here early. A timeout called. And Nurts as well, he allowed some Pius to stay on the site, right? Which was the bravest of all of that. He was just dealing with all the flank potential, understanding that timer of them rotating in. They had to be diligent with the clears. They don't know how much room they had given up. It's a really well done there from Ents, but they need plenty more of that. And that's going to come from the players in the server, right? It's not going to be necessarily the calls of snappy, but decisions they make together. There's a window smoke lined up from Nerds here, going to deny middle. So Insta out of spawn as this 
hodgepodge buy from G2, nets them two M4s. Aggression out mid here, Nico wants to fight. Now he's stampeding up the canal. St. Pius was jiggling the window and Nico will fire off a warning shot. You're not going to repeat that at all. Oh, snappy. That is ballsy and Hunt has been caught out. Very well done. That is huge. He's not stopping. He is not stopping for anyone. Hoopsie, his next victim, Snappy, takes the B-bomb site by force. Nico and JKS don't budge, but Snappy clearing his corners. He's saying, lads, there's not much going on here. JKS spotted out as well, so the aim anchor is still boots planted. Call it off now. Just hold on to what you have here. This investment from G2 all in vain. And great work from Snappy. This is more like it. This is the ends that you know and love. Those type of plays. Dean game leader Watson in. Bit of a money man strategy there on his own. He goes into the stack. He calls them into A. He gets two kills like that. He calls Madden over. They clear it out as a pairing. Nobody's home. And 2-2 two, two the scoreline here. You mentioned that reverse sweep. Well, on the desk, they were talking about the fact that these are the three maps that maybe, just maybe, you start to favor Ents on. Anubis, Ancient, Vertigo. Maybe they just wanted to get rid of the hard ones first. Maybe they wanted to uh, win the grand final in style. The first sweep in the best of five as they're trying to hunt and take these rifles away. This would be a massive boon for Ents going forward if they could even just rip away one of these. Nico needs to be careful and Madden, oh! he removes it. Oh, that's a big one. That's his first death as well. Nico condemned to just the pistol for our next round of play and it's Madden, a fellow Balkan, to find him. Well, what would have been two M4s here is just the one for Monacy. So how do they want to operate with this? They tried aggression towards middle in the previous. This time, not an awful lot of investment behind the saved M4. 5-7 for JKS retained as well here. And once again, over towards the boat. With a lot of the forces, you can see Snappy charging up. Happy to make the sound cues. Want to apply pressure towards Dark time and time again. If they can get control of this key position on the map, it's going to help them. In flux between both sides, but Monacy's M4 spotted. Now you'd run in towards A, for sure. Would they have a boost here? It's a boost, sure, but... Oh, the flashes. Incredibly susceptible to them was Nico. Doesn't have the info. And now that bomb's going down. Trying to erect something else, and... Really, despite Monacy's first frag, they have to set him up for more. Adjusting it now, but no reason to move, no reason. As that bomb ticks further in Ence's favor. They regroup, they're going to try and use their power in numbers. Just looking for damage here, surely. Yeah, Monaco can't win this round now. What's going on? They just want to take some rifles, maybe? On the way out the door. Madden is trying to evacuate. He will go down. Good find. They're punishing them, making it as costly as they can. No round, but. They will leave with some frags. Three members of Ents forced to rebuy. When Hunter there just in the final moments trying to find himself a rifle would have been great. Isn't it? 4.3k here. Couldn't pick anything up as he ran on through. But drops are made available. All good in the hood here. As everybody on G2 is going to have a rifle in their hands. But Ents changing the flow of the game. This is three consecutive. And some of the changes here. Look, getting into the sights and getting those bombs down is going to help them a lot throughout the later stage of this half. The damage they just sustained, sure. But here they have the advantages in the rifle round. Again, another three strong B setup as Madden draw quite some pressure towards mid. Like this. It's what Madden's been known for. You can burrow in deep early. Nico's position noted. Madden reveals himself as well. Pressure applied to middle. They want to fight for this. Hoopsie, he's caused for the flash. They're all doing the dance. It's a double out of Hoopsie. And there's more to be had. Snoop Snappy with one back. And now they can attack from both fronts. How is Hunter still alive? How is Hunter still alive? That should have been the equalizer. And now monesty has been set up for success. If Sun Pius goes down, 6 HP, solid from Madden. And the sight is theirs. We don't know about the rotate. And they slow it down a bit. Sun Pius crawl through. The shadow betrays him. 
And Madden's got to go around the world with 40 seconds to do so. Well, last time round, two of them in the mid round. This, just Madden. Has an open bomb site available to him once more. And we saw Nico and JKS struggle to get back in towards A in the previous. JKS now hightailing it over towards the heavens, sprinting to try and cut him off at the pass. Smoke into the site. Does he want to play ahead of this? Could spam. We'll jump in even more to guarantee it. JKS, solid. Denies the plant as well. The lifeline for G2 there. If I'm Hooksy, I'm flashed out and I'm fighting. I get the double, probably screaming for the trade on the third right there, wondering where the hell is Hunter. He does delay. They do make good on another kill, but that one got very, very dicey considering the opener. Coming out, the flashes are following through. Hooksy gets two. G2 will get their first on the board since the pistol and the conversion here. It's back in both teams with AWPs out to play right now. Mid is off limits. A has really been the side of their affections here. They want to try and pressure this. They know that JKS will be tasked more often than not with having to hold this on his lonesome. It's standard for the anchor, and if you pressure him early, you force out his util, which means later in the round you can return to that site. So here, already dumping a smoke off the rip. JKS feeling the pressure, has called for aid. And it's the key position that Madden will be working on these rounds, this mid control. Oh, he has a yeah. timing. Oh, he's got to get through Nico and Monacy. Labored oh. from both of them there. And JKS knows this first fight is integral to their success. D had the one to test him. Solid connection, but not expecting Nico on the Bricks position. Damage onto Monacy. They are hanging on. Hooksy caught off on B. Hold on. Hunter. If he can find this frag onto Nerds, he has been overlooked. That bomb heads back over towards the A site. Snappy has some territory he can work with. JKS was just spamming that heaven smoke to aid Nico here. So will he go overlooked? I mean, he certainly find the first. Maybe Snappy can make a round out of this. Two versus four against the odds. But look at the health. They're going to be looking to Hunter to close. He's miles away right now. Snappy's forcing the issue. Brings the fight to JKS. And ends. They certainly do impress. What's Monacy supposed to do? That time is ticking. Hunter's just arriving. And Sun Pius with his scope. No time. Ready for you. Thank you very much. As the round is there, as ends turn the tables a 2v4 on that A site. And G2 broken. Yeah, shattered here as the finances are concerned. That's around the G2. They're going to be wishing. They'd played that a whole lot better there. Nico getting isolated. I said that JKS was spamming in the smoke. Make sure there's no creeps coming through, but also trying to bait on that fade. But Snappy, too good. Gets both of those frags. JKS and Nico falling. You see here the fade. Nico falls. Snappy knows in this situation he needs to make a heads-up play. So able to isolate those jewels. It should never go down that way. Great work. And that one's going to find them up here because they know what that means. SMG's out, two of which. One for Snappy, one for Nerds. Going to try and farm up some G2 players now as they are going to push long once more. Oh, wow, that's a good start, but not a great finish. Hunter onto Nerds, but Diha, he's gotten them not only the double, but the bomb site. Snappy confirms it out of dark. Look at the amount of util, they even double smoke it. And so this is going to be a nice guaranteed fifth. So now some of the questions, because this is Eco, even with the flash of Nico, I don't expect it to get an awful lot here. Might just flash two pistol players through, see if they can get an extra kill. That's going to be about it. But in these future rounds, there it is. Snappy gets to farm up on that MAC-10. Madden with the final. It's about how do they address A now? Because some of the setups that you see from teams is by posting your AWP player aggressive in A main with the rifler. Right? You see a lot of these Wombo combo setups on the fountain and the baskets. No one's had any success here. Another blue. Here we go, they get back into the buy. There's no AWP available for those type of setups. But what I'm talking about is being stronger towards that side of the map. And now to pressure the B bomb site. So Snappy, exactly what he was hoping for here. Only two players this time. Oh. The nades dunk down on St. Pius. Very low, but unconfirmed. Oh, and Snappy, okay. this MAC-10 madness is getting out of control. Could be more, could be more. No way! He gets two with the MAC-10. He has opened up the site. And that's the round. Snappy. And this Mac 10, he is up to 10 frags as well in our ninth of play on our third. Impact in round after round here. Not only is Snappy clearing out sight single-handedly, he is winning in situations where they are down men.
The, throughout these maps, you're looking at a player who stood up and knocked the man that's meant to. He's had impactful rounds. Sure, Nuke wasn't close, but he was still trying. Mirage went against him. Snappy still contributing. Still clutching. And that's the difference here. Snappy not wincing at the pressure right now and activating on Anubis. It's not too late in the best of five. They just have to do it in the hardest way possible. G2 are two maps to the good here. Would love to get this done in a 3-0 fashion. They know what it's like to lose in a best of five. Get absolutely stomped upon. I'm sure that's exactly what they were hoping to inflict here on ends on map number three. But right now, the pressure just getting turned up a notch. Second time out for G2 here. Finances, max loss bonus will be in play into the next. And a big conversation to have here. You could drop M4s, but the round will not be perfect whatsoever. This is snappy again, and you have to love this. Matthew, I want to return to what he said. Both of these in-game leaders know how to use speed as a weapon. Oh, that's a good line. And just there you see exactly that. Just pure aggression waltzing into the site, removing two individuals, and just Hunter getting obliterated. Can't do anything in dark. So G2 looking to hedge their bets here, not with a full investment, just with a couple of upgrades on players who did not save. The two rifles to work with, a couple of pistols for good measure, even a little bit of crowd control utility in the form of smokes and molotovs and there's one of them deploy, deployed out the early gates we often discuss the difficulties and the responsibilities of holding middle just take a look here i'm talking about the fact that they have conditioned a early on your radar top left of your screen you see a smoke and this is the one jks held at bay by this does not know what's on the other side so pressure applied but g2 are taking a gamble regardless so they call the bluff so do Wentz. This could be gangster. It's a redeploy and it has actually allowed for G2 to start floating back over. There's a timer on this. We have a minute left on the clock. Ents can change their mind and they have done. In a lot of these maneuvers in towards the site, they've taken fights and they've rotated away. Sicky nade. JKS always under a lot of scrutiny now. That phase coming and JKS! Unable to provide anything for the boys on the Vama. Oh. Deha builds upon it. Dink down, but still delivers. Hooksy, nice finish. Stunning stuff on the CZ. Nico deleted. Oh. Hooksy doing everything for G2, but surely it's all in vain. Oh, oh my oh. goodness, Hooksy! Stubborn, refuses to quit, refuses to go quietly, but it can't be more. Snappy will save them from red faces, but Hooksy, a nice demonstration. He'd have run out of bullets before he took all five. I don't know who told him to equip that CZ, but I've seen it on him in the last couple of days here. Showing up with it in buckets and spades. This is massive shots here, but JKS trying as he might to disrupt things towards a main. Steady stuff. Ends here. Little bit wobbly, but extend the lead. Seven rounds to the good here. Three for G2. Let's move back into the guns. The adage goes, you want to be the best, you have to beat the best. G2. Standing. One map away! Oh! <laughs> As Sun Pius makes it clear they are not done. This third map is not a formality. Yeah, slight chip damage into the Achilles of Hootsy. But winning that head-to-head, -head, a good sign of life out of Sun Pius. We know what he's capable of. We learned that yesterday. And Hooksy going for a ballsy push, overlooks it, checks it, needs more. Sun Pius has help, and Madden provides from the top rope. The Cousins, responsible for the site. Limited resources, but equipped. Well, Lens really win out the half hit in our 11th round. They have that man advantage, but Hunter. And Nico still stand. Flashes are good. Time, sensitive mission now as they overlook Hunter. He knows there's more. Madden is next victim, that's solid. 
Gives Nico something he can work with. JKS has rotated through, and the orb misses his mark as JKS builds the round as well. Snappy's been great. He heard that. Punching in the code. Nico still holding walk. Will he get away? He's looked away, and just like that, G2. A 3v4. Hunter, a lovely control at the back of the site. And after a four-round absence, G2 are back on the board. Looking good, gentlemen. Dressed up for the occasion. Hooksy with another info play. They've been sending him out. Been able to contribute in more than one occasion here, but this is a great double from Hunter here and the miss from St. Pius. One that he'll regret. And, and you're curious with that, right? You said, I'm sure he heard him. Well, you've got the stage, you've got a bit of extra noise. His mouth was moving as he was planting the bomb, so probably asking the question. And because it wasn't the water sound, Nico intentionally dropped on the pavement, right? You can't confirm one way or another. It could be a fake jump. It could be a fake drop to stall out the plant. So there's these mind games as now attempting to bludgeon this B site. Here they come. Pace as a weapon. Snappy makes the call. Already head on a swivel. But look at the support. Hooksy again with the multi-kill. Just like that, the round falls apart for Ren Sun Pius. Maybe he can find something over that, but with the flash in, vision gone, and a headshot through the smoke. Monacy has secured it for G2. Madden's locked in here. Nico already playing heads up Counter Strike. He's been able to lock the door on his retreat. A redeploy of the smoke will block him for now. The bomb is down in enemy territory. And as you discussed, yeah, Nico, he's not taking any chances here. Surprisingly, because he's actually giving Madden a get out of jail free card here. There is a gap available towards T Spawn if Madden would like to try his options. And with the AWP, Sapias could be wanting that. He does have cash available into the next with the loss bonus coming through, but still, the costliest gun would be a great little save. And with 45 seconds remaining and Madden getting further and further away from that bomb, you can see which way this round is going. So G2. Drawn things back to just a two-round game and going to have a breather here as Nico has investigated, has found nobody home. Do they start hunting? I guess that's the biggest question, but you're bringing up Hooksy's name here. And he's definitely an in-game leader that, uh, well, the people at home to... Oh, hold up. They are having a look here. Madden, the worst case would be going down after time here. Well, he's kind of made his decision now. And yeah, I think at least he's spotted now. Nico, he's got you. No more. Four ends, they'll have to buy another. <laughs> so good to see you having fun. Thank you, the pedal to the metal here at Ents. Again, being able to bounce back with another buy. The St. Pius Orp is out. He's connecting some of these shots here. Sappy just down to a Tech 9. AKs are plenty on the G2 side of the server. Quick extinguish, Madden wants to turn up the pace. Supported again, Nico goes looking. Oh, and he finds them both. A masterful spray transfer. Which leaves Snappy. Having to rejig the setup, Nico may have heard that. Nade implies he did, look at that. Flash to the face. Already ends in a tailspin for round 13. When Nico's in this form, the same form we saw in Kato. Or head to head here. Monacy gets his cue, misses his mark. Sun Pius gives them something to celebrate, but a whole lot more required. Hooksy and Hunter this time. And Hunter's gone. Maybe Hooksy can continue to deliver. Oh. G2, no way. Snappy doesn't think so. Nails it on the way in. And some Pius is going to get himself another as well. Yeah, costly miss there from Monacy. They're human after all. Yeah, you don't think just missing one shot is going to mean a bomb site is completely theirs, but bangers of shots hit by everybody on Ents there in a huge number disadvantage. You're just talking about Nico's spray transfer in middle. That's all for naught. And this is the head-to-head -head that we just had, so Monacy gets the call across, thinks he should have hit that one. You see those frustrations coming through. JKS looking to save here and still able to mount a very deadly half. Ah, uh, and eight will be theirs. The half one out. Frustrations are bubbling. Yeah, and you can understand why. They are just one map 
away from lifting the IEM Cologne Trophy here in 2023. Joining a very, very short list of prestigious names to do the double. IEM Katowice, IEM Cologne in the same year. G2 have their eyes set on that prize at the very end of the stage. That long walk feels so close, but ends. I'm sure they want to take us the distance. I want to I'm sure they want to keep their name in that conversation. And you hear it from players in interviews, that stoic mindset, one round at a time. Can Ents put themselves there? Is that all towards a main? Ooh, Ooh. Counter nade onto JKS, and maybe there's pace on this, but Monacy, oh, another miss. Still adjusts, still draws first blood. Lot of scrutiny coming his way. But with the dump of the util, it seems he's one out. Actually forced a huge rotation here. Hooksy cheated over to help middle. That just puts pressure on Hunter right now over towards B. And then to had no issues waltzing in here late, whether it's Mac 10 in Snappy jumping around or late with the AWP. There's a redeploy, a smoke available here, but again, some pious. A chance. And a second shot fired off. With Snappy out dark. Hooksy was not ready for that. And now Hunter, he can't do it all. He can't do it all, but two. Perhaps makes it manageable. A disadvantage, but with a bomb down, the post plant can be set up. Snappy, 16 frags. He's already found two in the round. For nine. Can G2 retake the site? D here and Snappy. Focused. Entering the flow state. That bomb ticking in their favor. If he could just find that first headshot, D here. Takes him a big leap in that direction. Looks good, looks great! Diha 2 and G2 helpless as 9 is in the bag! Another recovered round! I can't believe what I'm seeing here with the type of rounds that G2 are losing once Ents get a foot in the door in these sites, in these post-plant situations. Play it down, the individuals are stepping up. They get in, they get the bomb down, and they fortify these sites with multi-kills. This is JKS getting chunked in the early stages, sure. But they waltz in, Hooksy not ready as you mentioned. Hunter gets two. But all for what? Diha does not have to move. JKS oh. in first. Monacy had the AWP. Util still being thrown, so position's given up and frustration now on the faces of G2. Final round here at that first half, and this buy, it's miserable. Taking a chance here, Nico, and the frustrations continue. The Montenegrin hits the head. JKS only an MP9 to defend his site. He's a dead man. Good timing on that smoke. Good timing on that smoke. Oh, oh, he's taking a dangerous game he's playing right now. He needs to be close to be efficient. Yeah, Madden, look at this. What is this? What oh, oh Hooksy hunts him down. He saved him. JKS still has a chance to defend his site, but they're coming for him. All guns are blazing. Footsteps stampeding, good nade back. Hooksy's doing so much for G2 on this one, just to try and hold on. Hold on. Snappy doesn't want it to happen as he's walking in. Caught another multi-kill again for Snappy. Individually brilliant throughout this series, and now his teammates are starting to join him. Some bias, there it is, onto Hunter. To leave this half with 10. And you can feel the tide starting to turn in the Langsess Arena. As Entz leave this half with their heads held high for the first time this grand final. 10 rounds, a reverse sweep in front of them and one round at a time. Father, I have a problem. An addiction. I can't stop myself. The Cathedral of Counter-Strike, and it's full of sinners. But speak openly. Then I shall. 
I know nothing about Counter-Strike. Fear not. Your colleagues doesn't know much either. But, but what if I call an ace a pentakill? Or even worse, a deagle a sheriff? All will be forgotten. But just remember, that mic is always on. That one time, father. Wild players. I never thought they'd do me like that. Tread carefully, James. If that happened to you at last, only God knows what can happen to you here. Believe me. Believe me. Addiction is not easy to overcome. I've been trying not to tweet about my weight loss journey for quite some time. But isn't three hours too long? The devil's pool is strong. Yes, father. He sits heavily on my shoulder, whispering in my ear. Mm. Give them what they want. Give them another hot take. Gluttony, the worst of all my sins. I've taken the ESL bag. I've taken the HLTV org bag, the valve bag. I've even taken the blast bag. Am I a sellout, Father? Should, should I give up the bag? Fool. I'm sorry, Father. I really am. Never give up the bag. Father? <laughs> Here. Please. Thank you, Father. Psalm, if you ever need me, you can always reach out to me at sponsorships at fallinggear.com. <laughs>
Gonna be slipping through the fingers here. A great oh. shot from Madden on the back pedal. Nico ripped apart here. St. Pius is double. Beautiful. As JKS coming out of the gray screen, just not good enough. He heard the shots. You know, it makes sense. Try and punish. But head swivels around from Sun Pius. He's happy with that one. G2 quite the opposite. Yeah, as they take their third time out here. But the conversation to have is do we want to force by? Do we want to save into the next? And the problem is if they don't get anything done in this round. If they don't get the bomb down, we had a similar conversation with Entz in previous maps with these type of force buys. You leave yourself wanting. You leave yourself in a massive pit. You have to make this competitive. You have to get the bomb down. If you're going to go for a force buy with Tech Nines, Deagles, and Galils, you need to return on that investment. Let's see if they can earn themselves a bomb plant. We're around win. On the high end. Bang, already chipped away at, and the most damage onto that rifle. Hunter undeterred. Snappy definitely got the better of him in that dark showdown. A deep smoke. And they're walking through. Is Snappy ready for this? Warning shots. Ready for the, for the first. Hunter good on the trade. Nurts blind as a bat. Needs help. Calling for aid. And pushing in, good for it on the Tech 9. JKS has done a lot, and only the one from Madden. Awkward now, that bomb plant secure. And Modesty's hitting Deagle, headshots. It comes down to Dia in the clutch, and the bomb does not go down. After all of that, maybe Nico, with a single click of his Deag, he could resurrect hope for Anubis. You've got 50 seconds to think this one through, and he's immediately faked it out to rot that clock further. Deha, stubborn, open, exposed. Deha brings him low. And get the bomb down now. Information flows. Nico. Oh, he knows. Damage. Oh, it's so up for debate. No one knows. Nico! Come on, close! 8 HP in it. Deha, what a clutch! After all of those shortcomings from the rest of his squad, he still leaves with the round. Well, they needed to get that plan. They needed to make it cost, and they almost ripped this one out of the hands of Entz here. But look at this from Monacy, right? He knows where Dihai is, and he's just playing for the kills. You can see what we were talking about on Nuke, where all they wanted to do is fight, is coming back to cost them in some of these situations. In that first half of play, G2, they had number advantages in so many post plants, and they were unable to convert those type of rounds. Enter the ones who have understood the assignment. It's time to go big or go home. And they're showing up here in map number three. Looking to take us the distance here today. G2, they've dipped in again. Some passes, AWP at the ready. Smoke obscures and oh. shot hit. That's the Sampias opener. And that's what they're going to need plenty more of. Supremely aware of what was required of him. Let's see if Deha is in the same boat. He's more than ready for this flight path here. See what type of utility there JKS is lobbing off the skybox of smoke and a molly to force players out of baskets. He was even playing anti-flash so he could still contest this territory. And now with the number advantage, they're even going to give him some support here. Madden and Deha. St. Pius locks down middle and Nerds and Snappy both over towards that dark position. Looking a bit clumsy. On that presence on B, there's still bodies here on A. Deha and Madden. They're through. Deha, what a snap from the Famas. Response from JKS and Madden. He hides out in plain sight on the site. JKS doesn't investigate. Instead, the man disadvantage. G2 trying to regroup. Time's a problem here. A good map for the seesaw, but no territory to work with. And it's two to be. get through. He readies himself. For 13. They want to hand G2 a dominating loss. And that's exactly what Snappy's doing as he continues to frag. 22. This map feels done. Nico just going to backpedal out of here, holding onto a Galil. Would hope to get his hands on that AK. Over towards the canal's position, but with nine seconds left, I don't think that's happening. And. This is the team we were hoping to see in the final here today. It has taken them two maps to show up. Mirage was better, but this is brilliant. This is exactly what Nuke felt like. But from the other perspective, we've seen moments from a lot of the individuals of Ents throughout this game. Nerds, he's done all right. 
Snappy, a huge map. We mentioned leading by example, but this is no easy feat. Had 19 kills in the first half, 10 above anybody else on his team, and was instrumental in round after round, whether it was with the MAC-10, whether it was in post plants, and also calling his team to victory here. Three more rounds for Entz to net this one up. This is where you can't trip over your shoelaces. If you want to hand G2 a taste of their own medicine, make them feel what you felt after that first map. You want to keep it clean. Nico fully invested. Madden, only the one. That's the trade required, and Nats doesn't get it. Saved by Nico. JKS, he'll get away with three HP and that man advantage, yeah. Debatable. The longer they take to react here, the more information Ents can pick up. Mid call clear right now. No threats. How far do they send Snappy forward? G2 grouped with that man advantage. Trying to look for the path of least resistance here. Snappy continuing his crawl. This frees up some pious, but is he there in time? He might just be They're coming through. Obscured view. Maybe one. Perfect from some pious. That was the bomb carrier. JKS is low, but he still contributes a second. He'll even get the bomb down as well. By the skin of his teeth and still hitting shots. Deha. He's already found one in the round close in that one-on-one -on -one with Nico. Look at Snappy's nades. So many. Flash high above Snappy. First is back turn, perfect. Now the distraction's in, and one by one, piece by piece. Hence, looking to take it all away from G2. And Nico's last on the naughty list as Deha another close. And another round where Ent have a number disadvantage, this time on a retake. Massive stuff from Ent. They are believing now in all these situations, not giving up hope, understanding that they can will their way into this. Hunter steps out wide, bomb spotted on the flank. Easy kill on the JKS, not ready. The kills keep coming and Ents keep believing. I was doubtful when I saw that smoke, some Pius a little late to arrive at the site but still finds a contribution, still gets that bomb loose. And the rest, they cause this pandemonium and G2, they are with hands tied, staring down the barrel of 14 to five. Just feels for them like nothing they can do is right here. The amount of bad situations that they've lost. You see Nico's frustrations now through the roof. Pace, pace is the name of the game. And look at the result. Nerds is completely unprepared. He still goes down. Look at the damage as Hoopsie builds upon it. Snappy, again, we say his name as he's got a lot to do, and Madden's gone, it would only be snappy. Dehu has managed to join him, but G2 are in no hurry. They cannot afford to lose their opportunity. A two-man advantage, Nico on that AWP with the low HP. But this is the stuff where G2 do start to fall apart at the seams. Sure, aggression in your face, that's great. It gets them this two-man advantage, but with the low HP that you've prefaced here, and a team that likes to take things into their own hands. Individuals may give away a kill here. Snappy's comfortable. And they establish somewhat of a crossfire. Now Hunter is investigating. And Nico, his patience is rewarded. Post it up. Hunter's about to call it clear. And Deha, he's about to walk into JKS. Now 10 HP on him. The bomb's on Monacy, and they have got time to get that down on the other side. Nico, happy to collect another. Taste of victory then for G2, it only took them five. And finally something though, and something that they converted where they had the advantage because they've had it in a lot of rounds throughout this map of play here. It has broken the finances of Ents who are taking their first tactical timeout in map number three, which tells you just how easy things have been going for them so far. Now in true Ents fashion, with the loss bonus at the bottom of the barrel, 1900 into the next, we do expect the force buy here. But it's less about what can they buy, it's what are they going to do with it. Are you going to play aggressive across the map? Because just there they charge through mid, drop down fast B split. So do you want to try and take the fight on the front foot? Do you want to push out B? Do you want to get in their face? Do you want to just try and go for a stack? And if you lose this round, if you pick the wrong side, you go again into the next. Well, as we see them starting to equip here, with the parting words of Saw, the coach, I'm sure about to find out how they want to proceed forward. That's with the last minute investment. Actually, not going to buy any Kevlar or utility behind this, just a 5-7 for him. Some pies with a scout. Ents have no right in this round. I would have said that about a lot of rounds in this map so far, to be honest with you. I know this is easy to win 
number disadvantage situation on the T side over towards the A side of things, but B... Not typically the case. And this is going to be a test over towards A. If they want to probe for any A main control, they will have to get through multiple bodies. And with the flash of the ready, JKS, he's about to be pressured here. Tends to not feel that pressure. Waiting for the cue. Snappy, he's forced into the fight. A long range, JKS delivers. Surprisingly, doesn't move ends to be more aggressive, knowing that the A lurk or the A extremity was otherwise engaged here. 50 seconds left on the clock now, and still G2 need to investigate. Hunter will be the point man. Yeah, he's probing. Are they going to let him off the leash? You don't want to give away an AK in towards the stack, so time is going to be the biggest problem for G2 here. Yeah, they have. Fallen victim to the clock on more than one occasion. If they split A, they're going into the stack here. That's what that smoke indicates. Deha can still block connector. There's going to be problems. Big problems. That's a great molly. Forces him forward. The flash is there. The flash is there. JK has a full white screen. Madden can't get it done. Can't finish the job. Finally, he falls. Too much resistance. They've taken the bomb. Split towards B here. It's going to go down towards CT spawn. Hooksy on the beach. He definitely isn't relaxed, though. A lot to do, a lot to do, a long way back into this map. Hello? Oh no, oh no, Diha, one bullet, one bullet will do it! And he does at least leave with the rifle for a moment. Oh. This shot out of the author makes it even more awkward. Yeah, I'm honestly looking shaky oh. in map number three. It's all up for debate now, Diha's dead. Didn't quite nail the exit. And that's some pious scout. Wow, hits the head of Hunter. Maybe they do leave with the rifle after all. No one else is close. A nice upgrade for him. Yeah, something to carry through into the next. So Ooh. held on to the AK-47. They know how to keep us guessing, don't they, G2? But a mountain to climb here today. Seven rounds the difference now. Almost waltzed straight in towards that stack late, and that would have just been catastrophic to the mental of G2 going into this extended break between what could be maps three and four. Very uncomfortable scenario for JKS there. He handled it well, Madden uncomfortable as well. Missing his first burst. How much can you get out of this AK now in the hands of some pious here? And as mentioned, Monacy, he's been having a great series so far, but we've seen some wobbles, some missed shots from the young sniper. Some pious throwing his luck. Help by JKS from Rugs. There is only one threat. JKS starts to use his util. Implies attention towards the A site. And that's Sampaya's rifle. The only opportunity for lethality for Ents' 22nd. And he has already laid down the law. Reveals himself. Monacy looked for the rebuttal. Empty handed. And Hooksy's crawl is going to catch the Spaniard off guard, no doubt. As he looks through, hoops, he's up, and oh, Sun Pius adjusts. Anyone can finish him off. He's pre-firing through, damage inflicted onto Monacy as well. This gets dicey now, Deha has awkward. flashes. Super awkward now, nice from Nico. Catches Deha on the way in. Only the P2K for Snappy as Nico doesn't need to see his opponent, but Nertz nails it with the Deagle. Has Sun Pius done enough? Can they really recover this with only the one rifle? Nico doesn't think so. Heroics from Nico here, 23 kills. He wants to get his hands on that trophy at the end of that stage. Not willing to give up a gimme here. That got very, very close. Some pious, great production. A lot out of a save rifle. Damage done and still forcing G2 to look a little bit timid here. Standing up against these light investments. Just swatting them away like the flies they were. G2 is still in this, but only just. And Swanee does not like what he's seeing here. Timeout number four called for G2, the last one burnt. And some parting words if he wants his team to pick this up in a three-map affair. 
Still six rounds. Six more rounds to make it nine consecutive just to tie the score line up here at 14-14. And if you're Anton, you see them playing that slow, that methodical, you think you've got them right where you want them. Sure, it's the lighter by. Sure, we say be careful. But right now, G2. They're the ones who look like they're playing with the pressure. And Ents relieved by the position they found themselves in. The back's against the wall. Now they're playing some of their better Counter-Strike. Yeah, I'm on a seat. Taking some initiative as well. The CT has considered it. He sweeps through the angles early. This is a gift. The CTs will smoke. Wasting Sendry there. That one's perfect. Possibly a piece of U-Tilt to delay here for Ents to miss. So under pressure over towards B once more, but the fight is coming Hunter's way. On the fade of the Flames, they reoccupy. But this is a headshot position. This is where Hunter and his precision can do deadly work. Getting this mid control more often than not here, G2. Same combination. It would be an AWP up against this AK, but a hard shot to hit, all the same. All to play for if G2 can find another. And Nerds, he's aware. Pooksy, his first victim, and Nico falls as well. G2 running out of options, running out of players. As JKS, he's next! And Sun Pius racks up the double. Only Monacy, next gone, and 15 in the bank. As Ents look to find a response to those first two maps of this grand final. You feel that's going to be it, don't you? You do. You wonder with that call as well, trying to split mid to B like that, like jiggling in that corridor here. You see just how easy it is for Nerds. It's a perfect fight for him. For Nico, it's a desperate attempt on the trade, and the same thing to be said right here. More than enough time for Sampias to reposition in Nerds with the final blow. G2. Not looking like themselves, and hey, the crowd are chanting for overtime. I don't think so. Look at this. Game face is on. Sun Pius fires off the shot. Hooksy felt that one whistle past. They're looking to pop. Snappy gets the info. Confirmation of multiple bodies. Hooksy's onto Nerds, though. And they're doing it the hard way now. G2, margin for error, zero as they take this site convincingly. No worries here for Ent. It's okay to drop another right now. Hold on to your guns. Pack them up, take them home and try again tomorrow. Madden's still looking around for damage here and is going to find it. You need to be careful if you G2. If you want to start mounting this comeback, you can't be giving away rifles. You will probably need to drop a couple into the next as Madden not backing down. Happy to look for more, wants to deny this scoop up from JKS oh. here. Flashed forward, oh. and the Tech-9 with another. JKS will leave with the AWP team play. Even in a guaranteed round to secure every goodie they can. All right, well, Sunnik again here, but this is G2 are the ones playing from behind. Going to have to do a whole lot of convincing here. Yeah, 10-5 half. Echoing into our second. And that's the thing, if you want to get this done in three, you have to win now in overtime. And of course you want to get it done in three. You don't want to go to another map. You don't want to give it any chance. But giving a chance is Salt. Second time out for Ents here. Mike's back open for the coaches. 30 seconds. And there he saw his team get exploded over towards B. An explosion. Up through Dark, in through B long. Pins to the site. Easy kills. In and some saves. A buy again. Money. Starting to bottom out here. 2,400 into the next for Ents. One of the positive ends have with the margin that is in their favor right now is by the time this gets deep, by the time G2 get up to 15 to 12, if that's even a possibility, the loss bonus will be maxed out for ends. So 3,400 into their bank balance time and time again. Saves will mean drops available. So ends are in a good position to close this one out. We got Ancient next and Vertigo if we need it as that decider. But the fourth map starting to look a whole lot more likely. But is it a certainty? Nico doesn't think so. Monacy chipped away at look at Nico go. As he demands respect on the B site. Some pirates will deploy the smoke. 
Well, Nico to look elsewhere. Madden could have had an opportunity to take Monacy out there. He was very softened up by the HE, so the flak damage done from the A player. Monacy not safe here, waltzing around with that AWP and bomb on the back. So pressure applied towards that B bomb site early, trying to make them siphon through the Uto as quick as you like. But the AWP could be the difference maker here if they set Monacy up for a fight, but they not doing an awful lot to support him right now. Ilya, you got that bomb on your back, is I'm sure what they're screaming. And extinguish. Madden now feels exposed. He's responsible for Splitting A. A main. The smoke's perfect though. They have to flash and go. Maybe Madden. Maybe Madden can do it for the end squad. And they're pushing through. Turns them both. Only the one. Diha builds upon it, but flashed off. He will go down. They're into the side here. Do they go for this retake end? Remember, Snappy's low and finances are an issue. I'm not sure. It looks very winnable from our perspective, but we know the ends just need one more round. Why take the risk? Why take the chance? It's just touch and go for G2 in a lot of these situations. You're prefacing Madden, potentially there is the hero, a multi-kill, the difference maker. The same to be said for Diha, isolated up towards the found position. Removed, but only just. So two kills, that makes the difference here. G2 grab another round, they get themselves up to double digits. But you're walking a tightrope here. Good spacing, you can see how difficult it was for Madden to make that adjustment. JKS getting his crosser on his head in time. Yeah, they're most definitely doing it the hard way. This is a good sequence out of G2. Winning five of the last six. But of course, that one put ends onto map point. So far, they've weathered the first two and five more map points before that overtime conversation starts. Just have to hit on the money once. And with those saved guns, this one, not with all the bells and whistles, and still competitive. Still a threat. That smoke, oh. oh, and that shot marks a potential 11th. With Snappy gone, the highest flyer, the highest fragger. Eyes are on Madden and Nerds. But look at the gamble here. Snappy understanding the situation. Pulls everybody over to respond to this B-bomb site here. Some passes, the only one in the wind. And as G2 are gearing up, they're about to get a face full of flash. Yeah, Madden's been asked to do it. He's diligent to check his back, but upon the fade. Upon the fade, Monacy lets it go. D had good on the dig as well. They've already got two frags and Madden builds upon it. Hunter trying to save G2 now and some as he comes alive. With a frag of his own. Hunter to try and clutch to save G2. And the first is beautiful. A sequence with the molly, a tap to the head of Nertz, and with 50 seconds. Hunter fills his lungs with a fresh batch of air and gets to work. Some Pius has given them a way back in here. Responding through dark, not locking down the mid-rotation point. There is an avenue open for Hunter. His bigger issue is he has to get a move on as he drops down. Some Pius is going to hear that, the fight. Hunter! He's cooking up trouble now. Some Pius is going to be punching his desk if Madden can't close. He's just trying to fake him out. just death can't fake him. Madden full rotation. He's going to have a chance to plant the bomb. Hunter, this, this could was, be a masterclass. This was supposed to be it. This was supposed to be it. Madden's committed now. He's not going to leave. He's going to rotate now. There's no time for him to waltz in and plant. Madden's going to get there just in time. How this safe does Hunter insane. feel? Hunter, one more frag for one hell of a clutch in a grand final. On the ropes, battered and bloody. One versus three. As Entz at touching distance of forcing a fourth. Hunter has a molly. Oh, that could be enough. There's no smoke for Madden available here. Madden, Where's you're running out of time. You're running out of time. Where's Is this really the, it? It's just going to save. No. That's it. Hunter. That's the round. That's done. Hunter, a masterclass in the 1v3. And Oxy knows another lifeline. G2 are not done yet. Comeback, it's still on. That right there, an absolute masterclass outplaying Madden. Still in it, still alive. Magical. You thought Monacy 
Started off right for G2 and then Hunter in a 1v3, the second frag. Some pious isolated headshots across the board and then you can see Madden losing to this chess game. Faked him out on the cam. So right now needs to scale the mic and settle ends. That was a round with three safe guns and two upgrades behind it. It wasn't even a full buy. Boys, that's fine. Who cares? Wipe that out of your mind. The amount of man disadvantage situations that we have won in this series, this is our map. That's what Saw needs to be on the mic saying right here, right now. They almost did it with less. And right now they've got a whole lot more. Some pious with the AWP. Rifles are plenty. You till the boot. Kids are here. Ents can still get this done. G2 are putting on a show, but this is Ents' map. Four more. Round at a time. Nate is bang on the monocy. Operating at half health for the rest. Hoopsie starts to cast his gaze towards middle. Smoke out. Some pious activating. Thinks better of it as the Molly comes through. It's the same pattern they've been taking mid with time and time again. Molly and smoke combo, and then JKS follows through with more. But here it's a different look. Here they want to test the waters elsewhere. They've had success towards B. Being able to pressure and pepper in towards that site, and it has worked perfectly. There's only D her here, only D her here. The util's perfect. Look at this, it's flawless from G2. Never mind that, they even take down Dia through the smoke. It might feel like another save right now for Ents. They should surely go fishing, at least have a look, see if you can find a kill. See if G2 overstepped the mark, the pressure is still on them. But this is another round where Ents likely just have to consider the save here. The same story, time after time, as now it's about to be four consecutive rounds for G2. Still part of this comeback. Still looking to get this done in three maps. The pressure, it's flicked on over again. You come into map three, you're 2-0 down. Your back's against the wall and you start playing like the team that everybody knows. You get to 15, just one more necessary, just five more kills. And you're taking it to map four, you're still on this grand final stage. And now enter the one starting to win at the moment. It wasn't always just five. It was only Hunter, up against three. And he extends play. And G2 are running with that. This belief in each other. I discussed the loss bonus and exactly what that would facilitate down the stretch for Ents. There will be more than enough money for them to buy after buy, especially if they're saving so many players. That cash comes in, it gets injected, and this is the final timeout available in this map. If we go to overtime, neither coach can contribute. This is it. The last 30 seconds has just been spent. The parting words. And if you want to stay on this stage, you just need one more round. Take us to Ancient. Take us the distance here in this best of five and keep that pressure on G2 Esports. One round at a time. This is quite the run from G2, but it still has to remain flawless. Ents, just that one exception. An Ancient will be seen. A different look, once again. Hooksy getting answers. With no body in doors. Madden overlooking this, and Monacy will profit. But Hooksy's still unknown. Hooks is still unknown completely. Yeah, he's be overlooked. D has not going to be ready for this. Not at all. He's not Especially with the U2. They're going to be walking through. Hello. He's going to in his hands. Oh, it's another down. round. It's They've another it. save. 13 in the bag. You just can't keep testing the waters. You're going to have to go all in ends. You're going to have to go aggressive. You're going to have to choose how to take the fight in these final two rounds. You are getting dictated to. And Hooks, he's found the gap. He has even more pain as Snappy falls. They're lost in their own minds now. Visualizing how this goes wrong, as opposed to how this goes right. They have to go aggressive in round the next after two. Round after round, they just have to go aggressive. You don't have any choices now. Right now, Hooksy calling circles around you, and he rips more guns oh. away. This is huge. You just got to find nerds now. 21 points of health, the AWP. They're hunting, and Hooksy's farming. 
This is a twist of the knife. Taking out some pious nerds has still got that big green, but for how long they're crawling through, they know where you are now. Nerds will have nothing to boast. Another test passed. Five map points. It's not going to get any easier here. Eluded Ents. And only two more required for a seven round run to overtime from G2. Madden's going to be mad about that. Never mind Deha. What a surprise for Deha there. And Hooksy had already started that hunt because of how easy that was. So three huge kills, sure. We know the lost bonus. We know there can be another buy here. But have whittled them down at the right time. It has to be now. It has to be now. But it's a default setup. It's a 2 1 2 again. They cannot fumble. They are so flustered. But see how much pressure is being applied. You don't want to dump your Uto immediately. A smoke on the side, a pressure of an orb. And you're already siphoning through two smokes on that B bomb site. A HE from Hunter. Just barely misses the mark there. Only one kit in play on the back of Nerds here. If we get into a post plant, keep that in the back of your mind. Hunter with more pressure. Snappy flushed out of dark. Madden with the rotation. A 2-3 split of the defense. G2 with mid control again. Have had absolutely no issues. But Hooksy is the point man. Madden, he took it so passively this time. He didn't want to be that first man down. They can just stretch their legs now. G2 invigorated. Nico going to be that pointy end of the spear. Trying to find a way in. San Pius has got him. That could be the start. That could be it. But they've done the impossible once. Just ask Hunter. And he's gone too. As Entz tantalizingly close now to tasting victory on this grand final stage. Thrown around in the first two maps. And here on Anubis. Support's coming. 18 seconds. G2 needs a plan if they want to keep playing. A valiant attempt. Going for the plant, no one's stopping him. Hooksy will extend. JKS has caught another. There's no way. There's no way. Nerds has got it. Hooksy gone. And Morrissey in an impossible clutch. He's got two. That's Ents. Hold on. They look exhausted after that one. G2 the same. As they all accept. Ancient is required.
Well, up to this point, it has not been hashtag easy for Ants. In fact, it was quite the opposite until we got to Anubis. Albeit G2, do give them a bit of a run there towards the end. It's just not enough. And we do see ourselves going into Ancient. Welcome back, everybody. This is a Grand Finals. And welcome to the Grand Final Ants. Yeah, they're, 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 they're here. Absolutely. Fight. I mean, listen, huge sigh of relief. I think in the entire arena, we, we could see the train wreck happening on that last part. We could see it coming. You could see G2 powering up, piling up out of these clutches when Hunter gets the 1v3 out of a magical hat and Ants is starting to struggle a little bit. We see mistakes being made. I, I thought they were gonna crumble. I thought the pressure would be too high. You thought it was just gonna just break in half. So yeah, like, can, can you grab onto that? Does that make sense? Uh, yes and no. I think the fact that they were patient and went for all those saves made it really difficult for G2 to mount the comeback all the way back, right? Even though they got a couple of rounds for free, you know, with like an early entrance into the bomb site, and you know, I think it was just the fact that Ants had gun round after gun round after gun round, they couldn't get a round against pistols or something like that to make it sort of easier to, to mount the comeback and also they made too many mistakes in the first half yes really that led to that point this is where ants really put themselves in a good position mm -hmm. they utilize they capitalize on a couple of mistakes from g2 it's it's tough to say where it's going and what's the source of it is it relaxing just a little bit you're thinking you're seeing yourself a little too pretty we have a couple of examples here yanko is g2 doing g2 things yeah it's a 5v3 round right the nerds is a b player is alive hooksy goes for a push re dies now this creates chaos Nico decides to sit in the smoke fade to try to do something right with JKS baiting for it. That doesn't work. And all of a sudden it was a 5v3. Now it was a 2v4. Snappy takes matters into his own hands. He was the highest rated player for Ants in this game. He had an incredible uh, Anubis, absolutely. And G2 sort of throws that round away. Look at this now towards the end of the half. Round 13, right? 5v3 situation. Nico gets a free, basically, double entry kill. And look at this. Monesi, just like the peak is almost too slow for some pious. <laughs> And Monesi fires off the shot without being completely lined up. Now a couple of great shots uh, from the side of the ends, guys. And it's another 5v3 round. And the biggest problem with these two rounds is the fact that you could tell the frustration on the yes. faces of G2 players. It's, it's also very disjointed. Like, it's a whole lot of 1v1s being put in. G2 is trying to fight back into these rounds. I think they can feel sort of the fail happening, but no stabilization. No, none at all. Oh, Wild Kaden appears. Hey. hey, man. Somehow. What's up? What are, you th what are you thinking? What do you take out of that match? Crazy match, and I'm also glad that it's going further, you know, like I think the 3-0 bits of 5, I don't like it. I know also some people don't like when they go the full distance, but I like the resilience from Ince. I like to see that they are fighting back. I think one of the things you guys just talked about, the body language in G2, it was the first time I saw them a little bit frustrated and things not going that way. And some of the tight situations, ends were more calm and more composed. And I mean, Snobby had maybe the half of his life as well. Created the space with the Mac 10, had the good AK rounds, and uh, it was great to see. Yeah, pretty sure he was rocking out of the first half with 20 frags, like leading Huge. the pack by, by a large margin. Uh, wow. Uh, so I guess you look at the entirety of what we just got here, and now we have an actual match on our hands. You know, that, that changes the, the course of the entire thing. I think for G2, though, it's good that they were coming back in the second half because that where you could see them play more their own game and be a little bit more calm. So and it's also good they get this extended break now because if I'm the coach, the sports psychologist, or whoever on that team, I'm back there and saying, guys, just look at the difference when we let like some of the emotions get better of us yes should we be losing this round no but who cares right like as long as we stay composed we can always come back into the game we can always win this and also unfortunately against you KD and in Katowice it was a similar situation yeah. there were two all out then lost on Inferno then it's going to Ancient where it's like you guys had the advantage there on paper right but they were still able to sort of come out on top and ironically, we are going ancient. You know, you, you think about the big picture, that that's exactly what's going to be happening. Uh, Kadian, we got a pretty lackluster first two maps. You know, the third one stands and delivers. Do you, how do you forecast the rest of this series going? I have a feeling that uh, G2, if they need to close it, it needs to be ancient. Um, not because I think that the difference in skill is necessarily very big on Vertigo, like in terms of the map pool, but all this talk about like Nico and these guys hating the map, I feel like losing two maps in a row, mm -hmm. coming into a map that you don't feel comfortable in, that you can make the difference, I think that could be too big of a task. Also, I think that on Ancient, I, I favor G2. So I think like this is your chance. This is now that you go in and close it, right? And like you said, the extended break, eat some food, relax, rest. You tried this before, you tried it against us in Kato. Reset, prepare for the next one and I don't know I think they Nico has had some amazing halves on the, like the cave area whatever you call it oh, and yeah. Manisi is flicky on this map JKS is a solid anchor and 
the, the change in position as well, like Hooksy has been swapping a bit with Nico. I think they're doing really good on Asia right now, so. I'm, I'm interested in your perspective. Obviously, the beginning of the third map was a bit more complicated for G2. We yeah. saw a couple of mistakes, we saw frustration. Definitely not their best yes. No. Then they come back into it, they start playing better. Does it make it more hurtful to lose the third map? Would you rather just not say, you know what, fuck it. Yeah. We didn't play whoa, the good whoa, map, yeah. that's it. Family Sorry. show. I get one per show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is my contract. Right now. Hey, while we have this, this one second here, yeah. uh, I'm hearing that we can hear from G2. Ooh, and, you know, okay. this is probably a good time to do just that. So let's check it out. What's going on backstage? It's been a great start so far for you, but on this map, right, when it comes to Anubis, we spoke about you not playing it. These clutches not going your way. What do you feel was just missing at the end? I think, like, on this map, we're just missing those reactions that we are really good on on the other maps. Like you saw in 4v2s and 3v2s, it was still shaky because we're just not really used to playing the map. So and it's just like we're missing the reps on it and it really showed, but a great T-side still to come back and give us some momentum. But you have got the reps when it comes to Ancient. You must be feeling hella confident about that. What do you think of Ensis? Uh, they don't play too much as well. Like last they played it was two months ago. So I think it's going to be kind of the same as Anubis. It's just going to be a, about figuring out uh, what they do and how to conduct. And how does it feel for you personally on a positive note here? That crowd, the German crowd loves you, mate. Uh, it's amazing. Like the support is insane. I can hear it a bit. Like whenever they see me on the screen, I can hear my name and it's just insane. It's a dream come true. Soak it up. Enjoy it. Thank you very much, Swanee. Good luck. I mean, he's absolutely right. This crowd is loving Swanee. Like, there's just no other way to question that. What I will ask, though, is that we looked at the vetoes when we got here, and we, we identified that there were two maps that weren't going to be happening. So now that we find ourselves in the fourth, and, you know, we hear what he just says, uh, I'll kick it to you, Kadian. What do you think about uh, looking at Ancient down the barrel? Yeah, I mean, when people were talking about the veto, they said there's two maps that is clearly in the favor of Vince. It is Nuke, and it is Anubis, right? And the G2 survived one of the two main threats of the end veto process. So again, I think, like, G2 is favored, in my opinion, on Ancient. I think they're playing it very well. I think, like you said, Ins hasn't been playing it much. They are capable, for sure, of playing this map. But they are going to be tested. And to answer the question that you said, Matt, like, I think... I think at this point in, in, in the series, like, you'd rather just get it done. Like, if you're not feeling comfortable in Anubis, like, all this crawling back and it's whatever. Like, the map is lost and yeah. they're going to be out there and they're going to say, we're not good on this map. They're going to say, like Swanee said, we don't know our reactions well enough. So 16-14, 16-4, they would probably have been feeling worse because they would, oh, we're close to the title, we can do this, we're one, two kills away. So I think it's not too bad that they lost it uh, on a bigger margin. Slightly draining, does that sound about right? Yeah, yeah. it is a little bit draining, you spend a little bit more energy. I still like it because it was clear that, you know, once you have all your ducks in a row, you can do almost anything, right? You just yeah. First half went too too bad and also you lost the first four rounds of this. You're down 14-5 and it ended 16-13. Like, that's a pretty good thing to do and I think for Ancient though Enz has to make it more about sort of trying to outread and outcall G2 in some situations. You can't make it about players making decisions in the mid round. Not only because G2 has better players, but because still, even after three maps, the best player for Enz is Snappy in yes. this series. Like Wild. some yeah. other guys had some good rounds here and there, not nearly as good enough as it needs to be against a team like G2, not nearly as consistent enough. And I don't see them all magically all of a sudden starting to play extremely well and Nico, you know, going down the drain and Hunter and all this stuff. Well, dare I say, if Snappy wasn't there on Anubis, that was over. No, yeah, and, and, and I think realistic. it's interesting. We have a leader with us. We can actually yeah, ask him the it. question. Snappy absolutely hitting the ground running on Anubis, saving his team for a map. That's a great fight in itself. Yes. But how does he instill that in his players? There, yeah. there are still some individuals to be coming in. If you were in his shoes, you're just feeling it. You've had a great map. Yes. What do you say to your players to get them up to speed with you? I mean, I think like, like it's an old cliche, but leading by example is always the best way. And I think he did that on the T side. Yes. He showed no fear. He said, listen, I'll take the Tech 9 I'll take the Mac 10 He even gave the better weapons to his star players. And yet it was him making the key difference. I think still in the back of his mind, because I know this sometimes as well as a leader, I'm like, yeah, okay, so I did this now, but it's just going to last forever. Yeah. Like, I'm going to need you guys to also turn it up a notch. And like you said, San Pius has had such a great tournament. We need to see, like, if we go four maps like we do now, he needs to be dominant on at least one of them. But I think, you know, he's, he's just going to say that, listen, now we broke it. We started to win against him. Maybe get some information from the mental coach that they're struggling, and they'll yeah. try and punish them that. And actually, let's do it. Let's hear from the camp of Ants after what was obviously the best showing in this grand final so far. So, Ents are on the board still in this race. So, saw the first question, of course, I have to ask you is what, in your mind, was the biggest adjustment you had to make in order to get that win on Anubis? Um, I would say, well, one of the biggest adjustments, what we talked about, was that we do need to hit our shots more. And when we go into these duels, 
with them. We need to go in with that aggression, with that confidence. So we are going to take those duels because the first two maps, obviously we were lacking some in that apartment. And then it, it transfers into when we lose entries, for example, we lose map control. We feel like we can't get anything going. And on top of that, they were gaining some good positions on us. So they were in like lurk positions, you could say and behind us, for example. So we talked about the importance of the duels and importance of staying, staying calm and keep staying in the fight. Okay. Of course, the confidence now it's much better, but two maps to go. So it's a question of stamina now, too. So can you say a couple of things about how you think the team will react to the fact that it's becoming a really long day and you got to keep hitting those shots, as you say? Yeah, we were talking about it beforehand already since we knew it's a best of five. It can go really long and that's really important. So we were preparing for it. And even after first, second map, we were talking about never to give up. And as long as there's rounds to play, we will never give up. Love it. Good luck on Ancient. So let's grab right onto that. He's even identified right there something that we already said earlier, which was there was a timid ins in the server prior to this past map. Uh, what are you taking from that, Yanko? I think obviously you had to make that change mentally, right? And say, hey, if we're going to go out, let's go out swinging and don't play it scared and play our own game. I think also in the first two maps, I mean, that's where G2 is really comfortable, right? And that's where they make the game more difficult for you to play. You could now see on Anubis with some space given to them or them creating the space what ants can do as well and they just need to try to create more scenarios like that on ancients as well yeah for me it's also a question of stamina now like you have to realize none of the ants players are really accustomed to this best of five they've played once and i was an 03 in dallas so now that we have a player with us we at the desk we always try to say best of five is unique yeah. it gets a bit more messy it gets more draining can you tell us a little bit how you experience it when you get down the fourth fifth hour of counter-strike it gets a little blurry how do you experience it i mean you are asking the wrong guy because i'm like your nickname a maniac you know i, I barely don't get very much tired in this, <laughs> in this bit of Fair enough. But I think like like he said, if you talked about it prior, if you have a plan for what you're gonna eat now, how you're gonna like try to just recharge your battery a little bit, I think still with a stage like this, the crowd and the um, what is it called adrenaline is still gonna kick in. That doesn't mean I, I think for me it's not so much about hitting the shots, it's more about the decision making and okay. like the communication is still gonna be fine. You're gonna be able to say where they're running and how they're doing it, but it's the small decisions like when you are a little bit tired in the back of your head and you forget to jiggle peek that angle you forget to call your made for double peaks and stuff like this yeah and, and that becomes in that falls under the category of some sloppy counter-strike at times right but also creates these crazy frag movie highlight things that happen sometimes miracles happen and it leads to frustration i think yes. this is something that matters a lot people don't realize that in these moments of counter-strike you make more mistakes you're yes. more tired which means you don't have the energy to stay focused which means you make more mistakes we make more angry yes. so how do you how do you get away from that horrifying circle which you can fall in sometimes yeah i mean i think instance at least a team that plays oftentimes more strict and set strategies where you don't need to think as much about the small decisions. I mean, there will be the mid-round, the trades and stuff like this, but where G2 is playing a bit more fluent at times, and I think maybe that's also like a small point about the series so far, is what is the by far hardest map to be putting CT aggression on? It's Anubis. When you saw a nuke, they were in, they were killing nerds in, in lobby, clearing all these kind of positions on uh, Mirage, JKS was cons consistently pushing Slope yeah. and Palace, getting the information, and they will have more opportunities to do that on Ancient. So, yeah. I think also what you do in that scenario is you modify and manage your expectations, right? Like yeah. you come into it, it's coming, you say, guys, it's normal for mental mistakes you to happen, messy. right? Like expect it to happen and let's just keep it moving, you know, let's yeah. keep rolling, forget about it, right? And don't let one round make you lose three more after. Addressing the elephant in the room, right? Saying like this might happen and if it happens, right. don't Absolutely. punch your own head, like get on to the next round. If you die, communicate to your teammates what's happening. Are you in a good position? Should you push? Should you stay? Stuff like this. But I remember from the fifth map against the final um, of Pro League, it was online. So even I remember from the catchers, like when it's a crowd setting, you have the cameras following you all day. It's even more draining. It's not even comparable. But on the fifth map of the final against the um, Gambit, we pr played them many times on Mirage and never has it been more easy on the CT side because they were what so good at jiggle peeking, never making the mistakes. Their map control was imminent back then. And when we played them on the um, fifth map, I just got so many easy shots I felt like and, and my teammates were getting multi kills way easier. Yeah, and well, let me grab that. You, you said fifth map. I don't know. I don't know that you'll be sticking around with us that long, but maybe you do. Regardless, Vertigo, if it goes all the way through, how does that play out? I mean, again, I think then that Inch will um, have the favor just in terms of us. But then again, there is 
sorts of unique things about fifth maps and going the oh, distance and stuff like unique. this. So I'm not going to sit here and give any like perfect predictions. No, of course, we don't and, do that either. And if it happens, I'm going to maybe just stand a little bit here and just enjoy you guys <laughs> doing your amazing analysis and all this, you know. But I don't have the perfect answer for it. But I, I think still, if I'm G2 mentally, the best and easiest way, obviously, is to close it now no. in a map where you are favored and you're comfortable. Your star players are comfortable. That's the key thing. Yeah, I, I, know. I like that Amen. answer. Yeah. Amen. I'd love, it. I'd love it to play out that way, Trace. You know that? Yeah, of course. If, if it does, we do have to go through Ancient first. With Anubis in the pocket, Ancient out there. Uh, anybody changing predictions? We're going to stick with what we got up here. I'm sticking with it. We're talking about this is the same G2, very similar to the one in Katowice. Why not the same results? Okay. I think it's interesting now because we've heard about Nico and how, you know, mentally they've changed a little bit. They're more calm. They're handling their emotions. Everyone is focused Prove it well. now. That, exactly. That's the yeah. right map to do it. You've just messed up on map number three. Yes. You're moving on map number four. You're getting a little tired. We see a little signs of frustration. Well, that was a great speech. Now, I'm just going to sit back, enjoy, and watch you play Counter-Strike. I mean, that is exactly what the draining can do. It's yeah, the definitely. That you then agreed upon, you go back. positive, you go back to your old routines, right? Mm, and yeah. that can be the body language and stuff like this. It really can be. I mean, we can see everything. Hell, we even have x-ray. You know, they don't have all that. So, <laughs> a lot of things just to grab onto. Thank you very much for joining okay. us, Katie. And we're going to go to a break. Uh, we're going to come back. We're going to look at that fourth map. Now, I almost said third, but fourth map of Ancient. We'll be right back. You're watching the Intel Extreme Masters. of ESL Pro League. Poland's here. Oh my god, Gary, are you gonna be kidding me? What a map. What a map. The in-game leader, architect of every move and every win. The entry fragger, fearlessly leading from the front. The opper, the deadliest of them all. The support, the true difference between winning and losing. The lurker, everywhere and nowhere, patiently waiting to strike. It takes five champions to win. Which one are you? Patience. Precision. Pinpoint accuracy. A weapon that unites many of Counter-Strike's holiest names. But only granting the scepter to those who can withstand the pressure. This is no imitation game. Aggression paramount He doesn't make mistakes, he buries them. Walking straight through the fires of hell to ignite again. Peak, he's getting a shot, he's hitting another one! Simple, no, simple. And again. And again. He proves that age is no limit. Not a factor to whether you sink or swim when the river rises. No matter how rapidly they shift, you move faster. Going against the grain to catch your enemies off guard. Tracing new angles, forging new dimensions. One, he's gonna get oh! Distinct in his nature and always one step ahead. The librarian silences those in his path. Preparation and calculations clearly paying off. But for the select few, making the unfathomable look like second nature. It comes with ease. Never breaking a sweat. The 
there's a reason why he's the chosen one. Others let the action come to them. Sure, perhaps more passive, but certainly not submissive. Get a couple more out of this one. Oh, oh. Fanatic, I'm starting to crumble. What's going on? Exacting efficiency comes with the territory. Play the odds in your favor and pounce precisely when the time is right. Calm, collected, and clutch as fuck. Brokey, fellow, and the ball's oh! not for a bit. From ten down to five bullets in the chamber, precision even more crucial for those hungry to make magic. Cadian, the captain, capable in the clutch. And so second by second, Cadian knows he can't do this. Surely, one man left standing, safes him behind him. Cadian, oh! If patience is a virtue, then he is a god. Or the devil. The great pilgrimage to worship the deities leads us to our cathedral. The trigger pulled and led roaring from the earth to the heavens. One final tribute to Global Offensive's monumental marksman. The Convergence of Man and Machine designed to bear the most optimized skill set, enhanced to reach peak physical and mental form. Experience, learn, evolve, repeat. A cycle that never sleeps. Rain. okay. The cyborgs do not cease until their objective is complete. Some enhanced with advanced sense perception, raw mechanical skill that is merciless. Eagle eyes that lock exactly on target. The headshot machine unforgiving. Taking the fights to your enemies, pushing them to the edge, and watching them tumble right over. Human emotion compounded with mechanical skill. Fuse this with ambition, drive, self-awareness. You've got yourself a recipe for a deadly machine. Programmed to consistently deliver no matter which weapon wielded. Needs to offer some resistance here. Oh, he doesn't betray him this time. Enhanced with superior dexterity, traditional human senses times them by 10. Limited vision, limited weapons. Attentive to the most minuscule of sounds. The opponent's element of surprise, no match for the inhuman reflexes.
mental resilience cast in steel, hauling yourself and your teammates out of the furnace at melting point. This is starting to shatter a little bit here. It's going to be off completely flawless this one. Calculating the perfect time to strike. They may sweat, smell, and even bleed. But these are no ordinary men. Cybernetic arms engineered with enough force to blow you into the next universe. Logged on, plugged in, all the time. A single map separates G2 from converting both of the bookend tournaments of CSGO's last year. Katowice was a statement. A final they converted on the fourth in the series and on Ancient, no less. On the other side of the stage, you have Ents who have taken that first step to recovery. Reverse sweep. It's a long, long journey back into this game. G2 have set themselves up for success. A slip on Anubis. Some unforced errors. But the world is watching as we look to crown a champion in Cologne, whether it's here on Ancient or if we go to the full five, that remains to be seen. Snappy, leading by example on Anubis. You've got to turn and you've got to give respect to the in-game leader, 33 years of age, in his first final here in the Cathedral of Counter-Strike and stepping up. He wasn't done. And he pulled his team, kicking and screaming, back into action to close things out in that second half of play. Sure, it wasn't easy, but that's the win they needed. That's the win to unlock this confidence. And Ancient, that's a map they've played an awful lot of on the stage. You said, we're not in Dallas anymore, but back in Dallas, up against FaZe, an absolute cracker of a game. Ensor about to take to Ancient yet again. They have to get through Nico. They have to take some wind out of his sails right now. He is in MVP form. A legend of our game. Boasting 70 frags across our first three maps, and one of them was a stomping. And we heard from the coach of Ents, Saw. In that brief interview, he said, as long as there are rounds to play, we will never give up. And ladies and gentlemen, you know what that sound means. Those rounds start now. Four maps deep into the grand finals. A game of endurance as well. And though there is so much complexity to Counter-Strike, it does still boil over into hitting your shots.
Let's get this started. Langsess, are you with me? G2, in the attack here, their map choice. Out the gate, Hunter. You know, see an awful lot of him over towards middle here, being set up for success, but with the pistol just patrolling. You thought they're ready from Hooksy. Flashes at the go as Nico and Monacy set up the smokes. JKS to try and entry in here past Nerds. Madden alongside for the ride. Now Flash could set Nerds up. He's going to go through this. Nerds, can he start strong? Hard to track. JKS was doing the flashbang dance, but he gets away with his life. Bomb will go down here. Post plant. Flustered. Oh, oh posted up through the smoke. JKS down now. Nerds finds his target. And that bomb. Has gone down, this retake is on, the smoke locks in Nico. They'll offer a boost, but they're ready. The next fight will be Ramside. They're already low on Nico. 26 and counting. Still hits his shots. Hooksy trying to delay. So many bodies. His death match right now on the site. Up to Modesty. Oh! On the first double from him. There's no on kit. The There's no kit. Maybe Nico can come up clutch snap. He just has to hit one bullet. And it will be Ents. Starting with the pistol. A dicey there for a moment. Monacy gets that third. A whole different round available in G2. They get the wind under their sails here, but Entz. Sure, it's dicey. The plant, the retake, that smoke. Integral to make that a possibility. And of course, both of these teams locking horns here. I don't think we've had a pistol go by where the other team hasn't forced sport through. That's a freebie for Nurse, just peppering away. JKS's head removed. And defending the honor right there was Snappy. Couple of Galils, couple of Tech Nines, and even you took to boot here. Red smoked, some higher spamming through, but Hunter will find the gap. He will. Red pressure means it's unlikely to have three players defending B here. G2 know that. And they just waltz in. Nico with that Galil. He's got info and he's got bullets into his Kevlar as some Pius takes him out. Madden, oh, JKS overlooked, and he gets himself nice pair of frags as Sun Pius holds onto the site, the bomb in his grasp. Hunter reveals himself on the flank. Hunted by Nerds now, left low on 3 HP. A winnable one for Nerds. He just has to clear his oh. corners, does adjust it to Hunter. Hooksy looking to bring home the fourth by conversion, oh. and Nerds has got him dead to rights. 14 HP, no kit, still has a smoke and time. Now he's picked it up. Hooksy doesn't have the help for this straight up engagement. But it may not matter. Nerds. Oh, Nerds, that's ballsy! Holds the defuse in the face of adversity. And look at them unbarred by the pressure now, just jumping around, dancing through the smokes, making Hunter look silly there. Sure, he's low on HP, but that should have been G2's round. Oh. Started fantastically for them. And St. Pius, just guest on the desk, Katie, and saying, hey, St. Pius, you need him to step up, have one of those pop-off maps. He has been a win condition, especially throughout that semi-final. A massive round from him. A one-on-one -on -one for that force by win. G2 feel robbed. And they're going to buy back in. They're going to apply more pressure towards mid this time. Hunter saying, hey, coast was clear. I got so much room. And again, the same util dotted across the map. Cut out Molly. Donut and Red Smoke off here. Intention's quite clear. Red Room Smoke fades, as does the Donut Smoke shortly. Yep, replenished there by the CTs. So this smoke, was at the ready, just going to be the redeploy of Red, and deep for a reason. Means that if there is a player playing in the mouth, that they have to worry about a lurk through either side. This forces you back, and more of a passive angle as yet another Donut Smoke will hold this mid corridor at bay for now. G2 cannot find the path of least resistance here. A third red smoke in the round, so both teams just showing how much they want this territory. CD is on his perch. Plenty right. of bodies to deal with this, Alex. Yeah, he should be tested, but he has got help. I mean, Madden cheating over. Can Deha deliver? No, he can't. Quick swing out of Monacy. Now Nerds up for debate. Oh, just like that. Just like that. G2. Command, respect, and the sight. And their first round of this fourth map. Now, Snappy doesn't really have a whole lot to hold on to here. Something's better than nothing, sure. An upgrade would be available, would be lovely, but he's the one who's being hunted right now. Finds a safe haven to roost, but the bomb halfway gone. Hunter and Nico, the cousins, not too far away here. Taking their time about this. Lost bonus into the next, of course, only that 1,400. 
Ben's going to have nothing to work with if Snappy goes down. It looks like he might get away with this. Oh, maybe not. Hunter steps on in, reverses up the position, and Nico gets the trade. Perfect. Exactly what the doctor ordered, and Swanee, the coach, should be happy with that. We're into our fourth map. Langsess is into its fourth round. At least. And you can see here just the frustrations as they're going to mount. If you're sore, you want to try and take care of this early. Fortunate enough to hear from him and Swanee with this extended break between the third and fourth maps here. And at the tippy top of his tongue is about hitting those shots. The most simplistic way to look at Counter-Strike, but that's what makes this game beautiful. The nuance, the details, what we sink our teeth into, but it all boils down to... Who's going to pull that trigger first? No smoke at the ready here. A forced buy out from Ents, but this is the lightest it could possibly be. With that 1400, just pistols, just Kevlar, short Dihar with a bit of head armor, a couple of smokes in the mix. And again, this stubbornness towards mid. G2 understand the importance, even softening up. If they want to play forward with aggression on the CT side, those HEs, very popular these days to deal with the CT maneuvers. And honestly, nice first jiggle. little test onto Diha. Good oh. awareness. Well, they are splitting A once more here. Yeah, there is going to be just this gruesome twosome. These blocks with smokes, Ents really trying to delay for as long as they can. Hunter very forward with so much time on the clock here. And the rotation from Ent, Snappy, St. Pius, and Madden, they're not buying it. Well, this could be a quite deflating round for the two of them. Are they really thinking this is all a fake, or have they understood that they can't win this round? Are they just hoping to save here? Clearing out red, more util landing over towards A. That echoes that you picked incorrectly here. Now you have a look in? Yeah, this is a call that was made that, hey, this all is a ruse. We think this is going to be a B hit. Let's gamble on over. Just save. Just hold on to everything. Go again next round. No point. Might have a unicorn on our hands here. A rarity. But a thing of beauty. Most definitely. Wouldn't this just be so fitting? G2. Start of the year off. Katowice. Five mapper. Heroic. Win the first two. Lose the third, go on to the fourth. Ancient, same map we find ourselves on right now. Pick up the trophy. See Nico crying. First time we've seen him emotional at that scale. That was so special. There's a photo floating around the internet that perfectly encapsulates Nico's combination of relief, euphoria, maybe even a little bit of disbelief. This is the thing with Ents, though. We talk about this team. Not a household name as far as orgs or players. Right. You're in a grand final in Cologne right now. You're already in the process of changing that. You beat G2 here, who are exactly that. Names that have been echoing throughout Counter-Strike history. It's setting all the way back here in Cologne 2014. Yeah, right. Some have been doing it that long. JKS. I was out here when he was 18. Now that's Monacy, Zen. Now that's Monacy. <laughs> Hunter across on mid. This is that second taste. But look at how much pressure Hunter is able to apply here. But against Astralis yesterday, he essentially took over with these type of plays. And when Hunter is feeling the game, on this type of a stage, he can truly change it with his presence alone. His decisions, especially with this more aggressive style of a lurk, can really chop and change the dialogue of an entire match of Ancient here. And we've seen it once. I'm sure we'll see it again. And these two, Madden, up against him. Oh, okay. They may be friends outside of the server, but drawing blood, Madden beheads him. A nice contribution. And some options now, because as the clock sinks down, 50 seconds roughly on the clock here, Monacy and JKS. Oh, that's lovely. Don't worry about Monacy and JKS. Yeah, Nico, he finds the equalizer. I thought he might overlook Nertz right behind him, but already into A, JKS but and Nertz Monacy. But Nertz can cut the bomb off here, Alex. Yeah, there is some, certainly grounds for a conversation to be had. And there's Nico, oh. the bodyguard. <laughs> Bailed out. Checks it out. Just in time as well. Hooksy was just rounding that corner. Still problems prevalent here. Hooksy needs help to get this down. If they go for a hold here, yeah, maybe Diha can. Doesn't finish him off. Out from comes Madden, his second kill. It's threatening. An imposing presence from Madden, but it doesn't translate. 
Yeah, see it touch and go there into the final moments. It's a good attempt from Madden there, two in the round. Snappy now looking for something, even saving this armor. Not too terrible going into the next 2400. We will see the buy come out here. Will there be an AWP available for St. Pius? That's the question on everybody's lips. doesn't need to push the issue. Well, maybe with that bomb radius. Oh, walking into Snappy. He's going to get some punishing frags here if he gets another as well. Held on and out just by the skin of their teeth. Yeah, very, very close there. Obviously down to 3 HP, so keeping two alive. Plenty of cash already accrued here. Nico with 10k before the buys come in. So a great start for G2 off the back of those buys early within this half of play. And Nico did bail them out. Hunter goes down, we were just talking about his presence. Well, apparently Madden doesn't think a whole lot of it. And once upon a time, Madden was uh, considered Ooh. one of the best players on this very map when it first came into the pool. I think he was the ancient one. But here we go into the rifles. No AWP available here, just no money. And note, this is the first time Hunter's going to have real resistance up against his mid crawl. He's already been sprayed down to just a third of his health. Nico's had his bell rung to solid util, solid start to the end's gun round. Monacy though, set up for success. We'll see their workflow. How do they plan to take this space? Madden can drop that smoke at his own discretion. Oh, and a jiggle to confirm it. They're trying to punish, and now Madden continues to open up the account for Ents. Deha though, next to be tested, Hunter reveals his location. They're trying to pivot, using Hunter, Hunter as that pivot point, but from behind they re-aggress, solid find, now it's Monacy next up. Hoopsie one, Nerds, he finds him, but Monacy maintains a little bit of space, they can rotate. D has the problem here, he's already tucked in. Yet to frag. Hard clear. A anchor though, does Monacy really clear it through? Oh, Monacy! A revolting awareness of the situation now, the bomb can go down clean. And he's already searching for more aggression out of Madden, not rewarded, a dink not enough, and Madden closes! Poetic! From G2! Huge for the young gun, looking wobbly on Anubis, the moment seems to be getting the better of him. A couple of missed shots cost them a few rounds, but this time, standing up to be countered, the AWP bows G2 out, and that are the type of rounds that Ents were winning on Anubis. Players down, disadvantages. Oh. Walton not in, hitting some bangers of shots, and JKS as well just stays alive. The dink from Madden, more frustration starting to brew for ends, and Hooksy getting fired up again, bringing back that energy. And you need that now more than ever. From map number four, best of fives. An exclusive. Katowice and Cologne finals now. Familiar territory for G2, these grand arenas on the Intel Extreme Masters circuit. Ends have been caged, kept humble on just sidearms. He's got the same duel, oh. the same result. He's going to be getting real frustrated about that. He's doing the right play. It's the correct decision for him to make. We talk about his prowess on the T side with entries, but now down, AK picked up. Yeah, these individuals, like some pious, hitting shots like he just did. Well, short lived, does it all good in the G2 hood. Two out of the Hootsie Mac 10. Punching in the code and launching themselves up to five. A three round advantage. And this should have been one of the easier rounds for them. So a moment there of pressure. And we've seen Nico jolt back into the chair after a couple of these deaths here. You mentioned in MVP form. He has been a monster throughout this series. We're going to keep that up here to carry them across the line. But so far. Monacy, 10 kills, already reaching those double digits, having no issues, and Hooksy as well. You can critique definitely his individual performance in some of the matches, but today, definitely been contributing here. Yeah, Nico, ADR 100 across all three maps so far. We'd love to get Deha activated here. I think he's a very influential player for this Ents roster and has a tough task ahead of him here. They have been conditioning his side of the map early. And we spoke about this on Anubis, conditioning either side, making sure that the CT setups have to chop and change from your preference. And the second timeout, saw again, wanting to make sure that message gets through, wanting to make sure he can stem the bleeding before it gets out of control. This is where that voice behind you, that trust that Ents have been trying to build this team since the addition of Nurt earlier this year, filling the void of Valder. 
They have been on that route to success. They have been climbing this mountain. And right now, this is them towards the tippy top. But G2 might just beat them to the summit here of Cologne. We've seen G2 respond out of a few of these ends timeouts with aggression, with pace. What That's is Hooksy expecting to come through this time? We've seen mid as a real issue. Donut smoke, red smoke, cut out molly, flashes are plenty to facilitate Hunter. You got Hooksy already lining up the insta red. You'd be expecting an all in somewhere across the map here. It's not going to be heavy middle, just two. But you're right, they do want to keep D. And they've manifested toes. the gap. Look at this. Condition mid, condition mid, commission mid. Go straight into towards A. It's going to be a retake here. What's see how meant to do? to do? Maybe. Oh no, the Molly's not on the mark. There is still somewhere to be planted, especially now they manufacture it with the smoke, but pushing through Madden gives it a go. That's Monty. Happy to greet him with a bullet. And they are really looking lost now. Oh, Snappy gets something back. And does nuts. A 5v3 goes three on three, and there's still so much time. Smokes and kits for this. Very doable for Ents. But Monesty still alive and already racked up 12. He's missed one. Time to take it in their favor. Oh! Nico's no, gone! They know where they both are. They know exactly where you are. You boosted him up. Now it's up to Monesty. Ops with the rifle. Can Ents really retake this site? It was five versus three. Hoopsy holds on with the spray. And Sun Pius runs away. Monacy on the hunt loses it out, but that's Hooksy's hero moment there. He had low HP, Nico down, they knew exactly where you were. Smoke on the bomb and Hooksy pulls it off. And that's a Hooksy round right there. I understand those two kills get a little bit dicey towards the tail end. A on Ancient, one of the easier sites to retake for CTs in the current map pool. But all in all, that is the conditioning I'm talking about paying off immediately there. Just call this team into a round with a pace changer. A go, out the gates. But this is in-game leading at its finest here, and you're going to be feeling real good. You're going to feel like you have Snappy in the palm of your hand right now. Saved all. Upgrades behind it. Lost bonus max out, of course. Six in a row for G2 here as the pain just keeps oh. on coming. Not bad. Peppered. Shipping away. Now this G2 T side. Oh. Snappy, he's feeling himself. He heard that reload and he will catch him. But it wasn't Hunter. Oh. Hunter wants to be overlooked. This is crazy. This is absurd. This is madness! Hunter! He's gonna get one! Diha can't believe it! Snappy lucky to be alive, but only for a moment, maybe, because Nico finishes what his cousin started. Madden's turn. Well-timed block here. They've gone through this smoke a couple of times, and they've been chopped off every single move. JKS with the util, trying to make this possible. They're gonna boost Honestly, up and over, hoping to flush a player out towards the pillar. Madden staying in a retake setup right now. Some Pius rotating over. He has U2 to facilitate flash fights. But there's still a minute on the clock. G2 are not set at the ready here. They don't have to go. And they won't. Problem here for this finish is Nico has the flashes. There's no U2 for Monacy and JKS. So from Cave, Nico would love a flash to be able to peek towards Long. They need that U2 to try and facilitate this, or they're just going to have to walk in contact and hope the shots are hit. And yeah, you know that some Pius AWP primed and ready. Monacy, you'd love to be able to isolate that AWP on AWP action. Some Pius plays it passive. 25. Action incoming. Up and over. Monacy finds the angle. A great flight path to open up the site. G2 looking to continue. On Ancient. A run of six in a row. Is it really going to be seven? Holding, hitting, shots, Madden on the off for two! And it's up to Nico now in that clutch. Util deployed, Nico poised, needs a tap, and in signature Nico fashion, he's made it a one-on-one. -on -one. Nerds, what have you got for us? He's off the ball, Nico strikes! A step closer to the crown, and to the double. Back in form for sure. The audacity to start that re-peak, he knows Nuts is going to look at the bomb again, averts his gaze. That was his first in the round. Monacy got them into the site with a great one onto some players, but this is a 1v2 for Nico that takes them another leap in the direction of and that, that trophy. That's the Monacy that you know and love, exploiting the details of the game. Nobody looks deeper than Monacy, and he finds them a way in towards that site. That was looking very difficult for G2 to break in, considering the circumstances here.
And the crowd loves the fact they see Swanee on the mic. It's his timeout, not another Ants drama. Swanee loving how it's going, wanting to soak in the moment. Seven to two, a five round lead. And they've got Ants right where they want them. What are you supposed to do with this, Chad? You need to get your individuals activated. Deha needs to get on the board. Having a real rough go of things early here. G2 can return to what was working, getting Hunter out mid, controlling the tempo of the game. It's the... worked so wonderfully. And if it ain't broke, aggression, don't fix it. Nico, ready. Oh, and it's only the one. Madden leaps around the corner. Nico takes him from the grave. The molly was good. And the frag's better because now they're running into some pyres with a deagle. He shouldn't get anything done with this one. Chip damage. Maybe softened up for Nerd. Deha gets his first, and now these five sevens have filled the feed. JKS has got this. And Deha, maybe some redemption on the menu. A safe plant. Walks up. Those are both here. Spots out Monacy. And Orp now staring at your exit. Throwing out what little remains of his util. JKS relocates. Deha's brain whirring with options. How can he possibly dig himself out of this? The odds stacked against him, they're giving him nothing. Absolutely nothing. As Deha jump spot from Monacy, playing with his food at this point. There's no hope for Deha now. Monacy confirms it. And off the back of that Swanee timeout, G2 will win out the Deha. Eight already. You heard in the interview, Swanee quick to dismiss it. We didn't have the reps on Anubis. Back to more familiar territory. And it's showing right now. A, a solid T run right now. And it's just been non-stop. Eight on the trot. Yeah, this is more reminiscent of how Nuke went down. Great guns, aggression, middle here. Lots of bodies. Hunter be able to call this extra U-tilt. Full focus. Nerds, solid on the defense. That's what they needed. Forward position, win your duel. Now leg up in the round. And Monacy boosted up to take that shot towards Madden. He's got Nico barreling towards him. Not shy about this one is Nico as he finds Madden. Madden holds, extends their chances. G2 hoping for more, but they can't even get the bomb down. Madden, good haul. Hold on, Monacy and Hooksy. They've hit two shots. And they have got so much time, but Hooksy, he seems... Some Pius puts it into his leg, trying to finish the job, rifles, decisions, he's overthinking, overcooking, should be one bullet to Hoopsie to finish, and D has good for it, maybe Monacy, maybe, but not today, Nerds secures the third, ends hold on. That's exactly what you want from Nerds. We first popped onto our screen, endpoint, aggressive middle, playing ancient in the face, that's exactly the type of plays that Nerds cut his teeth on. So great job onto Hunter, his equal in that type of a role here. You're going to see those two go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. They're going to be set up. So that is a 1v1, massive work from Nerds. But one of the keys right there is Nico knew for a fact that Madden was stuck at first. Monacy had that angle. I don't think there was a possibility for Madden to have gotten away. And Nico, when he's running in towards B here, he's not finding the success on these entries. You see him really trying to rush things. He takes one extra step out of that. He sets himself up. Maybe they're in. But Ents, this is good now. It was the pistol, it was the conversion. That is their first round since. Eight on the trot for G2 has been stopped. And they win this one here, they can break the finances. Well, this is cheeky. This is very cheeky. And again, some is going to get peaked from an angle. He just hasn't considered. Oh, oh the flick! Unbelievable! Monacy lucky to be alive as Sun Pius breaks his wrist. Yeah, that's not a leg shot. That had to have been through the box there. Nico catches Madden going. Look at this head-to-head -head continues. On that B ramp, Nico though, he's found his footing. Nico just spammed some Pius on rotation down to 12 HP, coming in to deal with this B bomb site. Everyone's hitting these shots. Everyone's in that grand final form. This is a good weapon for the job here, Snappy. They might overlock him. Could be a double. Audacity! Oh! oh! On a C! On his 17th with an absurd flick! That was supposed to be the double, supposed to be three versus oh, three, and now Hoopsie's caught another! Nerds thought he had room! And some Pius so low from the Nico spray. Still has to take the gamble. And that's the first found. Monacy punished for the jump. Another smoke well. down. Hold on. The 4v2. 25 seconds. That decision has to be made from G2, and now. 
Scarpering. Speedy about it, Diha. Quiet start, but he's definitely found his feet here. This is the long way round. It might even be the wrong way round. Oh, Nico's just passed him. 12 seconds. Diha gonna struggle. Surely JKS doesn't have the time to clear his corners. Diha's gonna win the round just by virtue of being there. Being there and taking down the bomb carrier. G2 a fumble. Nico chasing ghosts. He can't find them. Diha's gone. And the round is theirs. And secure a fourth. And finance is now. Up for debate. Oh, what a battle that was. Some massive shots from either side there. But the decision to go for red, you understand why you want to be able to separate the two, but rotating back into a bomb site with so many unknowns, that's so difficult. And this is the flick up from Zampaya. Felt like he saw Montezzi forever there. Really lucky to be alive with that one. And this is, wow. Well, it looked a lot bigger from Snappy's perspective, didn't yeah. it? Well, consider as well that one bullet would have done it. One bullet out of their MP9. He had to hit that. Never mind a headshot for style. Well, one more for Enz here, they can still break G2. Arthur's still on. On the front foot, over towards A main, Diha and Sampaias trying to deal with these lurks. Hunter has been able to get on out mid, jump up and put pressure over towards B alongside Monacy, Nico and Hooksy. The standoff continues. Look at this, just rhythmically swapping between the potential fights. Yeah, but you see, this is the whole play. Madden holds on to this smoke until he feels threatened. And they're backpedaling away from A main now. Can actually just park some pies here and leave him here for the duration. So here comes the pressure. A main is locked down. Now you block towards B while the rest of your team rotate into position to defend against this. You know A, essentially yours. And even if you lose it through mid, you're more than happy to play retake on the A site of Ancient. Handful of flashbangs on Nika. Turn nicely, snappy. Trying to hold them at the door here. Sneeko is first. Oh, and he can't quite finish off the meal. Diha overlooks. And only for a moment. Hooksy good for it. And G2 are in. What can Enz do about this one? A ninth seems imminent. Spamming smokes. With five still alive. And still having a look. Can't find anything. Look at this crossfire. It's perfect. Flawless. G2 remain in that championship form. Monacy on the hunt here already. Sampaia should be good for one here. Sure, he doesn't want this Galil in hand. And there you go. Monacy bullet to the side of the head. So survival integral here. They will be keeping two alive ends. Considering the close nature of the last two rounds. Two alive, one alive. And now two on the save. This is important for them to try and retain some weapons. Nerds could drop something. Nine sticks still on the table. And Nico, yeah, just barely. Just barely. Snappy going to be kicking himself. He didn't finish that off. An easy one for JKS. Still sketchy on the aim on the end. One bullet left after that. And the third time out for Entz. Nobody hitting the double digits just yet. We're on the other side. Highlighted on your screen right here. 17 for Monacy. I feel like more often than not, Ents have just not been able to have these full buys with all the weapons. There's always been an omission, always been a sacrifice, something lacking. It's a kid, it's some util. Somebody stuck with a dud gun. Well, here they're going to try and fight their way out of this half. For the final round, they'll get 2,900 as that loss bonus. So again, we've had similar conversations. If you lose the site, you might just have to go for a save. But what was up Ents' sleeve in the last map of play? It was winning number disadvantage scenarios. Whether that was on the T side or the CT side, they made it happen. Faking out the fast A here, right? This is going to get bitten on very hard. We've already seen G2 run this once. And they full rotated. From the donut position, Diha would be hearing stampeding footsteps. So he's saying, I don't hear anything. He cannot confirm the sight. Nerds can. Forward of the smoke, but drawn now. The rotation is exactly what you were hoping for if you're hooksy with this call. You want them to doubt this. You want the lack of audibles to make this think it's just such an obvious fake. How could it possibly be here? But the double pump, it's at the ready. And it's stripes now, Nerds. Response, a good smoke, a gap to work with, but the flashes are good from G2, he unloads his magazine, Sampaius does the same, connecting onto Hunter, 
Hooksy trying to catch any of these donut players, but needs to reload. Spam from D. Oh! Just about before the plant. Nico down, committed to the cause, and now Madden's Deagle solid for another. Maybe Monacy can get one, but he paid a heavy price, and there's the trade. As JKS, he was supposed to be the final component of this round, the one to seal the deal. Well, now he's just looking to catch them off guard, yeah. Now they know. JKS onto Deha, but with three HP and three occupying that bomb site. He's going to throw a Hail Mary at them. Hops for the tap, some pies safe behind the boxes. Madden. He finished it off nicely. That's a pair of frags for him. Top of the scoreboard for Entz. And they bottomed out the cash here of G2. The reserves are very low. Maybe two AKs available, some Galils and pistols. Entz can still walk away with six rounds from this half. Very competitive when you consider we go into a break, you come back, you win the pistol, you get the conversion. It's all tied up 9 9. So Entz, they're still in this here, and they've had to work hard for these rounds. The call from Hooksy. Achieved what he had hoped for. They didn't give that lurk any time to work. Everybody just fell like flies. Well, now they've got all the weapons they could desire. And it's Hooksy. First to test Snappy with that AK. Quick head shot out of the Kalashnikov and Sun Pius <laughs> meets his demise at the hands of the Nico Deeg. Look at the space he has taken. The weapon taken out of his hands as Madden overlooked. It's his bomb sight and he shows us why. The bomb now down though, and Hunter and JKS can come up clutch. Known to close, opts for the orb. Does the Aussie, Molly onto K. Hunter trying to catch a timing as well. There are kids, they got smokes, they got so much to work with. Can G2 really steal this extra round away? Zappi doesn't think so, and JKS would have to hit both of these shots perfectly. Nuts coming in from behind, he hears him coming, hops to the dig. they've got the time and they've got the round. A recovered half, Entz refuse to quit, they will not go down quietly. G2-9, Entz-6.
It was eight to two, and then Entz turned it around and recovered the half here on Ancient. It's for survival for Entz, and it's for the trophy for G2. Seven rounds away from this international super team. Home of Nico, Monacy, who are absolutely shining bright on this stage. 18 for Monacy in that first half. But Entz did recover. They found four in the final five rounds of that half, and now they've got something to work with, especially if they can find this pistol. Snappy's made the call. The bookmakers doubt them. And Snappy wants that first fight. Nico misses his first opportunity. The util now plumes. Monacy charging, chasing Madden, tucked in. Overlooked for a moment. And not ready for some bias. And now they combine. Oh, it's disastrous for G2. Just like that. And this gap can close. JKS is having a look, seeing what he can get done. Hooksy as well, not yet spotted as he's crawled through. Oh, spotted now, Snappy. Hayden in plain sight, on the site, still hits the shot on the Glock, and there you have it. Pistol round secure. And both for Ent in this map, the first time they can say that series so far. And this prize open the door for the conversation for us to go all five. Sure, G2, still two rounds to the good, but we know with these two teams, I don't think we've seen a full eco this entire series. I can't remember one. <laughs> Let's see what Hooksy can get done on this CZ75. Think he wants to steal that one from Hunter. Also equipped here. Five kills for Hunter and some questionable misplays, especially the final round of that first half. Scout in the hands of Monacy, but the buy for ends, obviously. A whole lot more tantalizing. Nerds, I mentioned he was going to be the key for this mid control. He has that space reporting towards Snappy. Nobody home. And at the ready, it's a very standard to see teams do these B pops. Nico. He was fancying his chances on the walk across. Monacy fires off the shot. Nice nade to the face of the young gun. Nance doing this as a unit. This wolf pack to ensure trade potential against these pesky pistols. This could all happen really quick here. Red smoke, flash donut, and go. They're going to isolate the two players on A here. That block needs to be good from JKS. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. They'll wait to see if Nertz gets anything. I'll let you nibble on his main jiggle. Nico already surging to lock the doors behind them. Good search here available from Snappy, though. They still have time for this 40 seconds. The flank from Nico won't be there in time. This should be released. Yes, it is. And now Snappy activates as well. Hooksy dead to the Snappy Mac 10. JKS flattened. And only one overlooks was Hunter. Can't find them head. And it could be perfect. Snappy's Mac 10 racks him up a nice double. And the Nico Deeg, that flank revealed. There's no hope for him here. He'd love a kill. And Snappy denies that as well. Staying focused. Staying together. And yeah, two pistols and a 2-0 in this second half. Well, we might see one of those full ecos come out here from G2. Nothing in this one. And a really well-called round from Snappy. Good reactions to what was thrown his way. Nerds calls mid-clear. They test the waters on B as a unit. If they break in, they go. If they get denied, they stick together. Flush out and cave. You know you have mid under control. Nerds reported that earlier. Straight through Donut. Blocked again. The re-pivot. Lovely stuff. There's a flash here for Hooksy to facilitate this mid fight. They're going to come teaming out the donut smoke. And Nerds, he was anti flash. Yeah, and he'll get himself at least two on that spray. Snappy, even more cash to splash with another $600 SMG frag. Hooksy long range. Madden's got that AK, and we are all even. Nine each, fourth map, grand finals. We know Enz can do it on this map. We've seen it before. Any particular game you're thinking of? Yeah, get Carrigan on the phone. I'm sure he'll tell you all about it. Made a 20-minute feature-length feature film about uh, just one map of Counter-Strike. But here we go. The buy's in. Monty's AWP is out. Buying for mid. Nerds will get to duel against the likes of Hunter here. Fumble on the nade. Wouldn't have connected anyway. Oops, he's got some balls going for... Wide swings like that, didn't see anything. Oh, he's done a lot with that. 
Hatchet Snappy going to investigate the cave and an opening kill provided. G2, leg up in the round. In-game leader down. The first one of Snappy's adventures that's been punished in this half. And a good heads up fight from Hooksy. Cave is a difficult position, but it's somewhere where the in-game leader can feel out the map. Kind of get a temperature check on the sound cues, what Yuta's being thrown. And also get a couple of kills through spam and cheeky smokes. So doesn't help aiding in that regard. B ramp blocked for now. Smoke just deployed and starting to creep through it. There's no flashes to make this a possibility. It's nerds towards JKS. Had a fight available, but will also be sent packing. 45 seconds left on the clock now. They can get in towards B, but the retake, that's going to be the question. In the absence of Snappy, they still can access this site. That man disadvantaged. Nika's got the angle, and Madden, a bullet between his eyes now as this advantage for G2 extended by Nico. Again, Nico strikes onto Diha. No bomb. Maybe Sun Pius could get it down. Nerds is with him. Getting out of this choke point. It's not easy, but Nico's gone. Oh! oh and Sun Pius, despite the flash, maybe they can plant. After all, a tag. Nerds lives on. Gets across. He needs to plant. No, oh, Modesty, brilliant. And Sun Pius can't do anything. He's chasing him. No hope for this one. And the clock translates into 10. But only just. G2 won't be happy with how that one went down. An opening kill from Hooksy, two back from Nico, and those were the type of rounds that G2 fell over on Anubis. Ends have shown great proficiency in post-plant situations. And what happened this time? The bomb didn't go down. They punched those digits in. You think this is theirs. A great attempt from Ents here. Love this second shot out of Monazi. He knew that bomb had to be retrieved, placed his crosshair perfectly and finished off what he tagged up earlier. You need to take this time out if you are G2. The finances are waning here. Sure, you won the round, but you're going to be worse for wear. You'll be able to buy in, but lacking in a lot of departments here. Hunter the Gift will be able to get himself a full belt of Yuto as well as a kit here. May come in handy. JKS may have to operate with something a bit lighter. But all in all, you look at Enter's bite, you can't fault that, can you? An M4, three AKs, an AWP. Yeah, came down too much after the Nico contributions. Oh, great call oh, here. Look at him go. Look at He's him going to go. push through he this. He knows Hunter surely got him in his sights. Hands off the mouse for a second. This is an Ents classic here. Just poking. Nose through the smoke. Snappy doing the double smoke. JKS. About to be blindsided. He's got to do so much. His head on a swivel. Has to address. A team kill at least keeps it level. And Monacy smoked off. He knows there's a molly there. Madden down to Hunter. Holding on to the site now for G2. Up and over. Didn't get spotted. Yes, he did. Diha delivers the equalizing frag. And those smokes will start to fade. Now it becomes more of a brawl. Utility sailing all the way from spawn. Limits Sun Pius's contributions. If it had landed, Nico, only the one. Diha still hitting every shot he takes in this round. Bomb to be planted, no hurry. Hoogsy activating, hoping. Diha not looking. A big one from Hoogsy. G2 to extend their lead. Sun Pius stands in their path. The bomb retrievable. Hooksy last seen close. Oh, the Julies from Sun Pius. We know how well he can use them, but Monacy's got him. Locks it in, pre-plant. Hits the shot he had to. Felt like Enter played them there, but maybe the intention was to allow JKS to play forward. He's the A defender. Once he goes down, maybe lulled into a false sense of security. Of course, Hunter, one of the first responders, is still here. But a real brawl over towards this site. And as the smoke starts to fade, it all comes down to this mid-round. Nico likes the look of that one. They hold on once more. Oh, I think we've lost a player. No harm, no foul. Not out the gate just yet. No damage done. And we will get this one reset. So a quick chance for us to take our breath. <sighs> or more likely catch it. Lanxess, this might be the final half of Counter-Strike here today. Make sure these players remember this moment.
Now, I know this is a big arena. But it must feel absolutely gigantic to the players sat in those seats. These are those moments where you can't help but look up from your monitor. You can't help but breathe it in for a moment. A sold out stadium designed for concerts, designed for rock stars. And we've got Counter-Strike rock stars on that stage for this grand final. You gotta hold your nerve in these environments. And G2 after conceding one. Taking us to Ancient and Ents forced it. And every member of Ents has started to come online, do their role, play it perfectly. Looks like we're ready to get this one back underway. Honestly, back in the server, everything's sorted now and the buys are back through. Let's give round number 21 another go here. Some pass has been facilitated to AWP by Snappy. That was highlighted in the desk discussion. Snappy feeding his players and still getting it done. Well, let's see if he can find that form and continue it here on Ancient. 16 kills for the in-game leader, the Dane. Not going down without a fight here tonight. If G2 can find Ancient without winning either of the pistols, that is testament to their individual prowess. Hunter has been summoned here. Brought over the third component of this B defense is Madden, taking a risk, taking a gap, and might actually find it here. Once this fades, some pies will have long covered off. Madden goes looking. Nico strikes out. He loses his head. Hunter, immediate trade. Snappy still good for another 10. 9 Oh, look at the damage. He could have had him. He does. Snappy and Diha combine and finish off Hunter through the boards. A limited by selfless investments and drops. Now they have the man advantage. Honestly, to be tested. Oh, the jiggle confirms the orb's location. A smoke to the caves. And Pi's not looking. JKS pulls us even. And now the race is on. Or is it JKS going to be second guessing? It's all a fake, it's all a ruse. The bombs are still here. They're calling the bomb. throwing the util though. He's throwing the util. JKS, surely now he bites. They both do. Biting hook line and sinker. Nerds will get a free plant. They've pulled it off again. But can they translate it into a win? Into a gap closer. Ahead of the smoke at least. And Monacy, solid. Onto the first, and now they know where you are, Diha. Hope, Wayne. Towards the bomb, defusing now, held by JKS. What a recovery. Just the two of them. Monacy and JKS faked out. But a strong retake secures 12. Four rounds away from basking in the glory of a victory in the Lanxess. Ents are so scary on these seesaws. The same thing with the Nubus. Maps where you're able to play and pull them across the map here. The devil is in the details, right? He knows the positions that JKS and Monacy are in. If Diha runs, they're going to hear the steps. They bit, put, line, and sinker, and we're straight back out mid. JKS through the smoke. He just bowed Hunter out. Saved him. They're going to run in towards A. Maybe. Monacy. Salt in the wound as he hits another onto Nerds. Another onto Sunbias. Monacy. He's possessed! He takes every single one out, man! So close, they can almost taste it! And that was an Ents investment. That's a blink and you miss it type around there. They tried to floor their way through mid. JKS gets the kill through the smoke. They assume the A defender, nobody home. They run into the AWP. Monacy has been positioned exactly here. More often than not. And this is what he was waiting for. This is what he was hoping for as he gets himself up to 24 kills, delivering here on Ancient. Five completely unique human beings. They shoved again. It's not an all-in, but it's an AK. They want to stay threatening. United in a common goal. And Hooksy's taking him closer. Hunter side by side with his leader. Looking for the trade. Gets it done. Diha back. An aggressive, a forward stance from the pole. 
Nico to receive him. He wants answers, and he gets more than that. Bloodshed drawn, advantage secure. Up to Nerds and Son Pius to work this one out, the puzzle of Counter-Strike. They don't have answers everywhere. They have to address the potential gaps. Which leaves just one man to defend against the two. They found the gap. Silently here. Nico about to get a surprise. He's ready! Oh! Pinpoint! Perfect! Headshot provided! And bomb delivered. Maybe he overlooks him. Nice find. Some pious spots him, tags him, doesn't find the lethality. Now Monacy's there. He's drawn a line in the sand. You cannot, cannot pass. Still, Nico, he finds it. A triple kill on the defense. His teammates left him, but he brings home the round. And continuing to push these percentages here. The AKs come out. They stay threatening. A couple of pistol upgrades. They will not let G2 take this easily. Now they will buy again. Now the purchases are back out. Fully fledged. Timeout number four. A familiar feeling for Ends throughout this series. Saw, more often than not, having to expend every single timeout to try and keep his team together. It's Nico just delivering pain down range. A snappy scramble now. The biggest of stages. Today we walked on in to the Cathedral of Counter Strike with 10 individuals, none of which have tasted the glory of what Cologne has to offer. And in two rounds, G2, they can etch their names into the history books on the death knock of Global Offensive. The last big event, and it could be G2's. They're in the driver's seat here. Have you got anything left in the tank? Anything, individual or otherwise, to keep your grasp in this grand final, it's slipping. As are their smokes. Missing that red smoke. JKS has got full view. And a deep one for good measure. Well, if you wanted to see the nerves painted across the server, this is exactly that. Just those details. It started on nuke. Map number one, couldn't get the smoke walls right. Now here, map number four, and the pressure is still on. Utility, they practice time after time after time. And now in front of all of you, struggling to connect those dots. A redeploy of red, Donut as well. Cut out Molly at the ready as JKS ready to exchange that U tilt. It's late, but they're out. Hunter attracted to that smoke, thought he had a gap. Maybe he spotted out the cross and crawl of Nerds. They've only got 50 seconds to break through the defense of G2. Monacy in support. Snappy trying to corral his troops into a winnable round, but Monacy hits the first. Pulls the trigger onto Snappy, now just watching with his head on his hands. JKS, ooh, damage inflicted both ways. Another from Monacy, G2, every player hitting their shots. They're touching it now, a single round of the thousands they've played. One more, one more round. And the ever elusive trophy will be theirs. Ends, they put up a fight and sure, hope dies last. But now they need six in a row. Perfect counter-strike when the nerves are high. When you're physically, mentally exhausted. This is the final buy here. And Shabini won, Shabini before, Snappy trying to make space out mid. Spam oh, down, kill. Oh. Hunter through the smoke, the final four. Maybe they can save him. Maybe he gets another chance to play on this grand final stage. Nico's down. Some players has provided a way back in. Hunter quick about it. They're looking for the plan. Nerds to hold, can he hit the shot? Okay, Hunter can, and Monacy too, it's surely it, surely D has D, the last to fall as G2 manifests greatness in the Lexus. Can you believe it?
double for G2. I am Katowice. I am Cologne. Big stage team. And a team effort across the board. How many times what, did you narrowly miss out on that last little bit of Counter-Strike? And their powers combined, this unit, five fingers on a fist. For Hoopsy, his first IEM Cologne. For Monacy, 18 years of age, testament to the arrival of the next generation. 10 years of age, the first time Counter-Strike was played in the Lanxess Arena. And JKS, a man who was modest his age, the first time he came to this very city to contest for this trophy. As the long runway towards that trophy, bask in your glory, bask in your success, and soak this in. An eighth attempt from Nico. Though the Majors may have eluded him, Nico's CSGO story ends in glory. A sold-out stadium to witness. G2 riding the high. Breathe it in. Bask in this moment. Because, ladies and gentlemen, G2 are your IEM Cologne champions! Sitting here, Swanee, hero of the crowd, German representation. Well, I'm down here in the midst of this madness. What a win. Let's ask Nico first. What is it like to win here, to take this trophy in Cologne in that manner? Uh, yeah. Well, this is the biggest trophy of my career and uh, yeah, super happy right now. It's been, a, it's been a long journey in my career getting this trophy and uh, now it happened. Without this team, it uh, wouldn't be possible. I'm really happy to have them by my side and uh, I'm really proud of everyone that we kept it cool and calm throughout the whole series and uh, yeah, I couldn't be more happier. Well, you seem it as well. It's great to see that smile on your face. We saw it in Katowice, you've done the double. The two big stages, what is it about playing in this sort of arena that works for you and this team? Yeah, I don't think that I'm still aware uh, that we have managed to win both events and how important it is to win both of them in, uh, in one year. So, yeah, but overall, the experience and playing in this arena was amazing. Thank you all for coming. I hope that you guys enjoyed the show and uh, I want to see you next year for an even better show. Did they enjoy it? Did they enjoy it? We've talked about it a lot, the last big global offensive tournament to be played. What does it mean to you? Does it mean as much? Uh, yeah, this, uh, this trophy definitely makes my career look uh, a bit better, even though it was, uh, there was, there's no major. At least now there is Cologne, so that's uh, a lot better, I would say. It looks great. And just a word about Monesty as well. 18 years old to play like that. Oh, it's, it's crazy how much he stepped up during the whole final. Especially on the last uh, map, he was uh, lights out. And 
without him, maybe we would be playing uh, the last map. So, yeah, the kid is insane and uh, he has so much potential to still show and uh, he is just getting started. Popular winners, they did it in four. They've done the double. Katowice are now here in Cologne. Put your hands together for your champions. It's G2. And there's not too many players that could say they've toppled feats, they've, they've shown up in the, the biggest stadiums that a sport has to offer, an eSport has to offer. Take your pickings, it doesn't damn matter. They've done it in Katowice, they did it in Cologne here, and this is something they're gonna hold their heads up about for a long time. They get the double, Trace, I think. Absolutely, you know, majors are a thing of its own, but after that, without a doubt, Cologne comes yes. next. And I think it absolutely matches the feeling of winning a major. It has that prestige. It has that, you know, environment, atmosphere about it. Look at this amazing stadium, these amazing people wow. that are here, that are cheering. And it's moments like this that you put all the hours in, that make it all worth it, all the terrible losses, all the hours spent away. Now, the good feeling comes. Yes. The sacrifices. This yes. is what it adds up to. This is it. This is reward. And it's a reward that has so many different meanings for the players that are on this stage, Trace. For JKS, it's yeah. coming back from the nowhere. Fourth grand final one in a row ever since he stepped in. For FaZe Clan, for Hooksy, shutting up a whole lot of critics out there. For Nico as well. 2023 turned out to be such a critical year yeah. for a long career of one of the most exceptional players we have in the game, adding Katowice and Cologne. And Hunter as well, the man of the playoffs. Great oh, yeah. stories. All over the place, and his crosshair was right there with him too, which is an awesome thing to have happen. It, you love it when it lines up, and for a story like this, it's a feel-good one, Yanko. Absolutely, and also a testament, you know, and some props to the management of G2 for not deciding to make any True. roster changes and actually trusting in these guys and having patience. You know, we've seen them in the past make changes sometimes, perhaps too quickly, you know, with the Alexi B to Hooksy change, who knows what might have been. So to trust in this team, and it also says, you know, that the players themselves realize what it means. They've stepped up. You can see that the atmosphere in the team is good, that they believe in each other, that they trust each other. And they've also been playing some amazing CS. Yes, yes. I mean, the players have seized that opportunity. The management extended the lifeline of this lineup and they took their chance. They played much better CS. They stayed grounded throughout this series. We saw a couple of signs, symptoms here and there during the series. We thought, is that going to be a G2 catastrophe? But it wasn't meant to be. So many different players stepped up. Monacy has to be a talk. Monacy has to Absolutely be a topic. Absolutely unreal. Absolutely. Not this guy. This kid. He's still a kid. He's 18 years old. He's coming out here in front of 10,000 people. Composed. First of all, hitting incredible shots. But then also his movements. Like yes. He is the best player at gaining information with as little risk as possible. And just pushing the envelope, you know, having impact going for the aggressive plays, and he was right up there with Nico. He had so many late round critical decisions where he knew exactly where to be, how to close these 2v2, and I sent you back to the conversation we had with Kadian. As this series was getting longer, people were gonna get more tired. Mistakes were gonna be made. Couple of gigapeaks here and there. The AWP was going to be influential, and he absolutely had that impact. So many times he punished them. And also mentally to be able to bounce back, right? After Anubis, not just as a team, but Monesi especially. He had some rough misses, some rough rounds, right, where he was caught a little bit out of position. You know, for such a young player, that can get into your head, right? Like, you can start thinking, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm ruining, it, ruining it all for my team. I'm letting the team down. No, he went right back into it and finished the engine on an incredible note. And run it all the way back. You look at a team that has been tried, or they have tried, they've been tested. Hell, they've tried a few more times, failed a couple times. Like, this is a team that has actually risen out of that for, for the time being. You know, we don't know what the future looks like, but right here, yeah. they definitely, uh, they've held on to the trophy here in Cologne. And so what? I'll tell you more. Or better yet, OJ, here's some Nico on the stage. So then we have one last bit of business to do here before we end this amazing tournament here in the Cathedral of Counter-Strike, and that is to find out who is the DHL MVP. I can tell you that that person comes from G2. Cologne, who do you think is the MVP? Who? 
I can tell you your DHL MVP is Nico! We chatted just a little a little while ago. How much does it mean to know not only have you won the trophy, but your performance is seen by the people who voted that you are the MVP? Well, first of all, as long as I'm talking to you, that means I'm doing something good. So I'm very happy about it. But uh, yeah, uh, happy, really happy about uh, my performance. But yeah, uh, without this team, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be possible. Uh, I put a lot, of, a lot of effort to overcome the difficulties that I have been facing before, especially in, uh, in the finals, uh, such as this event. Uh, yeah, I just want to thank to all the people that uh, worked for me in order for me to overcome this. And uh, I'm uh, proud of myself, but proud of everyone around me as well. Mate, you're a rock star. It is great to watch you play Counter-Strike. Uh, we'll hand over the trophy right now for the DHL MVP of the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne 2023. One more time, not just for a great team, but a great player as well. He is the MVP. It's Nico. No, completely deserved MVP there for, for Nico, but obviously, you know, this is a team game. For Nico, this has got to be a, another feels good moment in what has been a, an excellently displayed career. I mean, close to being his best grand final ever. Yeah. Sure, this is in New York 2017, but I mean, think about the path that this man has been on. And, and this is where Counter-Strike is beautiful in itself, because you would look at Nico a few years back and you'd say, he's already close to perfection. He's already exceptional. Right. He's already one of the few selected one that can play the game at that highest of level. But the truth is, there was always a next level he could go to. And I feel like he's reached this grand final, his calmness, the way he behaved in the grand final, the impact he's had. That was Hello. the next step for Nico. That he's made it. it. And he this was all over a May best of five say, final compared to New York over four maps. He has almost 100 ADR on the rifle, 91 kills, 53 deaths, incredible performance. And yeah, sometimes it wasn't up to the level he would have liked, but I think the maturity yes. is now there. You can see he lets the game hey, watch sort this. of come to him. There he is. Look, we found him, a diamond in the rough. It's Nico. Congratulations, buddy. Oh, I gotta wait for the headset hey, part. Give him a second. I'm, sorry, to okay, yeah, I'm just happy, man. Congratulations. Oh, Yo. Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. Just, uh, <laughs> everything is going on too fast. Happy, happy that uh, I'm here with you guys now. I think you nailed it on the stage, man. You said, if I'm talking to OJ, I'm doing something right. Exactly. And I don't think yeah. it gets any simpler than that. That's it. That, that's what. Uh, that's the first thing that went to my to my head. So, yeah, I hope in the future I'm gonna get to talk to him uh, many more times. Yeah. Yeah, an incredible game for you guys. You played incredibly well. Obviously, you are the DHL MVP. What was different this time around for you individually compared to maybe some other finals or some other games? Uh, yeah, uh, I put a lot of effort in the in the games like this uh, to overcome the difficulties that I had. I think uh, the probably the biggest reason why it worked at this time is I was very calm. Uh, I just tried to focus on myself and uh, just what's going to happen next round and try to forget the past and just uh, yeah just focus always uh, what's in front of me and uh, yeah that that's all thanks to the team around me they helped me a lot uh, everyone is uh, trying to make me feel better as well right. so uh, yeah uh, happy at I could have displayed such a performance in the final. Definitely. I mean, I think that's a very interesting point. And I'm sure it didn't happen just tonight. Can you tell us a little bit where it started, when it started, this whole process of, you know, making sure you're calm, making sure you deliver your best? When was, when did that become a thing that you guys were working on? I mean, I think like after Katowice final, like I got a bit of uh, the relief that uh, we had managed to win such a trophy and then uh, yeah, I mean, ever since then, we didn't really get to play on uh, such a stage. Uh, we had failed in the majors, so... Uh, yeah, as you said, it didn't come overnight, so I don't, I'm, not, I'm not really sure when it yes. actually overcame, but uh, it's a definitely a good sign that uh, I managed to do it at uh, this particular event. And obviously, you know, this is most likely for all we know the last big event in CSGO and you ended by lifting the trophy and uh, being the MVP, right? But from the moment you went onto the scene, you displayed a really high level individually. What was the main thing that enabled you to be so good for such a long time? Uh, 
Well, maybe one of the things that enabled me to be so good is that I didn't win a major. <laughs> so I just kept working, <laughs> kept believing in myself. I'm not it's saying all, that, it's all planned. Yeah, all, all, all part of the script makes sense now. Yeah. I'm not saying that if you would have won a major, that I would play worse or anything. But uh, I just kept working, uh, kept believing in myself, and uh, now that I look back. Some of the losses that I had before definitely were a great lesson and uh, today I can see how much I can help my team and my head is clear and uh, from, more, from all the experience that I had uh, in uh, the past finals that I played so uh, yeah, I, uh, I can be proud of myself. I yeah, guess. listen, you, you've been on a crazy path. I mean, from the moment you started playing Counter-Strike at the top level, I think it was clear for everybody that you had something exceptional. I don't think anybody doubted it, but what would you say to yourself 10 years ago now that you've made this path. What would you say to yourself when you were that frustrated kid that just had this incredible talent and couldn't hack it at the time? I mean, we all want to have the same experience with younger age, right? Exactly. So I guess that's the main thing. No, but uh, definitely I could have made more effort back then in my uh, uh, mental uh, state. And uh, But it also, it's been uh, like evolving, right? Back then I didn't have like Perform uh, performance course. coaches and everything. It was just kind of myself and the players out there. And uh, I guess for some players, it just takes more time. And uh, yeah, I mean, overall, I would rather be in the last time in Cologne <laughs> than the one like in the middle that of the start. So yeah. Nico, it, you know, we, we're talking about your career. We talked about and used the word sacrifice. You've, you probably had to sacrifice so much to get, you know, to a point like this. Was it worth it? Yeah, definitely it was. I mean, yeah, now I'm speechless and as I said before, <laughs> everything is going way too fast and I'm probably still not aware that we have managed to win both Katowice and Cologne in the same year. It's something that only few players and the teams accomplish. So, uh, yeah, I also want to give a shout out to my team. I still haven't uh, done it here. Everyone played amazing. Uh, we, we won as a team this final. Like, we, we, they, we all stepped up, everyone. Uh, had his moments and uh, maybe I'm even the reason why we lost the Nubis as well. I peaked a couple of times alone. So yeah, it was a team <laughs> effort in the end and uh, I'm happy for the boys and especially for Swani winning uh, in front of such a crowd, in front of home uh, home country crowd is, uh, I'm really happy for him as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you, you mentioned the, the team aspect. There's been noise out there. Your manager said, you know, we thought these guys deserved a chance. How does it mean to you, what does it mean to you to have done it with this roster together, powering through when the last few months, let's say, had been a bit more complicated? I mean, once you go into such a tournament like Katowice, Cologne and uh, Majors, you don't think about past, you don't think about the previous events, you don't think uh, how disappointed you were at the Blast or Pro League, whatever. Once you come to such an event, you are just focused on this event. And we managed to click this event and we just kept on improving throughout the whole uh, event throughout every series that we have played and uh, yeah I mean I think the experience that we have stayed together probably led us to the trophy today as well. Yeah and not only the trophy check this out there's many things that come with this Nico right so you're the DHL MVP yes that's cool but also it looks a little bit like this Four hundred thousand dollars. Oh, not bad. We know who's buying <laughs> it's the, day the drinks in the tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I, in advance, yeah, I just want to say thanks for the drinks. You know, <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, yeah. So yes, you do grab a massive, you know, surprise purse here. But then there's a little bit more to this story. And by that, I'm talking about something called the Intel Grand Slam. So, what are the odds that you two goes with that one? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, I haven't, I haven't thought about uh, the well, Grand Slam. You didn't think about it. Why oh, not? Why would you man, think about it, man? Come on, no, man. But uh, yeah, uh, it's. Uh, I mean, I'm not really sure how everything is going to work out once we transition to CS2. It stays the same. It stays the it same. It just keeps on the same. Uh, All right. Yeah. Number. Then uh, we are going to be hungry from Grand Slam, I guess. We are yeah. going to aim for that now and. Uh, but yeah, uh, first I just want to calm my thoughts and enjoy uh, the yeah. moment, and then we will think about uh, Grand Yeah, we're already asking the about the rest events. of the season. Yeah, hey, <laughs> take a breather. I got something special for you. No, I know you said you were speechless, but I'd like to end this on a more personal note. I've been Counter-Strike. I've played against you. I've played with you. We've, I've coached you. I've watched you play throughout all this time, and there was no doubt at any point in time that you're an incredible player. But I have to say that I'm really proud to see you grow into being an incredible human being as well, being a great leader and being a role model for a lot of young players out there, how to handle yourself, how, how to treat this game and your teammates. So, yeah, proud of you, brother. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the words. I appreciate it a lot. And uh, 
Yeah, I'm proud of you all guys for being uh, on the desk for such an event <laughs> in the final. We get here sometimes on time, too. That's a crazy, <laughs> cannot, uh, we won't even go down that road. Congratulations, man. Uh, I think you deserve the chance to sit down now. So thanks for joining us. We'll get you out of here. Thank you, guys. Thank you, man. And if you don't know, now you most certainly do know. That's Nico, and that is G2. They take a trophy. He takes another trophy with him, a DHL MVP. He's got about everything that he could possibly ask for in that Very moment. Nice. So we decided we'd ask him every question we possibly could and then drain the life out of him as he is. Yeah, right. Ask him about the next season. <laughs> so he barely, can handle, he barely can handle the next 10 minutes, and we're talking about the end of the season. I mean, let him bask in the moment. Let him just enjoy it. So many years, so many events, so many frustrations that now turn into the, the finished product he is, the diamond that he is now. Let him just enjoy his evening. And we will. We'll probably and we shall. probably enjoy it nearby, I hope, at least. He's a pretty cool guy. I don't normally hang out with players, but, uh, you know, I'm just saying. Yeah, we all saw the videos from Katowice, Trace. All right, anyway, look, the point is this. You know, it's not always rainbows and blutter... blutter it's not always <laughs> rainbows and butterflies that get us along, right? So, in this notion, there was someone that didn't win the grand final. And now it's only appropriate that we hear from Ince direct. Snappy, um, a super difficult moment here for the team. Um, what are your first thoughts about why you left it here, you think? I think they outclassed us individually. Uh, not much to say. Um, they were better on the two maps, two first maps. Uh, we got a newbies, but then on Ancient, I think we actually had a chance. It was 9-9 nine, nine and there was three rounds in a row where it was 2-1-2 two two or 3-2 three two, three, three two in our favor. We could have broke their money, we didn't. And it was because they were individually better than us today. There's nothing else to say. Can you, uh, do you have a, a way to now see kind of the bigger picture in terms of is a championship caliber team. We have known that and you make another final here. I think it's going to take a while for that perspective to, to dawn, but look at the future with the boys. How do you feel about that? I mean, I feel positive about the future. Uh, the good thing is we we gave what we had, but today it wasn't a lot, to be honest. And I guess it was just one of those days. I don't know if it was pressure or what, if, what it was. It didn't feel that way. I've, it felt like it was honestly individual skill, and I don't know what to say. Sometimes it's just not there, right? Sometimes it's like that. Thank you so much. Yeah, for Ents, we say goodbye, but obviously they have some promising signs as well. It only gets more exciting for a team like Ents uh, the further down the rabbit hole we go. I think that goes uh, pretty much without saying, guys. Yeah, definitely. I think an absolutely solid team. They've shown some great counter-strike in this tournament. This is their first loss in the tournament as well, undefeated up until this point. But you can prepare and talk about things, but it's different to experience yes, them firsthand, absolutely. right? And I think even though they probably kept a positive mindset throughout, the feeling was different in-game. I agree with you. I think they've gained in legitimacy throughout this tournament. It's undeniable for Ants. But this grand final and how long they took to warm up into it, at this high of a level, that's it, you pay cash immediately. The amount of effort and energy that they would have to put into coming back into the grand final, you pay the price of a slow map, map and a half that you got into. Once it turned into a slugfest, we all appreciate it, oh, but yeah. G2 had enough quality and experience to handle that advantage, handle that position they were in, and they played the counter-strike that was needed. Quite a bit of a test of stamina, just about by everybody, all 10 players, all, Definitely. all 12 members that are up there on the stage. Uh, my whole thing is this, right? We still have a lot more counter-strike, and I'm not talking about here in Cologne. I'm talking about this thing coming up right around the corner on this island called Malta. You guys, I'm looking for the words. It's uh, ESL, ESL Pro, League. Pro League. There it is. That's right. That's what we've got coming up in front of us, at least. And that's a, a lot of Counter-Strike. So if you didn't get Woo! it up here, if you get your first taste of how awesome this feeling really is when you, you get to witness these incredible moments, well, guess what? We start anew on August 30th. That's going to be live from Malta. And that's going to be season X, B, I, 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 I yeah, yeah, There we go. Yeah, absolutely. What you'll get is tons of Counter-Strike five weeks, four groups, and then the playoffs in the fifth week, and what you'll definitely won't get is guys in suits. Oh, <laughs> nice. yeah. No, I get yeah, to put canceled. my suit away. Yeah, instead, you're going to get us fooling around, <laughs> right, trying to have a good time for you who didn't tune in into the last season. It's very more, way more laid back, right? Um, and I think we get the players a lot more involved, so oh, yeah. definitely tune in. A lot of cool things there. You're right. We let our hair down a little bit, but then we turn right back around, we button back up, and we get ready for what's going on down under. One of the, the craziest fan bases I, I can think of in Dang. the entire planet. Look at Aww. that. Right, That's a, a kangaroo. Picture. You know That's what that really means? Cute. Yes. You think it's Chad? Is that Chad? I think, uh, yeah, I think he said he That's what it this, is. and uh, like he thought of this. He had a dream. I can see the vision eyes. He, yeah. he had when he was a kid. But anyway, yeah, we're going back down under, and that would be Intel Extreme Masters in Sydney. So it's always it's always a little rowdy down there. I can't lie. It's a whole lot of Counter Strike coming down our way, Trace. So many Easter eggs here. I yeah, know. but looking right. forward to going back to Sydney. That crowd is amazing as yeah. well, and it's been a while since we've been there. So I think it's going to be a fun time. 
final thought. You got you got it. I'm just really happy. <laughs> That's perfect. Very happy perfect. as a human right now. Perfect. Life That's is good. good. Yeah, yeah, well. You happy too? You want, a, you want a final thought in there? <laughs> yes, I am happy. See, he said, I E M happy. I see what you did there. That's genius. It's brilliant, really. Uh, no, but that's it. We wrap up the Intel Extreme Masters clone. I want to appreciate you guys and the others that were here earlier throughout the duration. Everybody behind the scenes, in front of the cameras, all the good stuff, all the fixings. That's what you're getting here at the Intel Extreme Masters. Good night, everybody, and we'll see you in Malta. did it mate i did it <laughs> you did it and this crowd absolutely loves you what is that like for you ah, bro that's an absolute dream come true for every counter strike player like this crowd it's just crazy <laughs> like they're chanting my name whatever we do it's it's a dream i just love it it's because you hear it like and they're still going
Now I want to touch on this, right? First it was Fnatic, then it was FaZe. Now you join the elite and the most prestigious club as the only, the third and only team, right, to have been able to achieve both in one year. Can you believe that? I mean, not really. <laughs> it's my first year as a head coach yeah. and I won Katowice and Cologne in the same year. All I can say is this team is amazing, everyone is insane. And I love everyone for the trust and I'm happy that we stick to our roster and we showed all the haters wrong who are writing behind their keyboard who are saying we are so bad, we only rely on individuals. Guys, this one is for you, we are only individuals and we are not a good team. And then we got to look at this, right? I want to touch on your journey with G2. You started as an analyst, 2019. But the development that I think people don't give you enough credit for is you went into being an interim coach, you know, then you were an assistant, then you were interim again. Then this year at the beginning, you got to be the full-time coach. You've worked damn hard for this. You put in the time. What has that taken from you as an individual out of your personal life, out of all your effort? I mean, it's a lot of stress and with a lot of downsides, obviously. I'm just happy that I have a girlfriend that supports me. Even though I'm away all the time, she's still here for me. And my parents who watch every game, who write me after every match, gives me a lot of strength and a lot of power. I just want to say thank you to my parents. I love you. I know you're watching at home. Thank you for supporting me always. You need that support as well. But for this one, you met me to yourself, the haters, the people that were saying, oh, you should have made changes, hooks, you should have been kicked, all these other things, right? Looking at this now, you didn't make a change and it did look bad, but what was it that kept you going? What was it that kept you working forward? Because this time G2 didn't crumble. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people only see results, right? But there are a lot more intangibles to a team and how good a team is. Like, people only see 5% of what's happening in a team. They see 30 seconds during a timeout, they see a coach maybe doesn't talk so much, okay, the coach is bad. And then they see, okay, they lose 14, 16, okay, the team is bad. But you don't see the progress that we actually have. And we have such good belief in our process and trust in what we do and what we are building that we couldn't care less about the outside noises. And you see that it pays off two times in the biggest events. You definitely did, Swanee. Congratulations, man. Thank well you. done. So, uh, JKS? Are you tweeting right now about the victory? What's going sponge, on? Sponge, soaking the sponge. Talking, is that always the first thing you do? Uh, it's one of the first things, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what did you tell him? I just said, come get a photo from uh, the two people who are last place uh, players in 2014, I think it was, to uh, winners in 2023. So technically he won as well. He's casting in the final, so yeah. Did he though? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah okay, okay. We'll, we'll give it to him. Uh, but anyways, this is absolutely huge. I mean, this year overall, well, I know that there's been some things that of course didn't go the way you guys would have wanted, but between Katowice and Cologne, it's incredible. Yeah, I mean, for me, those two are like, outside of the major, the most important tournaments of the year. So, I mean, to even win one of them is really amazing. So to win both of them is something incredible. And like I said, I played here in 2014 and we came last. And then ever since then I played on and off, but we never made the stage. So just to make the stage alone is, is incredible. And to win is, I don't know, I don't really have words for it, so yeah. It's all right. I mean, it's one of the biggest prizes you can win, not just in CSGO, but in esports altogether. Uh, what do you have to say about your team? because it was, I mean, aside of Nubas, it was quite comfortable today. Yeah, I mean, my teammates are amazing, honestly. Like, uh, I think Rasmus called incredibly well the entire tournament, and of course, Nico, Hunter, and Monacy just carried <laughs> both of us. So, I mean, I think I did okay as well, but it's really easy to play when you have those three players uh, doing what they're doing, and then, of course, Rasmus calling like the way he is. It makes the game super easy. So, I just have to do my job and fill in, and yeah, I mean, for me, it was pretty cruisy the whole way through, so, yeah, it was amazing. I think you did more than a cake. Congratulations and shout out to Sponge. <laughs> uh, Mr. Baby Goat, I need to stop you for a moment. You can come back to these guys. <laughs> 18 years old. Now, Katowice are in Cologne behind you. An incredible performance in the grand final and a big turnaround to the start of the season. What do you think? I don't know. It, it keeps, keeps going. <laughs> keeps going. I'll win a lot of things in the future. I believe in it. I believe in myself. I believe in my team and uh, my men. Everyone is supporting me, my parents, my friends, my close friends. And uh, it's, it's the most important. And when we say most important, there were so many people that doubted you guys, right? There's so many people that was against you 2 But how was it to have the crowd on your side here as well? I mean, first of all, we never doubted ourselves, so I don't know. Crowd loves us, like, I mean, they love us, right? So we cannot do anything and we cannot, uh, you know, force them to steer for us or something like that. They, they just want it and that's it. I don't know a lot of things to say, but uh, 
just wanted to say hi to my parents and my brother and my friend who couldn't come here. I was a bit frustrated before playoffs because he couldn't come. Yeah, and um, Is that I mean, yeah, it was fear. I think he's watching and my brother was watching. So yeah, and uh, I just wanted to say hello to them. Now for you though, right? 18 years old, you've achieved this. You've got so much more ahead of you, so many more goals. I remember in Paris when you saw me and you got eliminated and you said, I'm so sad, I won't have that trophy. You know, the collectible, the coin in the game, you won't have that thing. Does this make you feel a bit better? It feels better. <laughs> <laughs> to win to win Katowice and Cologne, it's much better in a year. But I mean, trophy coin is just memory and uh, I mean, also Cologne. To win in Cologne is also memory, but uh, to win, to win two tournaments, uh, Katowice and Cologne, it's maybe it's even much better than to win a major. But who knows? It's up to you guys to decide. But for me, even if I win the trophy, it's already something for me. So. Well, we look forward to seeing that first CSU major, baby. <laughs>time the esea league is now on face it to give you the best league experience see how far you can go on your path to esl pro league join the world's most competitive league now on face it win your share of two hundred and fourteen thousand dollars in season 46 don't miss out register by august 10th sign up today at faceit.com forward slash esea league
action. Yeah, right. This would be the ace clutch from Fallen. Oh, oh, oh my. Oh boy. FaZe Clan, Faze Clan. The champions of ESL Pro League. Fallen's here. Oh my god. Gary, are you going to be kidding me? What a map. What a map.